the culmination of the 2023 Blast Circuit and the final day for us here in the Etihad Arena. And boy, oh boy, do we have some treats in store for you. Of course, an incredibly exciting show match, that coveted grand final, and some players still hanging around the arena, getting involved in the activities, signing with a lot of fans that have turned up for the final day of the Blast Premier World Finals. We've got so much to be diving into. I'm, of course, joined by Jacob, Maui Snake, and Machu. I'm so excited to be diving into the final day of Tier 1 CS of 2023, Matthew. You're right, it's our final day for whole 2023, the final Championship Sunday here, surrounded by our friends. What, what can I ask for more? I mean, Jacob, I'll extend to you the courtesy for this. Yeah, thanks, man. I appreciate it. <laughs> you say friends, I said a great colleague. Anyway, it's gonna be it's gonna be great. It's gonna be great to watch some Counter Strike today. And as you said, it's not only the final time for us, but obviously also for the players to hoist one more trophy to the cabinet. But before that, we got a show match and some other fun stuff happening. Yeah, we do have some other fun stuff. As much as we have our disagreements, Jacob, um, we both love one thing. That's a bit of gossip, Ooh, isn't it? Oh yeah, and actually, I came prepared for you. I brought some uh, props. I got some uh, popcorn oh. that you guys can share over here. Me and Maui, of course, got some popcorn. And now we can chill a little bit and have a good time. Yeah, because there's been some news, some headlines, if you will, going on overnight with a lot of the rosters that we're going to be seeing heading into 2024. Maui, I think we start off with Ents because, oh my lord, the tweets that have been going out, basically an implosion in that camp. What's been happening? They've been gutted. They have been stripped, torn asunder. They have lost. So many players here. I mean, you're going to see, obviously, on your screen right now, Glaive, Dehaw, the people on the left, those seem to be the lone remaining players. Modern, Sun Pius, they've joined up with Falcons. Nerds, his destination is fairly unknown. I mean, I think I don't think we necessarily know exactly where he's headed just right. yet, mm. but they've also lost Saw, their coach. He was the backbone of this roster. And obviously, you have to talk about the fact that all of this was spurred by the fact that Snappy departed a month ago. It's crazy how fast that goes, right? Because the three of us, I remember, the four of us for that matter as well, we were doing Cologne and we were speaking about Ents as one of the upcoming teams out there, top three team in the world. Could they go into another grand final? Could it be a team that would establish themselves as a real contender to be the best team in the world? It was such a promising project. It was such a promising team. And over a couple of months, it's just completely being split apart. Yeah, I think it speaks volume to the fact that they believe in Snappy and Saul. They believed, they believed in their leader. They wanted to be with their leader. And then Snappy just said, guys, listen, I have this other project going on. I'm going on. over I, here. I think, <laughs> I think you all should join. And I cannot help but feel a little bit gutted for Glaive, honestly. Not, not that he would have for sure success, uh, have success in that roster. That's not what I'm saying. But it's just like, hey, guys, so wait, wait a minute. You're leaving? What's going on? You just arrived to the party and everyone is leaving. And now he's just left alone. Feels, feels Glaive, man. I, I think this whole situation has been entirely unfair to Glaive in that there's no IGL in the world that can really implement a true system in a single event. So I, I feel like Glaive still has a lot to prove moving forward with this roster. And we'll see with the pieces that he has. Maybe that's Nerds. I think it will be Deha if he's able to put something on the table. Because ends, in terms of just as an organization, they're so easy to root for when you talk about people like Natu behind them who have made esports look sustainable and look like it can actually be an industry that is built to last. Well, I think that was a great point we just had on our screen right here. The Glaive was aware there was a risk coming into it. Okay. A lot of people were suggesting that, oh my god, he signed a contract that didn't let him know he's being hard done by. He was well aware there was a risk coming into this in this lineup sorry, before he put pen to the paper. So I respect Glaive a lot. I think you're right when you're saying that it's a tough situation for him, but he was well aware of the risk when he first signed. Imagine the task that he's going to have now if we if we are just moving forward to the next few weeks or months, right? On one hand, we were wondering, is he going to be up to the meta? Can he actually do this? But we were assuming that this was going to be with the Ants roster. We didn't know if that was going to work out, but okay, you got some good pieces. You have a sort of a system that's pre-built that you can maybe improve, work on with. And now he's going to have to rebuild something from, from literally from zero to 100 possibly, where he's got to rebuild a structure, gain the confidence and trust of some new players, maybe foster these new players. It's going to be one of the toughest challenge he's ever had in the next few weeks or months. It's exactly what you mentioned, Maui, the fact that he was coming in and you don't expect an in-game leader to be able to implement a system in just one event. But then with the outside context that he was totally aware that these players were already looking in other directions, other teams were looking at uh, looking grabbing some of them. It does make you question Glaive's decision itself, if you knew that it was so tenuous, the likelihood of his players staying on for the upcoming months. However, I, I do think that for someone like Glaive to come into a project like Ents, and just, again, the backing, the, the long-standing nature of the organization, it does provide you with a sense of security. And in some ways, I do think that Glaive had to be scraping, you know what, I'm not going to say the bottom of the barrel, but maybe the side of it. The fact that he couldn't probably get onto some tier one roster immediately. And so this was a project that you know, if he blew them out of the water, they might have stayed. But I mean, thing is that money talks. 
at the end of the day. It could also be a blessing in disguise because we had the conversation already with Glaive joining Enz in the first place that could he do any better than what Snobby had done? Wasn't we all agreeing that Snobby got the absolute most out of that lineup? So for Glaive to join, the only thing he could do was try to be as good, but getting them to be even better than they were, that was almost impossible. So yeah. it felt like for Glaive, you're coming into Enz and the only thing you can do is try to maintain or fail. Now that he gets to build a new roster, I guess the expectations went from up here to all the way down here. We have no expectations now. It's Glaive, it's Kuben, maybe do has staying. We've heard rumors about Nerds going Thanks somewhere else, right? So, in terms of the pressure on Glaive, completely removed. Can we bring up that Nerds tweet again? Because uh, Snake Expert Maui, mm. what's that little snake doing right at the end of Nerds? Oh, this is, this is just tweet. funny. Yeah. This is just funny. I mean, Nerds obviously <laughs> throwing a little bit of shade at Modded and Sun Pies, but it's, I mean, Freya, if you want to do emoji breakdown here, it's, smi it's breakdown. there's a heart, there is a heart eyes, and then there is a snake emoji. So he's kind of just poking a little fun at them for the, him getting abandoned by Mod and Sun Pai, Snappy as well. I mean, it's... It's not, it's not, it's not really yeah, that much yeah, animosity yeah, yeah. there. They're, they're, they're fine. It's an amical breakup. Uh, he's also one of the players that is a little bit hard done by in this whole transaction. I mean, obviously, d is left yeah. behind, and that sucks massively. But yeah. if you think about hype around the player and prospect and sort of what we could have seen from a player, Nurse was very much up there. He was a player that was talked to a whole lot, that delivered quite a lot, and that still has this potential to improve. And now it feels like he might have just missed a train that is going to a direction. And wh wherever the hell is he going to stay? Does that going to set back his own projection and trajectory for a few months as well? I, I would kind of feel like, feels bad my sad emoji if I was Nurse. Let's just play with the idea that Nurse went with the other guys to Falcons. Then you're looking at XN's plus matches, right? Yeah. That's a sick. pretty good roster. Yeah, We're sick. talking about a straight up upgrade from Duha instead of Magix, and, and that would all of a sudden be a team that we could be like, sure, they've, they've gone to finals without him. Now they get Magix in there, they get Sonic in there, a, a coach that is known to get the best out of his players, a coach that knows what it's like to win a major, a support system in Falcons that are brought in Lars Robble as well, the, the Danish mental coach who's been around a lot of major winning teams as well. That would be a quite an interesting project. I would prefer project. that. I, I would prefer also that. prefer yeah. that. Yeah. So I also feel a little bit sorry for Nerds, but also a little bit sad that we don't get to see that. Where do you think he's going to go then, Jacob. What's Nurse's Yeah, where is Nurse going? Do you want to play a little uh, game for you? You want to play a game? Uh, I'll do take I a popcorn a game? right here. Of course I do. If if I if I hit your your mouth here, right? Nurse <laughs> is going to heroic. You got it in my mouth. In your in mouth. My from mouth. this okay. distance. Are you ready? Right? You got to open. Wait, Nurse is going open. Open. Nurse is going to heroic. Open up for you. I want him to go to heroic. Well, just what do you care about? Just play along, Freya. Play along. You just need to open your mouth. That's it. Please no. <laughs> Almost. Well, not so quite. It's not going to work. I don't think it's happening. Throw I've ever seen in my life. Okay, Nurt's not no going to work. We heard it here first. <laughs> um, let's talk about Falcons, because obviously yes. that's where some of the members are going to be going, as we were just alluding to. Um, what's your take on this Maui, the roster that they've been able to build? Well, we talked about the fact that this is the core three from Ents already, Modin, Sun Pius, Snappy, and then We've already said also, and I agree with this, what Pimp said, that Majisk is an upgrade to Dehoff. That's a one-for-one. One. That's excellent. Boros, a little bit more of an unknown quantity. We've seen that some of the players that really had a great coming out party at the Blast Paris Major have fallen out since then. I'm talking about people like Ema. And so it's going to be up for Boros to like pick it up back to where he was at that Paris Major. He's got a great staff around him, but it does seem like if... Falcons don't achieve their goals, it's clear to me that Boros will be the first mm. person on the chopping block. Yeah, I agree with you. I also think Madden's credits kind of improved drastically in the last few months. Sure. Like, I think he's been a player where if you really wanted to nitpick and look at potential mistakes and, and productivity on a server, you could at times argue that he would be a, a piece to be improved in ends. But the way he's played admits this sort of tumultuous period that they've had. He gained a whole lot of respect from a whole lot of people as well. So now he's in there. He kind of, he took the bus. Uh, he, he punched his ticket in the first class on the, I was going to say the Titanic, hopefully not. Hopefully <laughs> something that did not crash okay. eventually. But he did get his ticket on that one. Yeah, uh, in terms of what we heard rumored to potentially be the Falcons roster coming together in these yeah. months leading up, how would you grade what they've actually managed to put together? I think given the circumstances of what's going on in the scene right now, it's a pretty good result for them, right? They got three of the core players from ENS, a team that we spoke about already, has been into grand finals, that has a lot of potential. Just getting Snobby and Magix in the first place, that's a, I wouldn't call it a guaranteed success, but it, it, it I guess it gives them attraction power, right? It, it, it's, it's signaling to the world that we can and will build a good team over time. However, had they gone for Nico, had they gotten yeah. him into the lineup, that's when we speak, you know, about that X-Factor. Would Monacy have joined them? That's when we speak about the X-Factor. So I'm a little bit lukewarm 
lukewarm on the idea, but I think in terms of the roster and how they're gonna do early on, it's probably the best case scenario. I would have given them an A if they were able to secure the services of Nico, secure the services of Monacy, but getting what is essentially a rebuilt and retooled core of ends, yeah. I actually am more likely to give this a C plus. It's just, Ooh. it's passing. But sure, they got a decent roster, but when you were shooting for the stars and we, we knew how much backing this Falcons roster had, you should have been swinging for the fences and you have a roster now that in my eyes, has probably a 70% likelihood to qualify for the major, maybe 70 to 80%, but it's not one that I'm actually gonna really even give a good chance to make it to the playoffs. Now, you, you mentioned the major, and I think that's a key point, right? When we heard about their first intention, the A plan, as we like to call it, kind of falling apart, I thought that we would have to say goodbye to Falcons for at least one cycle of major. I yeah. thought that was going to be it. They would never put together a very competitive team. We'd have to wait for them for the next major at the end of the year. Now it feels like they, that would be hard. they have enough. They have enough to be present, to have a say, to be part of the conversation, and it is a little bit of a remix of end. So considering how a catastrophe it could have been, they kind of saved the bacon there. What are you thinking about this kind of new in-game leader and coach formation that we see coming mm. together? Because obviously you were really praising uh, Snappy and Saw. They were, you know, such a great mind for the game. How do you think he's going to be working with Sonic going forward? I have a lot of faith that it's going to be a similar trend of just Snappy working very well with the coach. There's nothing that has given me any inclination that Sonic should be a bad coach to fit with Snappy. He obviously took Astralis to four major championships, won one with Vitality as well. That's two very different in-game leaders in both Glaive and Apex. Snappy has been in our S tier for IGLs for some time now. And so if anybody can really help him out even more than Saw did, it probably is Zonic. There's probably one name in the world and it is him. I think it's a good match in the sense that Snappy is the type of in-game leader that doesn't mind the coach having an impact on what's going on with the team in terms of scouting players, preparing for a game, etc. Look at a guy like Kadian. Sure, he wants to work with a great coach, but the reason why Exist was brought into a rogue in the first place, I almost felt was that Kadian is still the leading voice. No matter what, the coach will not be a voice that is stronger than Kadian being the in-game leader. Whereas for Snappy, he's controlling everything that's happening on the server, but he doesn't mind giving out responsibility or working in tandem with mm. Coach, with Sonic, with Saw outside of the server. So in terms of matching up and, and working together, I think that's a great fit. I think that's that's where the whole debate will be, and this is where we're going to make projections and hypotheses, right? Because if we're just thinking quality of both these parts, Snappy as an IGL, Sonic as a coach, of course, it's absolute golden material. But we mentioned the Vitality stint. It took a little bit of time for Zonic and Apex to work together. Yeah. They came from drastically different philosophies on how Counter-Strike was supposed to be played out. And at the very beginning, it was not pretty at all. So on paper, it looks great. Let, let's see if they actually do want to play the same CS and how long it takes them to be on the same wavelength. So talking about Snappy's former uh, coach, what do you think of Saw's move to Heroic, Maui? It's tough to grade that one without knowing what the rest of the Heroic roster is. Yeah. I wouldn't necessarily think that it's a bad place to start going with somebody like Saw to try to build a roster. With Saw, he obviously also, before even joining Ents, was working with Havu, who also were able to accomplish much more than you would have expected, given that they were a, a severely underpowered lineup. And so with Ents, I think he kind of did the same thing again. He actually put a lineup on paper that wasn't really too strong and turned a couple of the pieces, like Nerds, for example, into bonafide stars. So if there's anybody that I want to be one of the foundation pillar pieces for a roster, I don't think Saw's a bad shot whatsoever. I agree with you, but where I'm a little bit disappointed is that this feels to me as a lateral move for him. And I feel like he had already earned his stripes. He'd it, it done enough with what he was given in ends to maybe give him the keys to something a little bit bigger, a bit more put together in sure. place, a bit more prestigious. And now with Heroic, we don't even know what the hell lineup they're going to put together. We have no idea. It's going to take him so long, arguably, to put together a roster to once again showcase what he had. I mean, let's not, let's not beat around the bush. Like People were talking about potentially G2 could be a, a name that you mentioned for Saul. I yeah. thought this was the moment. I thought this was the moment for him to take a step further, and I feel like it's a little lateral. You say a lateral movement, I say a downgrade. It's a straight-up mm -hmm. downgrade having to build up a new team under Heroic. There's no doubt that with the new owners in Heroic, it's probably a different economy. You know, there's some financial stuff that's obviously going on in there as well, and that's why Heroic are able to attract a coach of his caliber. So if you're Heroic, I look at it and thinking that's a massive win, because I agree with you. If anyone could build up a team from the ground, it would be Saw. We've seen that happen before, but from Saw himself, I agree with you. Not even a lateral move, but a straight up downgrade. Yeah, let's move on to talk a bit about Cloud9. Obviously, no real roster changes in terms of their active roster, but Shiro, uh, 
Sounds like Spirit want to get a hold of him. Jason. Yeah, because we discussed it yesterday, right? If, if we're Cloud9, bring back Shira into that lineup for the major. You <laughs> know, just save come back, us, please. come back, you know, just do something about this fix. AWP problem. But that doesn't <laughs> seem to be an opportunity anymore. However, it's been rumored that, you know, from, from certain sources, we're talking about a, a player that is going for more than a million dollars. So there's also some financial stuff going on in here where Shira, of course, being one of the best players in the world when it comes to Counter-Strike, he's going to be expensive. And apparently Spirit have the money to do so. I think he's going to be missed in Cloud9. I still think Cloud9 is going to look back at this move thinking, why on earth did we allow Shiro to feel so uncomfortable within our team that he wanted to bench himself and move to Spirit? Because that's not an upgrade for Shiro either. That's a, a team he's going to where he has to try to elevate the team and not the team elevating him. When we think about the prospect, though, of Shiro alongside Don, oh, I, yeah. I get really excited. I, I do yeah. get really excited. I will say that Chopper has proven, though, time and time again, that he can also bring rosters like this. With You have Donk, you have Shiro. He's brought teams with Dexter with worse pieces overall to the playoffs of a major. That's why I'm also really excited about it, because I think Chopper has been perennially underrated in terms of the fact that he has consistently brought rosters into major playoff situations. And, and for my money, this is probably on paper one of the strongest rosters he's had firepower-wise. Oh, well, that's going to be interesting, yeah. The Shiro Dong and that Spirit Jersey. Shiro Dong, yeah. Shiro, that, that, is a that is a combination, but I do agree with you. I share your feeling. I just look at Cloud9 and I have so many names that come to my mind who should could be there as a sniper. And to think that they had Shiro, they had his caliber, and now he's gone as well, kind of pisses me off. I, I'm be, I'll be honest. Fair kind play. of pisses me off. Jacob, do you want to play a game? Yeah. If I land this in your mouth. <laughs> Simple. We're doing the mouth thing again. Simple. Simple. Okay, you better, you better aim now and right. you better be, okay. Is that as big as you can open your mouth? Throw it harder than you think. Okay. <laughs> yeah, no, no simple uh, to Cloud9, huh? I want that it would so be nice, though. That would be nice, though. That would be nice. I want, I want you to have it. There, <laughs> I couldn't do it. It's actually really not happening, I guess. And this is I why we're not up on the stage, because True. we can't aim for shit. Um, let's talk about <laughs> Cloud9's going forward, then, because I think we all want something to change with the warping role in that. We're kind Listen, of, you know... I want to call you out a little bit, Matthew, right here, because you've entertained the idea oh, for geez. me on some of the desks together that you're not sure Exile is going to stay in Cloud9. Right. And I, in the beginning, I was like shaking my head thinking, you're wrong. You're wrong. You're absolutely wrong. However, I'm starting to entertain the idea. This tournament, though, <laughs> Exile played okay Counter-Strike, but let's play the game of you need an AWP in Cloud9. Who do you remove? Is it going to be Exile or is it going to be Hobbit? Because I agree with you in that sense that it got to be one mm. of the two. I think if you to, to find the answer, you cannot just say, is Hobbit better than Exile? And then stop that question here. I think this is not going to give you the whole overview that you need. About roles. It's a matter of the positions mm. that are to be filled, the roles that are to be filled, and how would players actually behave and perform in these roles. And I think it, it might sound like a backhand compliment, but it's not. I think Hobbit might be more comfortable sure. in shit roles. Let's just not mince word. That's just how it is. Whereas I've seen Exile disappear completely from games where he's not being catered to and have a hard time. I don't know that Axile can be the guy that they need. Okay. If they bring in an AWP, he's he's strong as hell. Axali is strong. He's stronger than Hobbit. But Counter Strike is not just five players being put together. There has to be some sort of synergy, and people have to be comfortable in certain roles. And I don't think Axali is not a magician for that. No, he's just not. I'm sorry for taking your job for it right here, but Maui, just entertain the idea. <laughs> we'll get back to entertain you eventually. Entertain the idea that you let go of Shiro, you know, a top five player in 2022. Yep. Now we're also letting go of Exile. Oh my Brawl, God. A top five player of 2022 as well. You're getting letting go of Exile and Shiro, two of the best players in the world of Counter-Strike. And you're telling me they can fit in Cloud9 if they want to be the best version of themselves? What on earth is that? <sighs> to me, that reads as poor upper management. It yeah. reads as a poor leadership situation too. I would, I would have, I mean, I've actually thought that Axile was serviceable at this event. I would say that it was obvious that Electronic stole the show for this team, but I wouldn't, I still wouldn't actually take Hobbit out, or I mean, I, was, I would definitely take Hobbit out and leave Axile in. Like, I still have faith that Axile can be a really strong bombsite anchor. He doesn't need the most support. T-side can be a little bit weird for him if they, if they don't set him up in any way, but I do think that this team still, to me, just reads as like upset potential in a BO3, but never actually the consistency uh, and system to actually make it deeper. But don't work. we all agree they need an AWP, right? So oh, obviously, oh, they do. Someone's gotta yeah. get out. Someone's gotta change for it. Listen, I told you it's gonna be. It's, it's uh, just yeah, gonna be Navi I, I again. guess it's my responsibility. What about you, Freya? How do you feel about Cloud9? Um, I want an Orpa. I want simple there. I didn't hit the shot, so yeah, you it's ruined not that for everyone. So actually, good for that, yeah. yeah, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, yeah. So what's what's your take? Have you been sold on any side of this equation? It's Axel. 
og, og hoppe af. Yeah, I'm undecided to be completely honest, because I think it's a crazy conversation to have in the first place. The fact that we were talking about a Cloud9 without Shiro, without Exile, you know, a year ago that would be unimaginable. Like we couldn't even entertain that discussion or, or that conversation. I do agree though, I, I do feel Hobbit Worldwise is maybe a bit a bit better suited for it. And, and I think that's where Cloud9 is, is struggling, right? They also feel they need an upper, but they also feel they can't get rid of Exile or Hobbit. So what do you do? I, I don't want to let them off the hook too easily. Perfecto was really bad at this event too. Ooh. Oh, so wait, wait, Perfecto too. Okay. He was, he was, okay. quite, he was okay. quite bad. Um, let's, so <laughs> like, there's a lot to think about in Cloud9 in so many field, different ways. Man. Just saying, just saying. I, I mean, he was, he was hard to watch. It was really hard to watch. Correct, but maybe that's not what they're going to change. I don't know. We're going to have to wait till 2024 to see exactly what's going on with a hell of a lot of these rosters, but we're going to be throwing things to a quick break because when we are back, it is time for our show match. It's going to be Henry G and Anders guiding you through all the action.
welcome to Super Sunday! Oh, the atmosphere is electric in the arena so today. Good. Of course, we've got Vitality taking on phase in a couple of hours. But first, Anders, we need to set up a historic rivalry. The show match is coming up, and we have Team India versus Team Pakistan taking each other on on the big stage to decide it all. Are you excited for this one? I've never seen a crowd this excited for a show match. I'll be honest, Henry. Anytime we get a new regions into the space and put a little bit of spotlight on them, I am excited. I think it's what the game needs. Obviously, huge potential. I think it's a really great cause. I look forward to it. It is a great cause. And the whole idea of this, we're laying the foundation to South Asian Counter-Strike going forward. It's not just a show match. Uh, going forward into 2024, there is an event happening called The Draft, which is going to be happening starting in January, going into February, ending in a land in Malaysia called the Super Six. The concept is simple. The idea is that we'll be taking uh, legends from Counter-Strike in general, be from Europe or North America, joining teams from India and Pakistan, playing in the tournament in towards January. And the idea is we'll be actually bolstering the nations, yeah. actually showing they have amazing representation over there. It's a gaming nation, and they actually don't get much say in Counter-Strike right now, but we know they've got amazing players, and this will be a chance for them to show that they can keep up and actually have a chance going forward in tournaments. Yeah, there's plenty of FPS representation in India and Pakistan outside of Counter-Strike, right? But Counter-Strike's been overlooked a little bit. It's a real shame. Like, we got a new game coming out. We should be trying to pick up as many players as we can from that region. As we mentioned, it's called The Draft, and to show you a little bit more information, have a look at this. Introducing Team India. We've got Defaulter, Rossi, Ghost, joined by Perfecto and Tess. It's quite a deadly team, Anders, if you don't mind me saying. Yeah, what an opportunity for these guys to be on stage. You know, you're going to be playing oh, with some amazing. absolute legends. Like the atmosphere in today is it, almost more hype than it was I yesterday. Everyone's turned out in their thousands to celebrate these players and show who is going to be the strongest Counter-Strike Nation going forward. And up next, of course, ladies and gentlemen, introducing Team Pakistan, representing Executor, Bullet, and Ismuchir. Joined by, oh, it's young Jimmy as well, Anders, your favorite player right now, and Makov, one of the absolute goats of the game right now. It's going to be Sun Pius as well. They've got one of the most electrifying orphans to join them, the Rookie of the Year as well. This is going to be a difficult game for Team India, you have to say that. I really think it will be. You know, show matches are all about having fun, but I bet there's going to be some rivalry anyway. Uh, I'm certainly marks the, uh, the Indian and the Pakistani players, but also, I'm assuming, you know, somebody like uh, like Jim Pat, like he's not going to be able to turn it off, right? Like he's here to play, he's on oh, stage. Oh, absolutely. These guys are stone cold killers. These guys are going to be looking to absolutely take the victory here. It's a show match, it's a bit of fun, but no. Wow, the stage has been set. The players take their position, and bear in mind, it's a traditional blast show match, Anders, and you know what that means. We might not have any chickens today, I'm gonna to warn everyone, there won't be any friendly chickens out on the stage, but the usual antics you've known to come and love, maybe a few smoke bombs in the booth, who knows, <laughs> uh, but time will tell. I can confirm, though, the map is gonna be Anubis, Anders. Your favorite map at this point. It's I fantastic. It's been great, this tournament, and uh, the players are in position. Some Pius and Jimmy in the mix as well, I think. Team Pakistan might have the edge here. I'm not sure. This is going to be real close. So, uh, as we mentioned, this is the name we're going to struggle the most. It's Mucher. Bullets, Executor, Sun Pires, and Young. You're slipping Jimmy at the end there. That's going to be Team Pakistan. Uh, that's going to be deadly. And uh, I really think it looks stacked, doesn't it? Like, it looks hard real players stacked. to play up against. Yeah, they're, they're, those guys, they're, 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 they're killers, man. They want to make sure they turn up and uh, deliver. They're not going to be treating this like it's a fun game. Some Pires and Jimmy are going to be playing for pride out there for sure. And of course, Tessa and Perfecto joining Team India, which will be Rossi, Ghost, Defaulter, and of course, Tessa and Perfecto as well from Heroic and Cloud9, respectively. I guess, Anders, I need your prediction. What are you going to be going for here? 
Oh, you know, we do have a, a, a lone Dane up there that, you know, kind of better. I'm going to okay, be honest. That's fair like, enough. Combination. You, I think you have to be on Team India. Do I have to? I think so. All right. I'll give Chess a little bit of backup. I'll be on the Indian side for he, this one. He had some bad news this week as well, you know. Like, he did. <laughs> <laughs> he had some bad news. Give him that, Anders. Let's, uh, let's give him that. All right. You all right. I'll the sign with the there. Indian side. I'll take Team Pakistan then. Like, uh, I think this could be a great game either way. Bear in mind, ladies and gentlemen, it's all about the future and sh shining a light on South Asian Counter Strike going forward. A historic rivalry about to be settled on this stage right now. If we're talking cricket terms, India are the number one nation in cricket right now, but are they the number one oh. nation in Counter-Strike? Abu Dhabi makes some noise! Oh yes, indeed. We are ready to get underway. A best of one on Anubis here. Team India starting the team side. T side and Team Pakistan. And we're straight into Gundan. There's no pistol rounds here. What is going on? They are fully equipped right off the bat. No we don't pistol. want to waste any time. It's oh, a team kill. It's no. Team kill to start with. Rossi got the opening on execution, but he went down straight afterwards. And then straight into a four versus four now. Some pious here, here in the back with the AWP. No. Oh, perfecto. Of all players, it's going to be able to out orb him. All right. Okay, we'll get a kill in the meantime, but still, it's a two versus two. There's rotation happening, and there's a flank happening as well. It's actually Jim Fat who's coming up from the T-spawn. Bear in mind, you can get involved in this show match. Get on Blast TV right now. You can vote what happens in the booth, who gets the punishment, and you can see raining nades or short fuse coming up next. So there will be raining nades and raining bullets from Jim Fat as he finds the kill. Two versus one. He'll be joined by bullets as Defaulter fends them off. He does have 51 points of health. No utility. We'll see whether he can do anything about this. Should be a default plant. He's been engulfed by the flames here. First kill. He can't quite land the shot. The four DPs is coming in. Team Pakistan going to take his first round. And he absolutely will. Dominant victory there. Nothing he could do. Too many incendiaries. Too much fire. And he's taken out of the equation. Double Molotov, Henry, to shut him down. He had an HE and it almost got the kill on the guy defusing the bomb, but it wasn't quite enough. So close call, to be honest. But. Um, yeah, it's a classic rush. No real setup for it. Just go hard at the bomb okay. side. That kind of sets the tone now. We're not doing any no nonsense with the pistols. And no. uh, straight into the gun rounds here. Sam Pius is loving it. And uh, it will be Team Pakistan to take that first round. So now it's raining nades. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> the, the fans voted. It was overwhelming in the favor of the nades. You know what this means. I mean, if you didn't practice this, you could be left behind here. But just the infinite grenades that are going to be raining down. You can keep throwing each as much as you want. Cover the whole map in fire. If you buy the Molotovs, you can, you just, it doesn't end. Okay, that, that sounds like chaos to me, Anders. I'm not sure CS2 can even handle it. Imagine the, like 10 smokes going down at they once. They could crash the server. They, they could, might. Yeah, actually, we almost did this last time in Copenhagen. I think we almost did crash the server. So just to reiterate, there are infinite grenades. You can just keep bombarding. <laughs> the airstrikes are coming through here. The HD grenades. Widow's going to be an absolute nightmare. Presumably the CTs have the advantage here, Anders, because they can just lock off those choke points time and time again. It's Pakistan looking to continue the streak here. Some pirates with one kill to his name. He's only got... A P250, right? He's only got the pistol. Wait, he just didn't even want a gun, I guess. We're nope. just going to be focused on just those grenades. It's back and forth we go. It's like dodgeball out here. Keep no running, the Jimmy. weapons. Keep running. They're coming for you with the nades. Executor gets one in return, but this is madness. This is closer to sort of Worms 3D than it is to Counter-Strike this point in time. <laughs> They're just all using the HEs. They don't even stop. Look at how low. Executor and Jim Fat are well, This is where I expect Team India to take the advantage. Bear in mind, like I said, the number one cricketing nation. They've got some backspin on these uh, <laughs> these grenades coming through as well. You're really poking at an open wound there, Henry, you know. It's a, it's a serious oh, thing no, I've heard. Jim, oh, no, himself up. He exploded himself. Why did he do that? It's unreal. But now, though, a four versus three. They're actually running strats with the nades. I've never seen anything like it. Oh, here we oh, go. Well, it's shown here. up just in time. Going to throw all grenades. The bomb attempted to be planted here. Oh. The nades will blow up. Ghost in the end. Two versus three now. How do you defuse in front of these grenades? The smoke on top won't matter at all. Just, get, just throw ten smokes around, I suppose. Just throw smoke off the smoke. Oh. The grenades coming in. You can see it's an excellent grenade from Bullet. It might be enough here. Perfecto had to defuse. Deny the defuse. He's doing a good job. They can't get on it. You're right. How can they possibly fend them off? Someone needs to initiate the defuse is coming in, but Bullet will take him down. It was raining grenades the entire time, but once again, Team Pakistan came out on top. Oh, that is absurd. I thought he was going to be able to just stand there and just throw grenades on top of the bomb so no one could defuse it, but it didn't work out that way. 
Jim Fat, look at this, he's flashed. He got flashed, and as a result, he just threw it straight into the pillar and blew himself up. Well, that round took so long, they actually they actually rotated mid-round with the nades. Oh my god. My. Are we going back to business as usual? Is that the end of the madness? At least a oh, respite. Yes. For and, a uh, round at least. I can see some guns being brought out here. Sunpire is one of the deadliest snipers on the planet right now. He sees a player crossing over. Nice footwork there. Team India looking to breach open. This eight bomb side is bullet to defend. See if he can live up to his name. Uh oh, he delivers one right to the dome of Rossi there. Opening frag. And Team Pakistan hold off the A-bomb site admirably right now, but Ghost is fighting back with the AWP with the rotations are coming through. Tess says, needs to be careful. Here he comes. Is Munche mowing them down with the M4A4. Grenades being deployed. Flashbang. Will he take the wide swing as the bomb's being planted? Double flash to set it up. Molotov behind. That's surely going to get the kill here. Nice he should. Work. He's going to get it with the rifle instead, but the counter grenade comes out. It really slows him down. Not easy for Insmuchi to come in and actually do anything here. Some pious. Oh, he can't get the scope off in time. Perfect double take him down. It's looking like a great round here for Team India. That's, First on the board for them. Yeah, that's much more like it. It's a traditional round showing their prowess. And I saw A execution. And it works out for them. The opening frag went in favor of Pakistan as well, but they couldn't quite fend them off here. Nice entry there from Bullet, but uh, unfortunately overwhelmed. Tesses showing some nice form here. Perfecto to close things out as well. Oh, he's loving it as well. That's what they needed. Team India on the board. I think this one's going to go the full distance, ladies and gentlemen. So let's have a little temperature check. If you're here for Team India, make some noise. Okay. And if you're here for Team Pakistan, let me hear you. Oh, I'd say the latter might have them there. Actually, you might be right. Yeah, okay. That's unexpected, but all right. Wow. We are getting into another wacky round, Henry. I hope you are ready. I missed it. Which one is it next? The monitors are off. Oh, God. They are playing in no. darkness. That iconic moment. Remember, Moses cheated when this I... happened. He still keeps me up at night. I can't you know? believe that that's... I thought I knew Jason There's a lot a about his character, doesn't it? Cheated his way to victory in a show match. Not well, the first time. Just tells you, you know, how much, how, no matter how much you know someone, Henry, you really don't know what's at the <laughs> core of that person, you know? So, just to reiterate, they can't see a damn thing. Every player has a black screen right now. Oh, but Tess's right now. nose. So the Tess bomb is, actually, is the oh, ace yes, in this so round. He's, just got, he's got the bomb. So, oh, he's actually doing a good job. He is actually working this one out. He's walking as well. He knows where he is. He's got a mind map of where he needs to make his way to. In the A bomb site. Oh, they're hitting each other. <laughs> Shoot Jimmy, the gun, Jimmy. Oh, yeah, Jimmy knows. Jimmy's aware. And the bomb, if he hears it, he'll get the sound cue. Oh, my God. The bomb's going down. That is absolutely massive. There's surely no way you can defuse this one. Oh, they have five defuse kits. He's got the bomb. That's so early. Yeah. You throw it right away. But no how can they possibly find the bomb at this stage? How can they even navigate their way towards the bomb site itself? Well, look at Jimmy the Bat here. He's, he can hear the bomb, right? He knows. He's thinking about it. So if he can just follow the he, sound cues. Has he got a kip? He, he has. They all have. He's trying, but flashes are coming out as well. There's a smoke on top Use now. the force, Jimmy. Yeah, he has to use that echolocation. Oh, he's know? got it! Oh, no! Oh, he's on, he's on it! No, he was on it! There, there we he go. Is. He back the door! This is unbelievable. The blind leading the blind here as Tessas will hold him off. It looks like Team India have done enough for their second round on the board, ladies and gentlemen. We're tying it all up. And it's all down to that bomb plant. That might be the best round with no monitors we've ever had. Like, in yeah, terms of Tessas somehow just absolute nerd, learning the map with his eyes closed, finding the bombs. I don't think many people could do that. He did so well. I've never seen anything like it. I thought we'd be stuck in spawn. He ran straight towards that bomb site and even got a knife <laughs> kill on towards young Jimmy as well. Oh, they're loving it. Team India starting to build up a bit of a streak here. I think we go back to a normal round now, but we'll see what's in store as we get into round number five. What a show match it's been so far. It Truly. could go either way at this point. Some pious. Need to find some form once again. As we get into it, we're going to see the weapons being brought out. The money's not an issue. You can see they've got $16,000. Buy whatever you like. Some pirates opting for the M4A1S, though, Anders. Okay. Doesn't feel like the sniper at the moment. You know, that's kind of his usual day job. So now yeah. he's been let loose. He can do whatever he wants. Not seeing anything wild and crazy. So in the rounds where they're allowed to, they want to play a little bit more seriously. Again, it is a, it's a great rivalry at the moment. 
You brought cricket into it, Henry, as well. You know, that's that's and that's also like a little bit of a sensitive subject because Pakistan are like ranked number three in the world, India number one. They always have been, to be honest. But it's uh, Pakistan looking to fight back here, but it seems India overwhelming this B bomb site. It's good, Jay. Gets one, but it's not quite enough. Rossi will answer back here. They've actually got a solid grip on the beat side itself. Bullet will remain, and he's got himself in a very problematic scenario. Tries to blow open the smoke. I've no idea what he can do at this point in time. <laughs> they know exactly where he is. A little bit of a flashbang. He actually runs in front of it. It's not a bad move, but there's three people waiting on the other side. Another good round here. Team India starting to gain momentum there. They're packing together these rounds nicely at the moment. We'll see how this one keeps going. We've got more tricks up our sleeves, no doubt. Fans are voting over on Lost at TV, so we'll see what yeah, the next round is going to be. coming in. I, I want to see the smoke bomb again. You've got, we've got to see that. Uh, that that's always a, a crowd pleaser. Gets everyone going. It does make people happy, doesn't it? You know? Pecto, you've been on the stage a few times. What could possibly be wrong? <laughs> Come on now. Let's get on with it, shall we? Mine's not working. Got a little, you know, little issue here or there. Um, so you, the smoke round, that's one of your favorite ones. You enjoy that? Yeah, just, just to kind of like just throw it at, so like anything that makes the players uncomfortable in the booth, I think is the most exciting. I feel like the, I'm curious to see what people are going to buy with the hyper speed round. I feel like people always end up on the P90. Nobody ever buys the Negev. I'd love to see a Negev in hyper speed, you know? Maybe the XM could also be good in hyper speed, like fast reloading with a shotgun. A lot of people are saying that shotgun's overpowered now. It's overpowered. Yeah, I've it's heard too it. much. It's not true. I saw it on Reddit. I don't know how much the chat really <laughs> means, but you know, some guy said it. Well, if you're just joining us, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to yet another Blast Show match here. It's Team India versus Team Pakistan, a historic rivalry. And uh, oh, what's coming up here next, Anders? I don't like the look of the, the main screen. Oh, over there. this could get a really wacky. I don't maybe. like the look of this. <laughs> maybe at all. that's why Perfecto's confused. <laughs> oh, yeah. It is a show match and it is for fun, but Henry is also to try and open up a couple of new regions, um, which would be really, really exciting for the next year, right? We've got the draft coming up, so hopefully you guys caught the beginning of it, but um, I'm going to try and see if we can shine a spotlight on the Southeast Asian region. And I, I've, yeah, I think that's, uh, you know, there's, there's, again, there is in other FPS titles, there definitely is uh, Absolutely, know, a lot more yeah, legacy huge in it. Team. Yeah, it's huge. Just, it's just not being think, represented in Counter-Strike so much. We're trying to build and develop that going into the future. It's a collaboration between Nordwind Gaming and Blast. It kicks off in January. So if you're from that region, you fancy yourself uh, maybe even getting involved, you have the chance to play with legends of Counter-Strike uh, mixed with teams from India and Pakistan. And it's at the Super 6 tournament happening in Malaysia. Uh, towards February, I believe, is the actual land itself. But uh, this is all an initiative brought to you by Blast and Nodwin. So just uh, give you a bit more information and uh, hopefully we'll be back underway momentarily. There are going to be some tech issues when we're kind of messing up the server as much as we are right now. When we're <laughs> deploying all of this madness. Pushing it to the limits, really. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Testing the CS2 engine out there. How far can it go? But um, upside down. Now, Anders. Inverse mouse. Oh, that sucks. It's so hard to play with. Now, we've, we've already established the best strategy here is to try and just play with, you know, AWDS, like just try to not move your mouse at all. Just okay. move it like left to right. But as soon as you get into any territory, we have to look up or down. It just, it's madness. So just try not to do that if you know what you're doing. If you're brand new to the to subject here, you might be in trouble. But they've bought P90s. They're sure that's oh, it. The best gun in the game. It makes sense. You've said this for a minute. Yeah, I, I feel like there's a real future for it. And you can see the CTs are the same way inclined. It's going to be a full on A rush here from Team India. You can see they're struggling. They're going up, trying to control that recoil. They'll trade blows here at the main entrance. Uh, for now, a four versus four. Grenades being deployed from bullets. Executor looking to mow them down eventually, but they're going to be happy with that initial frag and make their way back toward the B side. It's the auto shotgun for Jimmy here. Some pious going for the AWP. You can see he's struggling with it, aiming into the sky. It's uh, completely messing in his brain, but uh, we'll see if he can hold on. Oh, the P90 <laughs> as well. It's so difficult to control that recoil. Your muscle memory is working against you, Anders. You can see even in the back bullet, trying to get a couple of kills here. You've got to aim down as he gets the double. Got to get that reload train. Surely he gets dropped at this point. Doesn't really take much. Oh, no. It's Tessis to find him eventually. Three versus two for Pakistan. They look to tie things up here. What? All right. Jimmy gets a kill. It's Perfecto on the other one. And now it's down one versus two here. 
Jim Pat's barely alive, but Vecto, he's a little bit rattled at the moment. Trying to see if he could find it. Looking for anything. The bomb, not even close to him at the moment. I think going for the kills might be the easier choice. He's going to get one of them there. Oh, Sunpies has given up on the AWP. I think he's trying to use the pistol instead. At range. Oh, the spray is good. Perfecto takes another one for India. Yeah, they're starting to build up a bit of a lead now as well. The upside down round, one of the more challenging ones, of course. We saw that muscle memory working against Sampias. Couldn't quite get his hand around him. And uh, unfortunately, the AWP doesn't have much impact. I think that's a great call, though. Shotguns, P90s, that's where you want to be in that sort of scenario. You can see how it messes with your brain so much here. But uh, Team India, get it over the line. It's actually so hard to play with, especially with any panic sets in. You're just, you know... You said your brain is just telling you to do one thing, and you have to do the exact opposite. <laughs> Celebrating them. They are loving life at the moment. They've got a two-round lead, Henry. It's not bad. The not Indian, bad at all. Indian it, team it, are running a, away with it. It's a T-sided map, but uh, yeah, Team India put the best foot forward. Uh, looks like we're back into a more traditional setup here. As uh, just going to be a normal round of Counter Strike, if you can believe that. It's going to be some pies looking to open things up as he takes the AWP over towards middle. Ghost trying to crack things open. He has a B bomb side, but it's Munche! Oh my goodness! He does get a lovely spray down here. Team India on the back foot, four versus two. Perfecto and Tessess. Wow, quite the combo. Difficult going to be shut this one down. They have got Jimmy alive as well. But surely this is where Pakistan can close the gap. Tessus on the hundo, looking down towards those canals. Yeah, he heard the bullet land on the wall behind him, so he knows that someone is in there. Perfecto, I think, landed a no-scope on some pies. That's one of them that had it happen, but he's going to miss that shot, and it puts him in a little bit of trouble. He knows someone's down there. Oh, good communication between Tessus and Perfecto. He definitely got the word in from his teammate there. Well, he's still got a minute to work with. They're trying to pick them off one by one. Perfecto seems to know exactly where this... Oh my god, player, it's he's born is! He's born it bound to a one versus one! Perfecto, four kills in the round, he's on for the ace here. Up against Jimmy though. And they're pretty far removed from each other, needs to recover the bomb. 40 seconds, it's outside B for now. He has no idea where the young Finn could be. He's got the AWP and low health as well, just 10 to his name. But this would be for the ace, Anders. And to extend that lead for Team India. An ace in a show match with oh. an AWP up against Sun Pius as well. It starts with a no-scope. It's a lot to ask for. If he wants to go to the bomb seconds. side, he has to run right now. He can't really walk around any longer. Yeah, oh, he has to go be. taken a long time. I think he might be dead to time. You know, it's a show match, but they, they can't help but take it seriously, though. This is a little bit tense. Eight seconds on the clock, and I think Jimmy's got the right oh. idea. Sneaks in. Let's him linger in the smoke for all of a second. It's Team Pakistan back on the board. A third round for them. Absolutely true. It was hard fought. It comes down to the one versus one. Perfecto, even with four kills in the round, wasn't quite enough. Oh, God. Perfecto the Orpa. We've seen it a couple of times. Even this tournament. Nice to bring it out. And it will be a disappointing result, but Pakistan will be closing the gap here. Sampaio staying away from that AWP. His main weapon, happy to operate with the M4 here. Better man, they got $16,000. No craziness this round, but Jim Fats is Munchie. As smooth as Mumbai Chai, starting to mow them down. As we will see a Rossi response, at least. Losing two people at the start of the round are definitely not easy. Now you can vote on which team gets smoked. Um, so right now it looks like it's going to be Team India. Pakistan, they might have to, they might, they might have a bit of an advantage going into the upcoming round here. Oh, it's the smoke. It out. is the smoke, your favorite round, Henry. Oh, it's actually happening. Yeah, well, they try to boost over the look through into the bomb side. So not going to find anyone again. Jim Fett and his Muche coming up with some great kills and it's just default to left. One versus four. And they're not even really rushing him down. They're flanking him, in fact. And Smoochie gets the last kill on top of everything else. That ties the game here. Pakistan catching up to India now. Oh, they really are. Turning up the heat here in Abu Dhabi. You can think that there's been a tone shift out there now. You can see that it's actually turning into a competitive <laughs> yeah. game. These real gun rounds, they're actually giving it everything they've got out there. This one falls in favor of Pakistan. We tie things up. And what have we got next, Anders? What could possibly be in store for us going forward here? We've seen absolutely everything so far. Oh dear, is it smoky in here? 
As we'll see, one of these teams suffered the fate of a very difficult round. Uh, it means an actual IRL smoke bomb is going to be deployed. And looks like Team India are going to have to be the ones to deal with it. Yeah, the fans voted, and this is the result. So, perfect. So, I think he's actually tried this before, so at least he can brace himself. But the rest of them, maybe not so much. It does get thick with smoke in there. You really... And then hold your breath if you can for two minutes. It's doable. Oh, we got the Krieger coming out now. Drossy picking that one up. Haven't seen a Krieg too much in CS2, so I applaud it. Try and see if you can pave the way for something interesting. A little bit of a shot here for Ghost. You can still see it's fine. Executor goes down. A four and five to ensue. Sun Pius still not with the AWP. Maybe he's just being, you know, a sportsman here, trying to play fair. I know what some pious could do with that. Sniper. Rossi, look at this! Oh. Double kill with the Creek, Henry. Yeah. Through the smoke as well. They've opened up the bomb site. They should be able to get the bomb plant here. Yeah. Fancies himself with a Sash and Tendul. Tendulka of uh, Counter-Strike, it seems. As we will see Perfecto answering the call with the AWP. Finds himself a couple of kills towards the end. Team India back on the board. Beautiful work there. Rossi mowing them down, making that creep work as uh, that range as well. Yeah, he's actually perfected the scope spray. That's that's rare. You know, you don't normally get to see that, but um, good job and perfecto. Trying to land a job as a future AWPA somewhere. You know, the, the whole conversation on Cloud9 is that they need an AWPA. So maybe okay. Perfecto saying, you know what, I, I'm it. He could be the guy. <laughs> Let's not make any changes. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's some pies. He's had enough here. He can feel this game slipping away. We're getting to round number 10. Rossi opening the fragging once again. He's looking red hot out there. Oh, my goodness. It is going to be great shots at Ranger. This is uh, starting to turn into a real competitive game. You can see this skill shining through from these players. A three versus two. Perfecto and Tess says left once again. To pick up the pieces here. So Look what the bomb with, is. Where is it? Drop towards the A-bomb site. So one way or another, they're going to have to rotate this way. Team Pakistan seem to know they are already grouped up, practically standing on top of the bomb. That could be a bit of a problem, but we'll see. Look at who they're up against. Bullet. Oh, he takes down Tessus. Great work in Smooch here. Just catching the perfect timing and taking down Perfecto. That is a bit of a comeback in the making here as Team Pakistan start to climb back up. Tied up five to five as we head into the next round. It's neck and neck. And no one's getting away with anything here. Oh, and it's the gravity, Henry. Okay. This is where things get really wild. On Anubis wild. especially, I think the skybox is now in CSU being fully so open. Up. You can actually go anywhere. You could uh, actually just jump over the map entirely, get yourself into a bomb site, and we'll see how high they can go. Auto shotguns. I believe you are super accurate in the air. So, yeah, you can just fly up. <laughs> Off they go. Are they ever coming down? <laughs> no way. Let's see how accurate the deagle is. He's certainly trying. But, but Henry, you're also exposed up there. You obviously can't really find any cover in the middle of the air. So, he's trying, Tess. is looking up on top of the bomb site with a shotgun. Raining down hell from above. Even throwing molotovs from up there. It's default to get the killer return. Look at Rossi. He's just, he's not firing the gun. Look at how sneaky he the is. The Indian space program is coming to get you. Watch out, Sun Pius. Here he comes, Rossi. Oh, in the back. Sun Pius didn't see it coming. Get the face full of lead. As Jim Fapp holds on for dear life. You can see the grenades are affected as well. They're floating through the air. And Tess says, oh, he's actually got some he's sort of stuck. insane position here. He can't move. He's, Can he, he fire any bullets? I think he might be there forever. He's clipped inside of the brush. He got, and there we go. All right. He found a way out. Unbelievably sneaky. He gets the kill. Spins around. Has to reload now. Yeah, use the Glock instead. He's trying to maneuver, trying to stay active so to not get shot down. Almost got Executor here, but Executor's now falling into the map. What level of madness is this, Henry? I've never seen anything like it. Who comes out on top? Executor's gone with the rifle. You can see it's not really working out for him. He's getting chipped away at that shotgun. will eventually get him. The bullets aren't landing, though. The Glock doesn't have the range, Anders. 
It doesn't seem to be landing. 15 seconds remaining. Who comes out on top? It's a big round. It's 5-5 five, five right now. 10 seconds remaining. Tessis doesn't have the bomb. Needs to find the kill right here, right now. Few more pop shots. Five seconds to go. One more will do it. Tessis, no! He hits it! And the shotgun prevails. India takes the lead. One more round to go. As you see, 6-5 come through. He really squeezed the last seconds out of that round and he really <laughs> tried to make sure. What on earth is happening? Hiding inside of the walls. Where are you, Tessa? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, perfect. I was asking, where are you, Tessa? <laughs> Nobody knows. Unbelievable. The last round of the half is coming up now. India with a one round lead. See if they can make it two at the end of it here. We got normal rifles coming out once again. Some pies going down, but he did take Rossi with him. Nice shot from Executor at range. That's Ghost being dropped in the middle. Uh, Pakistan looking to tie things up here. Bear in mind, this game's important for them. India undefeated against Pakistan in the Cricket World Cup. And they just want to put it out there. So this would be massive for Pakistan to pick this one up in Counter-Strike and show they are the stronger nation here. As Perfecto fighting for his life here outside the B bomb site. It's going to be a three versus two. It's Tessis and Perfecto once again, this deadly potent duo. Looking to answer back, but I don't think they've got enough. I think Pakistan might have actually found the winning round here in the very final moments. Three players remaining. Perfecto would have to do something unthinkable with the Desert Eagle. Jim Fapp waiting towards a main. Ladies and gentlemen, it's been an excellent first half, and it will be Teams Pakistan answering back here, tying things up. We're just turning up the heat here in the arena. It's like a nice Indian vindaloo, Anders, as we get ready for the halftime break. We'll see you after this. Hey, guys. Flames and Messi here from Team Vitality. This is Team Heroic. Uh, this is Siphon and this is Selesa, and we're uh, doing Guess the Rank. Oh, what? Oh, it's his teammates. Okay. <laughs> this is not, this is low rank special. <laughs> Look at his teammate. Yeah, yeah, his teammate. Uh, he, he's just walking into every single angle and no, no good player would ever do that. No, but he has yeah, solid aim. But, but he's, he, he's, he's, he's keeping uh, up yeah, the bomb. Flash, yeah, the flash is... Uh, plant the bomb, we need to plant. 10 seconds, okay. 13... Uh, I think it's more 15 or something. If I saw just the last one, I would think he's a poor player. Because he's only like a... Yeah, but then you go back to his teammate who's running out four blinds. Yeah, his, team, his teammate made me think it's like 5k. 12k? Oh my god. Yeah, I said 12 in the beginning. And he said 13. What's his name? Fish Puncher, boy, if we knew this. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Fish Puncher. 12k instead. I don't want to bully too much, but Fish Puncher is not a name for 12k. So this guy has very good pre-aim. Yeah. And he's like, he's not walking into every angle, he's peeking them. Okay, but he has cool goals placement. You see how he moves? Yep. It's Santares. <laughs> <laughs> Insta one tap. Okay. Whoa. Okay. Oh, it's like Zaiwu. Probably like 22 maybe. Yeah, let's let's say 22. But look, because yeah, this is good, two shots, and then the third guy is just a mess. Why is he running like a f Yeah, but look at his last guy as well. Look at, look at the reactions as well. Look yeah, it. he doesn't react he doesn't to react. Enemy. Look. Yeah. The enemy just stands in the middle of the floor as well. I'm going with you, so I'm, I'm gonna come 20, and if it's 14, I'm a genius, but I believe in 20. This guy's 14 times. Oh, what? Okay, well, <laughs> then he shouldn't be there. Yes. Yeah. Oh, genius, man. Okay, yes, M9. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, cool. Okay, that's like 6k. <laughs> I don't know, it can, I don't know. His name is... Yes. PSP1G. I don't know, like, this is just movement. I think, yeah, he didn't really show anything that really, like, shows you that he's a good player. Has to be pretty low. You think so? 17, I think. Yeah. I think 17 is a... Just freestyle as yeah. <laughs> they come to the room. Yeah, They're I, just here for fun. I would, I would give him 15. Yeah. It's random, I guess. And, like, in this clip, because it's just movement. Okay. Yeah. Not bad. Nice angle his teammate takes. <laughs> <laughs> Like he's just jumping in apps for no reason. Why? Oh, it's not okay. too bad, I think. No, no? This is hard. Like his movement is not so accurate in the sense that he, how he picks, but it's he's, he has good aim. Again, his movement is all over the place. 17k. Let's just say 15. Yeah, 15. Oh, well, that's close.
Let's let's bait him. Oh the hell. I flash mid, go mid, go mid. Okay, I flash mid. Go, 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 go. What the fuck is happening? I think I love it, Maravicho. I think they are going to watch middle. Yeah, 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 middle, middle, middle. Oh my mid. god. Mid. Nice. I'm oh, letting the smoke. I'm dead. I dead myself. <laughs> what the fuck? Bro, bro, plant the bomb you've been. Plant the bomb you've been. Oh my god, you just yeah, want to go, 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 No! Oh, <laughs> oh my god, we have it! I'm dead, I'm dead. I'm dead. Last uh, cave, I think. Cave, I think. Yes! No! 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 There they come! Let's fucking go! Nice! India known to have some of the best spin bowlers in the world, Anders, but it wasn't quite enough in the nade only round. Team Pakistan managed to pick that one up. Nice insight to the team speak there as we get ready. Ladies and gentlemen, the final half. Team India versus Pakistan. Let's make some noise. Get the arena alive as we get ready for an opening pick. It is going to be Team India finding that first frag. Yes, yeah, Sun Pius out opening Perfecto finally. Perfecto's been getting the better of him so far. And they're off to a good start here. A little bit of a trade coming in, though. It's Ghost taking down his Huchi and Bullet will drop Rossi. So the trades continue, but it's seen Pakistan coming out on top, at least for the minute. A double push coming out of the park side, a knife out, but he gets shut down, Henry. Ghost will take him out. Team India not wanting to get rid of this round just yet. It's Jim Fat and Bullet left. Two versus three. Trying to see if he can walk into the smoke with an AWP in his hand. That surely is instant death if you come out the other side. Well, here we have it. A tense moment here. All the way back in T-spawn. Team Pakistan on the back foot here. Bullets. Oh, that was a flash. chance he can save this one, but he is taken down. It's a hell of a flash for default here. Jim Fat with the AWP, not known to be an AWP, but it will be Team India picking up the first round of the second half. Seven to six, neck and neck. Oh my God, it was a straight up nose go. <laughs> what? <laughs> I missed that. How's That's that? so ridiculous. Okay. Okay. We're learning something new every day, I guess. Yeah, I don't see many of those. Why Why even bother scoping at this point, you know? <laughs> All right. <laughs> calling for a friend, calling for some help, maybe. Team India has pulled ahead once again. Seven to six. It's a one round lead, but they're on the CT side now. Yeah. Team Pakistan looking to. Shove a bit of that biryani heat down their throats with the A main push. They've managed to trade out Rossi. We'll see the grenades deployed here. Perfecto to defend. Can't quite land the shot here. Four versus four. It's Ghost with the AWP as well. A double orb set up. You don't see many of those on Anubis Sanders. They're blocked off by the utility, taking damage on Ru. Pakistan needs to try and get through all of this. Utility has been deployed and some players will find one, but they've taken so much damage. Double kill from Tessez. It looks like they're done for here. As the CTs are just holding on, it's way too much. Esmu J will have no chance whatsoever and Team India will take yet another round 2-0 in the second half as they get closer and closer to victory here. This historic rivalry coming to a head. And you can see his test says how much damage he found through the smoke at that point. It already taken so much on Rue by virtue of the grenades as well. But it's he a clean and clinical finish. He didn't see a single person that he was shooting at. All of them were just through the smoke. I think the, the second one was just the last bullet coming through the smoke and he picked it up anyway. Well, you know what this means, Henry. Hyper speed has been activated. I hope you are ready for this one because it's going to be crazy. Oh, yes, indeed, ladies and gentlemen, it's the hyper speed round. It's difficult to keep this one up, but we're going to see lots of kills coming over Pakistan. This is more like it. The bomb replanted straight away. We are going to see if it's going to be possible to retake the bomb side. It's absolute pandemonium out there right now. Goes with the P90. Oh, he's making it work. He got the defuse in. It's already over. It looks like it was going to be a perfect round for Pakistan, but they can't hold on. The fastest round in Counter-Strike history, perhaps. That <laughs> goes by so quickly. The P90, it's a favorite for this kind of round. My god, that was lightning quick. You'd like to see it. And again, the scoreline slipping away from Team Pakistan ever so slightly here. I don't even know what happened towards the end. It was too quick. Nine to six, Team India taking a sizable lead and Ghost will take down his here to start the round with four versus five here. Sun Pius, could he be the difference maker? Oh, he's caught Rossi! Good timing! 
And Jim Fat was flashed as well, but he will still get the return. Three versus three. They need this one, Team Pakistan, there. Oh, yeah, they're starting to get that deli belly right now. It's not feeling good. They can feel everything starting to slip out of their body to this point, <laughs> as it will be Jim Fat answering back. Pakistan, they do need this one. Perfecto, Tessez. And it's not going to be quite enough. I think finally Pakistan have broken through in the second half. Tessez with a mountain to climb here. Jim Fat should be able to take him down. There it is. Pakistan will find their first. It's all that a bombsite once again, this time finding success. Oh, they needed that. It's about time we heard something from the Pakistani side here towards the second half. We'll see if they can keep this up. I did like the start from Rossi. He looked like he had good timing. Looked like he had the aim to maybe win another fight there against Jim Fat, who just ends up closing out the round. Still, 9-7 to seven the scoreline. Seeing the AWP and Ghost once again, but otherwise, no sculpture in play for this one. And Smooch is actually top fragging with 16 kills right now. I guess Perfecto on the other side with 20, but... Um, yeah. What an experience for these guys. It looks like it might be the Team Pakistan next time that's going to be smoked off, Henry. The vote is rigged. No matter what you vote, it's going to happen. Yeah, it's a good point. It has to come through. And we'll now see round number 17 underway. Pakistan. Mid control. Some pious. Tip of the spear. Look at that first kill. Consent players on the other side. The smoke is blown wide open. And he'll take down Tessez. It's Rossi. Bit of a Bollywood star of Counter-Strike, it seems, Anders. He's actually managing to put up some decent numbers here. Gets some of the double digits. As we will see a four versus three ensue. Until he starts catching Bullet, I'm not calling it Bollywood yet. But yeah, you're right, Henry. There's actually <laughs> something. <laughs> default uh, good shot on Sun Pius. One versus one against Executor on the other side. It's default to, to come out on top. In the other ten, things are looking real good for them at the moment. Oh, yes, indeed. Couple more rounds, we'll find the map point. Bear in mind, this is a best of one. We know the smoke bomb's coming once again. And it is going to be happening right here, right now, ladies and gentlemen. The best part of the show. And now it'll be down to Team Pakistan to deal with this one. They're already trailing behind Anders. Yeah, now they're... This is the last thing they need at this stage. They're playing with this. I swear they've got more smoke as well on the side, you know? Let's see if they can play through it anyway. Again, just have to hold your breath for about two minutes. You'll be done with a little bit of practice. Try and see if you can make it through without getting too distracted. You know, it gets in your eyes that smoke. Like, you're going to have to blink a lot more. It's just not a comfortable sensation at all. Jim Fat locked in, clearing all the angles. Playing like it was any other game at the moment. They are setting up for an attack towards the A bomb site. Looks like they're going to get flashed out, but they're pushing in front. Oh, this is going to be a... Looks like it should be an opening. Rossi, I can't believe that he's still alive back there. Finally, he will get finished off, but still, Tessis is on the site. And he's good for at least the one. They keep it going. They're over on the bomb site. There might be a bomb part to follow it here. Perfecto shows up, and before the bomb can even go down, they pick up another round. They get it to 11, Henry. It's really started. The Team India, they're pulling ahead in a massive way. If Team Pakistan want to make it back right now, they have to start winning rounds. They really do. And uh, I, I guess you, you have to put it down to the smoke screen on that one, Anders. Like, what are they supposed to do? You can't really see your monitor. You're struggling for air in there. And uh, yeah, you can see how difficult that will make things. Jimmy's not happy about it. And uh, it looks like Team India one step closer to victory at this point. It's smoke all around. You can see it's affecting everyone in those booths. <laughs> As we go to a bullet bonanza. Now, what could that possibly mean, Anders? It means you can keep shooting forever and ever and ever, Henry. You never have to never reload. Run out. So which gun have you always wanted to just hold down and just keep it going? Well, it looks like some has picked up the AWP. I don't know why. There we go. <laughs> Look at the rate of fire as well. Yeah, it's increases so the so fire rate of the weapons. And I guess you get all the bullets as well. So we'll see whether it affects the AK-47. Will it even be worse? Will it be difficult to handle the recoil here? Time will tell. Oh, there's a huge flank for the middle already. Ghost 
really role-playing his name right now. He's walked up all the way behind it, absolutely not ready for it. Some pies is dead. This is insane. Taking down in Zuchi on the other side. Three versus five. Yeah, and you can hear there's AK-47. So much stopping power now. The high rate of fire. Sounds like a Mac 10 out there. As uh, India getting closer and closer oh now to map God. points, finding glory against Pakistan. It's just like the Cricket World Cup all over again. Pakistan need to fight back at this one. Is there any way Jimmy can save them? It doesn't look like it. Rossi looking for a huge spray. And it will be map point for Team India. Oh my God. They actually went and found them outside. They're up to 12. It looked like it was a great start. Ghost coming up with these two shots here and Team Pakistan just unable to return into the round here. Look at the spray there. He even finished it off. <laughs> Glad they're enjoying themselves. Ghost, I think, ending up with a triple in that one. They just need one more round. They do indeed. Best Pakistan can do now is tie the game and they can walk away. Well, that's the whole hands. thing. But we're going into slow motion territory, and there's those absolute pandemonium. When we went hyperspeed, but now it's going to be a much more subdued affair. How do you feel about this? Well, you know how I feel about this. This is the Counter-Strike ASMR, Henry. This is where it just gets nice and chill. To be fair, this is how my voice sounds most of the time. This is, this is, this is my default voice. I don't think people would even know the difference, but We'll see if this is going to assist Pakistan. We're going uh, bullet time here, matrix mode. And we'll see if there's anything left to be said. One more round would do it for India. Bear in mind, this is all about the draft. Check it out. We will have more information on the Blast TV website. And uh, it's kicking off in January. It's a chance to give South Asian Counter-Strike representation to play with Counter-Strike legends with the land happening in January in Malaysia, but it looks like India oh, might have done enough here, so Bayer's answering back. It's like a frag movie out there. It really is. It's dangerous. Any jump, any grenades thrown, you don't want to be doing that because it takes such a long time to get the gun back out. Oh, bullets! Some beautiful headshots keeping the dream alive for Pakistan right now. Some Bayer's gets a shot. They're actually turning this around. It's just Perfecto. One versus two. Perfecto. What have you got for us? They're coming in his direction. First kill will almost certainly be his, but some is trying to bait out the shots. He nails it, and Perfecto needs one more kill. Are we all said and done, ladies and gentlemen? This could be it, but Bullet, he says no! Absolutely terrifying, Henry. But you know what? It's worked out. Bullet, he was the man to save the team. They get to play on. They need another four rounds behind this one, but my God, he was accurate in this round. Beautiful. Just when he thought it was all over, Red Rover, we do see Pakistan with a fighting chance here now. It will take four rounds in a row just to tie the game up. We've gone for a triple AWP set up for Team India. Led by Perfecto. He's got 23 kills right now. And it will be default. Uh, he's had a... Interesting second half as well. Rossi's been fantastic. Uh, Star for the future of India. They're actually doing great work at the moment. They yeah. really are. And, and that might be it. Yeah, getting Some rid of Jim What a massive player to take down. A shot onto Executor as well. He is dead. Perfecto will find him. Rossi out hunting. It's all on San Pires. I don't think the Spaniard could do this. One versus five to try and salvage the show match for Team Pakistan. It's a lot of weight on his shoulders at the moment. Come on, Tampires, you can do this. You've won better clutches than this before, but they're surrounding him, and first kill will be his. Oh, no! It's the knife in between the shoulder blades of Tampires, and it will be Team India to close things out. The favorites coming into it, and they managed to have a dominant victory there. A very, very good game. And actually, the individuals of India shining bright as well. It wasn't just about Perfecto and Tessas. That was a great team effort. Yeah, they had a lot of individuals showing, I think, on the Pakistani side as well. Uh, yeah, a starting rivalry in Counter-Strike. As you said, it exists in other sports, but uh, we want to get it in here as well for the region. And again, to uh, yeah, to see what kind of talent is there. Hopefully, we can find that. Oh, absolutely true, Anders. An amazing show match. Thank you so much to our participants. Our Team India versus Pakistan. We're going to throw it down to Freya to build the hype for the grand final. We'll see you there.
Thank you very much, gentlemen. Yes, congratulations to Team India and plenty more Counter-Strike coming your way. As of course, we've got our coveted grand final, the rematch of what went down in Copenhagen with FaZe versus Vitality. But first, we've got some uh, very exciting news about the Blast roster going forward into 2024, but you're going to have to wait until after this break. Last Premier World Finals, where alongside some of the top teams in the world competing on stage, we also have the Blast Zone, where gaming fans can unite over a variety of different games. We've got mobile gaming, VR, racing simulators, arcade games, and of course, console gaming. It's about uniting the gaming community here in Abu Dhabi. And today, I've got some very special guests ready to join. We've got a sports star and an esports legend. So, guys, if you'd uh, like to come on. Thank you. Hello, Freya. Hello, guys. Hello. How are you doing today? Good. 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 Fine. Do you guys want to introduce yourselves? Yeah, what's up? I'm Adala. Nice to meet you. So I I play sports. I, I do go outside and touch grass, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, I'm 19. What else can I say, I guess? I touch grass. That's the most important the thing. The most important thing. Uh, we, yep. we don't. We stay inside. Occasionally we do, right? <laughs> yes, but most of the time you're doing. Yeah, I'm Tupri. I'm a long-time Counter-Strike player. Um, Five-time major champion. Oh, nice. Yeah. Uh, obviously, we're coming here and talking a lot about gaming. So, mm -hmm. how were you first exposed to gaming? What makes you love it so much? Uh, I, I live in a gaming family, literally. My aunts, my uncles, uh, everyone plays games or played at some point. Okay, so can I get your tier list? So, Counter-Strike is obviously on top. No. No? No offense. No offense. No. <laughs> okay, <Not> okay. <laughs> so, sell us to why. What's at the top? Obviously, Zelda Breath of the Wild. Ooh, okay. I have never played, but I've heard really good things. It's great. It's great. Yeah. You have to. You're missing out on an entire another world. Are you much of a single player game kind of man? I mean, outside of Counter Strike. Yeah, I'm sure. yeah, I actually am. For me, it's like reading a book. Like the whole idea about, you know, developing a story, getting into the characters and everything. So yeah, I, I really enjoy playing uh, single player games. Another thing common between both of you, obviously you both competed in the UAE for the UAE. So what was your experience like last year? Yeah, I've been here quite a lot. And my first experience was in, in Dubai. And overall, it was like, it was a really great experience. You know, it was the first time we, we came here to compete and we were kind of surprised like with the whole support that we got from down here. Like there was so many that was interested in gaming. Um, so it was a really good experience. The whole idea about coming here has been really great. So we've got the Blast Zone here as well, so obviously alongside CS, a um, whole eclectic mix. Basically, any type of game you want to play, you can play it here. Any uh, games that you guys want to kind of dip your toes into whilst you're here? Any other kind of genres, maybe some arcade games? I prefer VR. Same. Yeah, same. There is this game I just downloaded actually on my laptop. It's basically slow-mo when you're like a red guy, slow-mo. I know what you're talking about, yeah. I bought all three. <laughs> it's a good like decompression yes. tool, yes. I find. Uh, uh, gaming for me, honestly, it's my therapy. I don't even go to therapy. Gaming mm. is my therapy. Yeah. Well, there you have it. That's exactly why we love games. From whatever country you're from and whatever field you compete in, it truly unites us. the final tier one event of the year. We return to Abu Dhabi, this time to crown the king in CS2. A banger of a series here. Ends take on Na'Vi in the lower bracket. Nice boys. Na'Vi will be posting eight rounds in a row, kicking Ents out of the tournament. This game is set up to be another banger. Cloud9 taking on Vitality. No! Vitality to pick it up and make it straight to the semi-finals. Mao's back to winning ways. Farewell here to Heroic. Abu Dhabi is where they end. It is time for our winners, Matt. It's FaZe Clan against them is a G2. FaZe Clan going the distance into OT to take themselves to semi-finals. What a game. What a performance. Mao's have done it. This team are looking deadly across the board. One more opportunity to make it towards the playoffs. Semi-finals on the line. The yellow and black strike gold in Abu Dhabi. Take a bow. Semi-final Saturday has arrived here in Abu Dhabi and before remaining to potentially lift the final trophy of the year. Broki, he gets the shot. Oh, they get it they might have run out of time, Henry! No! Oh, they didn't get the bomb on phase instead to the grand final in Abu Dhabi. on the 
approach, and the flash is great, but it's only one kill out from Ema, and the pressure on CT is too much. Bit pinned in, and vitality to the grand finals. One year in the making, and today we will be crowning the champion of the Blast Premier World Final. So many monumental moments going down here in the Etihad Arena over the course of the last five days. And of course, I've got Matthew and Pim to be breaking down every second of the action. Because by Lord Matthew, we have been treated to some absolute bangers this weekend. I agree with you. I think the Counter-Strike has been stellar. And I also don't think we could have wished for a better Grand Final. We're talking about Vitality, obviously touted as the best team of the year, or at least a very good candidate, and FaZe, who took the storm, or the world rather by storm with CS2 dominating and they clash to close 2023. There's been a, a decent amount of upsets throughout the tournament, but not enough upsets to make sure that we didn't get the final that we wanted. As you said, Vitality taking on face in that grand final. Honestly speaking, coming into the tournament, I think that's what most Counter-Strike fans were hoping for to end the year in a cool fashion. Yeah, I feel like the initial playoffs matches, the quarterfinals that we saw was where the crazy stuff yeah. went down. G2 and Cloud9 being eliminated, obviously set up Na'Vi and Maus just yesterday. They were the two teams that did get eliminated in the semi-finals. So let's start off by talking a little bit about Na'Vi because I think we weren't totally sure where to be placing them coming into this event because obviously with Simple's departure, massive hole that they're going to be needing to fill. What's your take on how they kind of ended the year here? Well, I think this is probably the first event barring EPL, obviously that was on CSGO, but ever since it's the first event where I feel like they punched upwards. I think they, they got Ws that we might have not expected. The G2 one is a very good example. It was a strong showcase of resilience as well, a complicated game where Navi actually fight back. We got a couple of positive signs. We saw Ima, or rather what used to be Ima in Gamer Legion. We had a couple of glimpses here and there, but I think the main takeaways we had from the desk as well is that the world is potential. We're not looking sure. at an Avi team that today is going to lift the trophy, but we're having ideas, sort of pathways that we can follow to get most or more out of these players. Yeah, it's it's sort of like a new era for Navi, right? Because we've been used to them being a, a team that always would contest for the trophies. When Simple was in the lineup, when Electronic was in the lineup back in the days, Navi would be a team that we would always go into a tournament and thinking they can win if they're, you know, getting things right. That's not really the case with this new iteration of Navi. They went the international round, they went in going with Alexa B, and we have to manage the expectations in a little bit. However, I do want to say that they're trending upwards. They're getting slowly, surely better, game by right. game, tournament by tournament. And as you said, the potential is definitely there. It's just whether or not Blake can relieve it and make it happen before the Copenhagen major. There's definitely a load on the shoulders of the experienced models and figures in that team. And that I'm talking about Blade and I'm talking about Alexa B, of mm. course. Because beyond that, you have to realize, arguably, your second most experienced player is Bit. He used to be a rookie in 2021. Yeah. That's we crazy. used to talk about his first LAN events and how he won everything in that Navi jersey and how he took everybody by surprise. And he's your second most experienced players. JL, Ime, wonderful. These are not even, I'm not even going to do the, the, the Sprout joke, but no. these are Sprouts. Like this is just the very beginning of what could be a long career. It's far from being finished product. I, and I think we have to be reasonable as well. We knew that when Navi decided to go international mm -hmm. and when we were presented with that roster, even with Simple, we knew it was going to take time. We knew success wasn't guaranteed. That's exactly what Blade was echoing in the exit interview games, James Banks, which there was so much to be dissecting there. Um, he was talking about he knew that they weren't going to be lifting trophies this year. It's such a long time project for him, right? Yeah, it is. You know, it, it is a long time project. It's uh, a new world for Blade. It's a new world for Bit. It's a new world for the Navi organization as well. And sometimes you got to bite the apple and, and be like, yeah, it may be not going to taste good now, but in six months time, 12 months time, as Blade was talking about, that's when we're going to see the, the team come to fruition. Again, as long as they keep trending upwards, as long as we're not going into tournament thinking what on earth is going on or Navi starting to perform worse off time by time and game by game, I, I'm okay with it, you know. I think the potential is definitely there, but I also say that I don't anticipate and I don't expect Navi to be a team that's going to make any grand finals next year. I don't see that happening Ooh. with the current roster they have. Okay, that's a take. You want them to make a roster change? Uh, not necessarily now, but I think down the line they'll figure it out. You know, we're going to see what piece is going to stick. We're going to see if Emma can come back to that level consistently or not. We're going to see whether or not Bit can find full comfort within that lineup. We're going to see whether or not Alexi B and JL can continue the upwards trajectory. I do think, however, if Navi want to be a team that contests for trophies, a rush to change down the line maybe will be needed. I, I think the consistency of Ime is something that we need to see, you know, soon, right? Because obviously he looked incredible back at the mm -hmm. Paris Major, really hyped everybody up. I feel like it's been slowly but surely getting better. He wasn't, you know, falling off the face of the earth in that series versus Vitality yesterday. No, you're right. But I do have a problem with how we're looking at Ime and how we're framing it as he has to come back to what he is. We don't know what he is. 
we, we witnessed a very good final run, major run rather, with Gamer Legion. There is nothing to take away. You, you put it aptly, he was an MVP candidate mm. in Paris. I'm never going to touch that. It was an incredible performance yeah. amidst a very specific context. One tier one competition with a roster with which he was feeling comfortable and he got the most out of him. This, this was one event. We don't know who Ime is. He still has to prove a whole lot. He has to prove that he can do it in a different context, with different teammates, a different philosophy, more pressure, different jersey. Why do we say come back to? This was, this was something, this was just a, a blimp that happened in Paris. He has to prove that that can actually become something that he will. I, I do believe sometimes we went crazy in terms of expectation for him. Yeah, definitely. Um, but I think with what we saw in Paris, right, it gave us hope. It led us to believe that if he could replicate that form, then he would be something brilliant. And obviously coming into this new Na'Vi project, um, it's been a bit complicated, right, with the stability of the roster. And I want to give some props to Alexi B for just how he's handled that as a leader. He hasn't let, you know, things implode in the camp, which we have seen from uh, some other rosters. Yeah, I think Alexi B is doing a, a good job. I think the, the work between Alexi B and Blade seems to be working. There seems to be a healthy conversation going on between the two. And I think over time, they'll be able to, to form a play style that's going to be interesting. Just want to note on the comment on, on Ima, I agree with you, he set the bar extremely high at the Major, but the problem for me with Emma coming into Navi was that he was dropping below the level we saw for the vast majority in Game of Legion. That's my issue. I don't expect him to come back to be the MVP candidate for every single tournament. I just want him to be a guy that every single tournament is you know, popping up with a 1.10, 1.15 rating. And that hasn't been the case apart from this one-off event right here that he's had in Na'Vi. So I do think that, again, and that's why I'm saying, I think Na'Vi is an interesting team. It's a great prospect. There's a great potential win the camp, but a roster change may be needed with a star player coming in if they want to contest for the trophies. Those are some really emotive shots that we just saw. Obviously, heartbreaking for them to lose out in that fashion. Just to round off that conversation, obviously going up against Vitality, we were questioning them picking Anubis again. Obviously, the context of that was it was a rematch from the group stage. Um, Vitality are just one of the best teams in the world on this map, so it's unfortunate that that kind of map pool crossover happened You're right. yesterday. Yeah, you mentioned map pool crossover and I think you were absolutely on the money. And this is where it gets complicated for a team like Na'Vi, who isn't anywhere near a six strong map situation or five strong map situation. They're still very limited and kind of clustered in what maps they can play. Blade touched on the on interviews, the amount of time they have to spend on a map to kind of catch up with the very, very top level. Look, they're competitors, they're professionals. When Once you enter that booth, it doesn't matter what are the expectations, you want to win, you give it all out. And when you lose, disappointment hits you. But I don't think there is anything to be shy or disappointed about in no. that Vitality game. It, it, it's okay to lose to Vitality right now if you're Navi. This is not a result that should make you hit your head against the wall. I, I don't see it this way. They weren't supposed to be in the semi-final, right? It was supposed to be G2 coming into that semi-final. And I do think that, as you said, they shouldn't be shy, they shouldn't be ashamed. No, they did a decent job. It was okay for Navi. And again, we're talking about them trending upwards. So, you know, fair play to Navi for doing a good job. And same story for Maus on the other side of the equation. I yeah. love that we got to see that grudge match going down because obviously Frozen departing, joining the phase camp. But fair play to Maus for really holding their money and making phase sweat in moments that I didn't think they would. No, I think there was there was many ways yesterday that Mouse could have won a map at the very least. There's also a world where they could have won 2-0, to be completely honest. We brought up the point yesterday, Matthew, that FaZe were winning a lot of the pistol rounds, they were converting on a lot of the pistol rounds, and one can only imagine what would have happened if FaZe weren't able to do that. Let alone the fact that Mouse came into this tournament with a stand-in. They came in with Brolin, limited practice. We don't even know if he's going to stick around with Mouse, that they're going to scout somewhere else. So the core and the foundation, the blueprint that Cyclone has build up with this young, young Maus Ryan once again proved itself at the biggest stage. I absolutely agree. This was a great result for Maus as a whole. I will say my only disappointment, my only regret is that I hope they would not get into their own heads once they were about to win. Because we witnessed sure. it. I truly believe in both maps, you're finding yourself in very advantageous, advantageous situations and you have sort of that psychological breakdown when you overcompensate yeah. and you're looking for the perfect play to win against FaZe. And I was hoping with this standing situation, it was maybe a moment to be a bit more relaxed, but then again, I'm standing at the desk, they're at the booth actually playing the game, but you could feel that tension. So many of these crazy rounds happened at the end of Overpass where I think it, it got to them a little. Well, you mentioned Psycho's name and he gave us some really insightful words courtesy of James Banks in his exit interview, so let's recap a couple of them. Um, but it's still a good showing with a standing coming into this. So what's the plan going into next year for you guys? Because it seems like even if you can slot in a player like Brolan, you have a good blueprint here with your core, right? So realistically, find someone as quick as possible and get back to training? Definitely it's key that we uh, we start out the fifth um, position and that we can move forward. Nothing is settled yet in this regard. Uh, we're, okay. st we're still looking. I think Luden made a, a good impression here, or Bolland. Um, if it's not going to be our team, maybe somewhere else. 
but yeah, that's that's next for us. And as you said, and thank you as well, that uh, even with a stand-in, different tournaments, this one at Sydney also, we make things happen. And I'm proud to, to show that we can play even without Frozen on the team. And clearly we will f need to figure out who, who should step up when he's not there, because we are going to miss some of that. Also that experience presence. Um, but we have a very strong foundation and we have a team for the future. We have only young players, young coaches as well. So we're going to come back stronger. Yeah, of course, some very eloquent words coming out of Cycron and a result that they should not be ashamed of, but still it is a heartbreaking moment as we see from these emotive pictures of Shue. Oh, definitely. That game is going to be nightmare fuel if you go down the road of the what if, what if I had done this, what if we had made this decision about a millimeters, milliseconds. But I think the key word from Synchron is what is future. For my money, in this mouse jersey currently, you have three players who are going to remain at the very top of Counter-Strike for as long as they want to. Shuhi, Xertion, Yimpat, as far as I'm concerned, are already extremely strong in their prospective roles. And I, of course, you're banking on the future. You can imagine how much path, how much evolution there possibly is with players like that. So, no, I, 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 I understand these images, and these are very strong footage we're getting right there. Yeah. But that's really in the moment. The, the context of that, of course, is they, they got so close on all pass. The Kerrigan 1v3 clutch, oh. they never should have lost. The Bolin just about not planting the bomb, right? We all remember oh. it. We weren't even sure whether or not he got the bomb plan in there or not. So for Shue to be upset, for Shue to be emotional, completely understandable. However, I 100% agree with you, Matthew. The future is there for mouse sports. Whether that's with Brolin or not, Cyclone weren't sure. We're not sure. I don't think Brolin knows either. But I want to say, and I want to come up with this point, if you're any star player out there, if you're the nerds of the world right now finding yourself in ends and you're looking at mouse thinking i can come into that team and i can be the star player of that team i can replace frozen i can get a lot of cool roles and i can maybe help them elevate them to a point where they've never been before that's attractive now the one mm. problem mouse have they probably don't have the most money in the scene right they can't offer the yeah. biggest salary and maybe they can't offer the biggest guarantee in terms of length of contract so I see that as an issue, but in terms of the attractiveness of the team and how good they can be, it's the perfect roster to Matthew, can we do some method acting? Can we put your mouse GM hat on, pretend that you're in charge wow. of this roster? How much money Keep does he have? Um, let's just say unlimited funds. Ooh, money, money's okay. no object, okay. it's just a number, right? Um, what would you be doing right now? I mean, I think that Nurse is obviously uh, someone that you, mm. you would be technically targeting. I also think that the list of people that could position for position replace Frozen immediately is relatively small. It's, it's not that big of a list, right? So it's something that you would have to put a little bit of time in as well. Frozen was getting some roles in order to shine, and I think he made great on that whenever he was presented the opportunity. But yeah, I, I, I'm not going to pay that game. You know what? Let's just bring Donk <laughs> in it. Hey, bring Donk, just get it over with. Get simple as well while yeah, we're at it. Yeah, all actually, all the free agents, well, Donk isn't even a free agent. But yeah, you know what we mean. Um, let's round out our conversation with our CS Money Play of the Day. You guys have been voting on the Blast Premier Instagram because we had some uh, very, very exciting plays going down yesterday. So uh, Jacob, who was awarded the bronze medal yesterday? Well, we're starting off with Kerrigan ruining the dreams oh, of no. Mouse. We just spoke about it, a 1v3 that, unfortunately for Mouse, they misplayed a lot. And fortunately for Kerrigan, you know, it was a case of not wanting to win the round for either of the two players. What you're seeing right here is a real round. It's not a joke. It's not something we found out with. That's Torsi not wanting to win, unfortunately. I don't ever want to see that clutch ever again in my life. Second coming up is Messi, of course, from Vitality. And the 1v3 that sent them to the grand final as far as I'm concerned. Great utility usage, small pop flash, isolating the 1v1. And then here, with only 25 HP, playing the headshot angle. Perfection from Messi. Up until this point, Brolin was struggling a lot in the semi-final yesterday, but this play right here gave him confidence. He ended up being the highest fracker for Mouse in the game against Faceplant. And look at the spray trends what you're about to see right here, right now. It's absolutely dirty, Ooh. absolutely fantastic from Brolin. And he did get to show us that he's still a great counter. -trend. Yeah, such a disgusting play coming out of Brolin. Unfortunately, it does mark the end of the line for Mouse in the semi-finals yesterday, but that does mean we have some very, very exciting CS coming your way. Let's check in with the schedule for today. Of of course, we have to round out the year with an absolute banger of a grand final. We're talking about a rematch of Copenhagen where Vitality actually managed to make it quite quick, but I don't think it's going to be as speedy this time around. We're going to head things to a quick break when we're back, edging ever closer to that grand final. Magnum Almond is expertly crafted. Velvety ice cream, crunchy almonds, and premium Magnum chocolate. A timeless classic. Magnum, for pleasure seekers.
Are you ready to kick things up a notch and push play on some epic gaming action? Step into the ring with Arena Esports, powered by Etisalat by EM. Play, watch, engage, compete in some of the top leagues and tournaments with an FPS, Battle Royale, sports, MOBA, fighting games, and so much more. Watch live stream games from the pros to learn and up your skill level or connect with some of the region's top players in our online gaming community while sharing your achievements and connecting with fellow players. The time is now. Jump online to register today and let the games begin. Brain adapt? Really? Look at me. I'm an NPC, a mob already at a disadvantage. And now you're creating headsets with some new technologies that helps humans listen better? Hands off that button. button. I want to speak to your manager. The Blast Premiere 2024 schedule is split into spring and fall seasons and culminates with the World Final. Here's how it works. 12 Blast Premiere teams will begin their quest for victory in groups. Teams are seated, creating three groups of four. These teams play out a double elimination, best of three group stage. The three group winners go straight to the season final. The remaining nine teams will fight it out for three season final spots in the cross group gauntlet. The six teams that fail to qualify from the gauntlet will be cast into the showdown. There, they must fight to survive in a merciless single elimination format. They will compete against three invited teams and seven teams from global qualifiers. This year, each showdown is no longer split into regions, but is a single tournament played in Europe. Two teams from the showdown will secure their place in the season final to join the six teams from the groups. At each season final, the eight teams will face off in a GSL format, leading into a single elimination playoff bracket with quarters, semifinals, and grand final. The champions of the season finals will be joined by teams who qualify based on their performance in tournaments throughout the year, including the winners of the Copenhagen Major, winners of IEM, Katowice, and Cologne, and top-ranking teams on the leaderboard. These eight champion teams will come together for one last clash as they battle it out for a prize pool of $1 million. Welcome to the Blast Spring Final. I'm excited. The stage is set. I'm just gonna let that go. Oh! No! What is that? It all comes down to the next three maps of Counter Strike. Ooh. All right. Okay. And he can't believe it. Oh my god.
Yes, yeah, so much to be excited about moving on into 2024. We're talking London. We're talking a return to Copenhagen. We're also talking about a little bit of a format change, Jacob, because uh, no longer the split between EU and NA. No, I guess there's not that many NA teams left, so maybe it doesn't make that much sense anymore. And also, we just even out the playing field. If you want to get to the fall final, spring final, you got to be the best team. Are you going to miss these uh, 3 a.m. Sh NA showdown games? Because we can make it happen if you're going to miss them. We can talk to people, you know. Nope. No? You're good? All right, I'm Jacob good. is good. He's got the approval. Oh, we've also got one more very exciting change. Oh, we if do? you've been eagle-eyed over on the Blast Premier Twitter, you'll have already seen, but there has been a substitution in a partner team. E.G. out, Cloud9 in. If I've ever seen a straight up upgrade, that would be that would be <laughs> that one. I'm not gonna lie, you know. E.G. they gave us some fun moments and Cloud9 they give us some quality. I mean, listen, let's not sugarcoat it. It's nope. an excellent change. Everybody's happy about it. Maybe not EG. I'm happy about it. Most people are happy about it. It's great to see Cloud9. Uh, for a while, I think this was one of the disappointments not to have them included in the circuit here at Blast, of course. Coming through the showdown, these open qualifiers, we would maybe sometimes have them in fall finals or spring final, but still, you want to have Cloud9. I think it's a name that's up there, and I am very happy with the change. Credit where credit is due, though, because Cloud9, they were grinding their way through a lot of the showdowns. They were grinding oh, their way were, through a lot were. of the tournaments, so it's, it's not like you know, it's it's good for Cloud9, but also good for everyone going to the showdown because now they don't have to deal with Cloud9 anymore. That is also very true. Uh, we just got to see, you know, the, all the teams are going to be attending the groups. I'm really excited to see Team Liquid because uh, there's been a lot of changes of foot there, right? Jacob? Wow. Yeah, I think that's one of the teams out there that have the highest expectations coming in, considering their situation. It's a complete new team, a complete mixture of three, four different mentalities when it comes to Counter-Strike, yet everyone believes I that know. they're going to be the top one team coming I into know. 24. I'm not so sure about that just yet, but it's going to be very interesting to follow. We're collectively losing our mind with Liquid, I swear to God. Like, we're we literally not learning. Like, we're a human being one-on-one. -on -one. We're not learning from our past mistakes. When Cloud9 got put, to get, put together this CIS Super Team, we were like, oh my God, this is going to be the best team in the world. I can't believe it. And then after a few months, we waited. Oh, wait a minute. I, I hope the roles are fine. And now we've just completely just men in black. Bzzz, and like, Liquid, oh my God. Oh, it's gonna be amazing. We're doing the same mistake again. I'm ready to jump on that damn hype train once again. It's <laughs> a new course. year. I've forgotten everything that's happened in the past. I'm excited to see Astralis as well. I had a bit of a bold pred about how well they'd be doing in 2024. You have to head on over to Blast TV to read that interview. But uh, I think that they're gonna be, you know, the next Danish hope, right? We know every time we go to Copenhagen for an event, the sea of Astralis jerseys. I think this is a really good change. You say them. the next hope, I say the only hope at, at yeah, this true. point, right? No more heroic and, and you know, in all fairness to the rest of the Danish teams out there, they're good, but they're no Astralis. I do think Astralis mean business, though. I do think the signings they've done with Stown coming into the lineup, with Yabi coming into the lineup as well, it's two of the best players you can possibly get in Denmark, if not the best player in Stown. So if that Astralis doesn't work out, no Astralis ever will. It's going to be interesting to see how they react to the public opinion of what happened during that change as well, because Stone and Yabi, they, they were used to being the villain in Heroic. They embraced it fully with Kadian and they kind of won the hearts of the fans through the event and mm -hmm. all. If you're a device, of course, you've been beloved by the, by the Copenhagen and the Danish crowd forever and ever. And now Stabi is going to be like, listen, this is how it works. Stabi. This is how it works, okay? <laughs> Eventually, we'll win them out. They like us again. It's going it's to take a little bit of time, I think, for them to regain that love. And I, I'm going to be following that. That's an interesting That's side too. the thing, you know, winning solves everything. So as long as they win, they'll be fine. Jacob, you got a bold prediction for 2024? I got many. Which one do you want? Uh, the worst. The absolute worst one. I don't think Navi is going to make a semi-final uh, at a top... You said that No, one. I said final. I'm going to race this bar a little bit. I don't think they're going to make a semi-final at a tier one lane next year. With the lineup they have right now. Mathieu, have you got a conversely great take that's definitely going to happen in 2024? Uh, something that's definitely going to yeah. happen? Uh, I would say Vitality will win their second major. Oh, and Messi will it's be MVP, definitely gonna I've happen. heard, actually. Hmm, that's going to be very exciting. But Vitality still in the mix here and the potential chance to lift back to back trophies to be ending out 2023. And a rematch on the cards. They go up against FaZe in our grand final after this break. She said bored, not dumb. I actually know, I know this uh, player. G2 and today we're gonna be playing against the rank. <laughs> He's shooting good. Who is this guy? Better players like do every, everything a bit more smooth. In my opinion, 9k. 9, 10, yeah. He's 15, 15 to 17,000. No, 10, 10,000. <laughs> 12. Oh, you 12. 12? Okay. 
your movement, I mean, you can, you can be better. <laughs> At least he got skins. I actually know, I know this uh, player. He shoots good, uh, the first three, but movement, not that... Crispy. 20k. I don't think if I know this player. <laughs> I'm not sure, bro. Mm, nothing really special. I mean, he killed good, but if you could see what enemies were doing, it's terrible. My opinion, 15k. I'm going 17. Ah, okay. This guy is so good. Uh, he's smurfing. I don't know. I didn't know. Let's go. Oh, good skins. First of all, okay. Whoa. <laughs> I, I just thought I know this. Bro, I saw it somewhere. Is this guy from YouTube? I think he's pretty good at crit, but not that good. Probably at classic CS. Movement is like 30k. But yeah, movement is yeah. full script, man. <laughs> Obviously, he plays the game a lot, but I would say maybe 13k. Maybe they don't take it as serious. 15k. I put 20. Because he, he's cheating. 11, MR. 12 for me. I think. I say nine. I can say nine. nine. Fourteen. Fourteen. Okay. <laughs> I don't want to talk about it. I like how? Bro, it's a pistol round, and he bought a grenade only. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa! Chill. No, he's played it so good. If he's screaming like this, he's not high ranking. Bro, why like did you buy grenade on you pistol round? Yeah, you buy grenade and nothing else. Bro, listen, you have USB and you need to shoot in head. Don't buy grenade. Okay, it's 19 or 18. 14 is intriguing. I will say 14 again. Uh, okay, I, I, I take a gamble. I, and I say this guy is 22k. 15. They're all 14k. Okay, They're all finally the same. I got one point at nice. least. But it's better than the previous was 14k. You're gonna be 20. Good luck, bro. <laughs> Phase versus Vitality. One final trophy to round out 2023 and one more series to decide who will be taking home the gold. The top two teams in the world ready to lock horns once again because these two teams quite familiar with each other. We're talking about Vitality, who somehow managed to be so explosive in the server back in Copenhagen. They took that grand final in just two maps. When we look at FaZe, on the other hand, this has been a story of a team who started off CS2 so damn strong and not content with their roster moving forward. They've made changes coming into this very event and have looked so, so solid. We've of course got Maui Snake joining myself, Matthew and Jacob down here for the grand final. Gentlemen, I am so excited to be diving into this one, not least because it's a rematch, not least because this is how we end out 2023. Yeah, because contextually, these are the two best teams that are in CS2 currently. That said, it, it summarizes the end of 2023 phase versus Vitality. You mentioned, of course, a whole lot of history going between these two rosters, an incredible tenure as well, filled with legends. I wouldn't have any other game to finish 23. If you are a purist, if you just want the best Counter-Strike in the server, there are no two teams other than Vitality and FaZe that you would want to face off. And it is a pleasure that we are going to be introing this matchup. Without a doubt, you got the two best teams in the world. You got some of the most skilled players we've ever seen grace the server when it comes to Counter-Strike. And we got some interesting storylines, of course, in Frozen coming in, playing his first grand final with FaZe as well. There's a lot to dissect here. Look at some of those accolades on the screen mm. behind us. This is from, you know, just coming into this year. These two teams have achieved so damn much begins with FaZe, obviously netting the Intel Grand Slam earlier on this year. Vitality lifting the major trophy. And then it was a story, match you of adapting overcoming when we moved into CS2 and both teams have certainly done that. Oh, you're absolutely right. Shout out to Thunderpeak somehow making their way into that battle. <laughs> that's pretty That's a pretty well played, honestly. But you're absolutely correct. Both teams have been revigorized, energized throughout this year. You're talking about a Vitality who's able to stomach two roster changes, coming in from Majisk and Dupree, of course, to now being with Mezzi and Flamesy and winning with all of these rosters, whereas FaZe, a little bit slow when CSGO was towards the very end, but CS2 comes back in and immediately they start winning and they make that roster change that kind of had started already before that, but they are very, very serious about the trophy. 
I just want to give it up for Vitality one more time, you know. They dare to be proactive. They won the major in Paris, and what did they do? They switched out to Pui. They say, no longer, Brabie, you out of the team, right? We'll bring in another guy. We'll bring in a guy that we believe will be the future of the team. So it's not like these two teams have just been hanging around, you know, and finding the success by doing nothing. They're proactively seeking it. I'll also argument that, you know, FaZe, they come to come to save the year a little bit, you know, with CS2 coming out. Because at the later stages of CSGO, it was getting relatively disappointing. We yeah. were wondering, is this team going to come into CS2? Are they going to fare well? Are they going to explode? Are they even going to stick together? Well, CS2 was the saving grace for FaZe. And once again, we labeled them as one of the best teams in the world. And for Vitality, we're looking at the context of, you know, so many trophies they've managed to claim this year. Four with three different rosters. Like, Maui, that is such an accolade for them to be putting together as a squad, and not least for Apex leading the charge, right? It's a testament to how strong the core of Apex, Sphinx, and Zywo are because those are the three people that have stood in made sure that this team, even with the swaps that have moved around them, stayed incredibly consistent, stayed a contender, and for my money, have punched themselves into that number one position in the world. Now, I'm sounding like a bit of a broken record, but of course, this is a rematch of the Copenhagen Grand Final, and one where Vitality's results surprised us a little bit, Matthew, because they were quite handedly able to dispatch a face clan. Oh, definitely. I mean, listen, the talk was obviously phase allowing Vertigo to go through as a first map. Yeah. Immediate punish coming in. Flamesy flying in one of the best grand finals I've ever seen him, period. And then you move on to Nuke, and it's actually, I'll just put it out there. This grand final deserved three. This grand final deserved I'm three sad. maps. I'm I sad. think for my money, FaZe was the better team on Nuke. If you just look at the depth of the gun rounds, FaZe was better than Vitality, but they managed to win some of these rounds that are part of the legend. Yeah, should we roll one of them from a throwback to that nuke game? Because this is where stuff just got so, so crazy. How did Vitality get away with it? That is the context that we have to keep an eye on. Round 23, phase 11 to 11 on the CT side. One AK, one Kevlar for Vitality and four Glocks. Glocks! And that works out. Anywho, this is a round that Vitality is going to win based on a couple of mistakes as well. Brokey overstaying his welcome here. I cannot, I still cannot believe to this day that this is the round that had the net that trophy. Go no, of course not. You're coming into the round with four Glocks and just a single AK. I do, however, want to say that we don't often criticize Rops because we can't because he's just missed a perfect Counter-Strike. He should never have stuck around on ramp for that right. long. He kind of bailed his team in a sense right there. Brokey did the same mistake. And of course, it's not one man's fault that you're ending up losing, but it was such a pivotal moment in that game and I 100% agree with you that final deserved three maps no doubt I hope we get you know the payback we get the full three this yeah. time around but it's an interesting question when we're talking about the map videos because as you perfectly preface Matthew um the vertigo allow from phase that was kind of crazy are we gonna see that again I mean listen Kerrigan is famous to to drop a little bit of a shenanigans here and there I don't think he's gonna play around with fire this time no way I think vertigo has to be removed and that's it oh, good, 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 good 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 vertigo good. is out but you no know, what would you go for Vitality? I would go for Inferno. What FaZe did last time when they substituted out Vertigo when they let it through is that they didn't want to face the Inferno that Vitality has in store for them. And yes, that is the pick. These are the two two strong maps that Vitality had in the bag over FaZe. And so they're at least able to get one of the punishes if out. If I'm carrying it now, I'm going back to Nuke. Nuke. I'm yeah. telling you, I keep beating yes. on yes. I'm picking it again. Because they were the better team on that map. Vitality won pistols, they won crazy rounds. In the depth of the playbook, Kerrigan had the weapons to fight back on Nuke, and that's a call out for this. Oh, I was actually hoping for Mirage to be that third deciding map. That's not gonna happen. We're looking potentially at an yeah. ancient all overpass at this point. Or over Ooh. overpass or Anubis. Yeah, like Anubis, sorry, yeah. At overpass. that point, you know, we, we get some overpass. A map that we've seen them play but I am not necessarily comfortable in it. It's an uncomfortable position to be in if you're carrying it, because Anubis is one of the maps where you have a 100% win rate for phase. Yes. But the problem is, against any other team in the world but Vitality, yes. Yes. you would pull it out. You have to respect the Anubis from Vitality, and you go to an overpass where we have seen the limitations against Miles as well in gun rounds. If it goes to three, whew, against Miles rather. Yeah, FaZe should have lost on overpass yesterday. Yes. I think we all agreed with that. They went up 4-0 in the first half, 3-0 in the second half. It took Kerrigan to win a ridiculous 1v3, yes. and Brolin not to play in the bomb for them to win. So. I agree. If you're Vitality, you're looking at that video, I'd, I'd crown them as the winners. They should at least walk into this final feeling comfortable with the playing field. You're nodding, you're agreeing with that statement, Maui? I would say that you look at all three maps, and Inferno, I would say solid favorites for Vitality. You look at the second map in Nuke, and it's it's pretty much a coin flip for me. And yeah, map three, I think, Overpass. I just feel like Vitality's a little bit more settled in the roles. I haven't always loved what Rain has looked like now that he's had to change positions, right. given the fact that Frozen slotting in for his spots. Let's keep some high-level overview of just the context of this particular matchup and what this would mean for either one of the teams to be closing out, because I think we look at Vitality at the moment as being the strongest team of 2023. Would that change the narrative if FaZe were to take the trophy here? I think we all agree right now that Vitality 
reality have been the better team throughout the year. Uh, obviously, winning the major in Paris is a big reason to that. Some of the other trophies they've hoisted, and as I said, the proactiveness they've come out with in terms of changing roster, in terms of allowing themselves to still find success after Magic, for some reason, decided to lead the team. I think this would open the conversation, you know, if FaZe were to win right here, if they could beat them at, at this stage, you know, there's a lot of money on the line, it's the final tournament of the year, this is a, a big one for a lot of these teams. I still find it hard to argue against Vitality having been the better for 23. What would have made this really interesting is if this was G2, with Katowice, Cologne... G2 then, would have a better... G2 then a better then there's a, than a better yeah, I think that's a huge conversation, but if it's FaZe winning this one, I just feel like the rest of their year... CS2 has been incredibly kind to them, and you could crown them if they win this to be the best CS2 team of the year, though. And so that's that's kind of a different one if you want to open that door. The way I looked at this event here in Abu Dhabi is not about rewriting what happened in 23. I think Vitality have the strongest resume. They are the team of 23. Nobody, even maybe G2 with the double Katowice Cologne, nobody has an argument against Vitality. But what we're trying to figure out here is who the hell is going to be front runner for 2024. We're a few months into CS2. Teams have had a little bit of time to figure out the game. Some players have kind of put themselves as examples, kind of trendsetters. The Rops is a very good example, of course. But this is what we're establishing here. Who is going to lead the charge in 2024? And it feels like we have the two front runners. Well, we've been very curious about the maps coming into this particular grand final rematch show. Let's get some thoughts from Carrigan on that particular topic. Now, coming into this Vitality game, we look back at how it was at the full finals. I remember the, the Vertigo being left open. It was a risk you wanted to take. You picked Nuke last time. Will you be picking Nuke again in that sense? And do you feel like you should have won it last time? Because we looked at him, we thought that was basically in your hands. Uh, I mean, since I came back to face, I hate the word should because everybody should have beaten us multiple times, right? So I think we had a chance. Um, I think they did a great call in the 11-11 round with an AK and they, they won that most important round to, to kind of like push us in a bad situation, right? So uh, in my opinion, they played better on that day and uh, respect for that. Um, but obviously, uh, we are not ready on seven maps, right? We haven't played together for two years, so uh, that should be uh, obviously the answer to your veto. <laughs> I love the honesty from Karagan there. Yeah, there's plenty of should have, would have, could have. We didn't, unfortunately. And I love that, as you said, Machu, they bring that nuke back into the pool and go, hey, we should have won that last time around. I, I think they, they had a strong argument to win nuke against Vitality. And we're going to have to see it. Of course, we're going to talk about it as we move on to map two. But in the depth of the game, the yard play mostly with Rain and the Rain Apex fight is something that went so heavily in the favor of FaZe. They have so many strong arguments to create the map control on the T side. They had like six or seven rounds in a row once the guns came out. This is a very strong map for FaZe. But as you said, I agree with you in the coin flip side because Vitality is a client. It's not like you're punishing someone. Mm. They know they can play. Them. And they have been tested many times already with Mezzi. And when you do that roster change, I feel like there is a such a steep learning curve where you play the map one, two, three, four times with a new roster. You figure out all your mistakes. It's not going to be granted for phase. Obviously, differences in the map pool coming into this and another obvious difference right in the middle of our yes. screens. Frozen now on the side of phase and looking pretty damn good in terms of the eye test so far. I think the Depu has been great for Frozen so far. We couldn't really expect him to go in and, and dominate from the get-go. Obviously, he has to slide into the team. We were questioning certain positions, certain roles. We learned a little bit throughout the tournament. We haven't seen all the maps being played out for phase just yet. And as Kerrigan said, maybe they do have a seven map pool in up their sleeve at, at some point. But for Frozen to come in to this lineup and and not be a liability at all at any point in this tournament, to me, is just great for him. He's going to grow within this team. We know his qualities. We know his capabilities. I would argue the past two years, he's made a strong case for himself to be a top five rifler in the world. So if he can just be somewhere close to that level in face, they got an upgrade for Twist. Oh, yeah. I, I see this as an upgrade already, actually. I feel like the positions that he's taken over from Twist, he's actually exceeded some of the performances that Twist would have had in those spots. And when he actually takes over rain spots, well, there's a, there's a good damn reason. It's because he's also really good at those spots, too. So I've been loving this integration from Frozen overall. I feel like his co the way that he's able to work off of his teammates is very strong for somebody that is just slotting in for their first tournament because we usually have to give so many ca caveats that oh they'll probably feel things out after a, a month or two no that's not been the case for me the trading has been excellent among frozen and the rest of his teammates right i think if you really put the microscope on frozen he's delivered even more than we might have expected mm. for a first tournament but my issue and i think the counter argument is what about the systematic consequences for players that had to leave a spot we're talking about the overpass that's not going to come in here but it's a place where rain ends up being a b anchor now he plays b short we've never seen him there if, same on inferno yes right? if we want to talk about inferno i mean kerrigan had to leave his banana spot right. give that up to frozen so there's a little bit of a disconnect between how frozen and rain play that position it seems like it's still a work in progress and it's another great reason that if you want to side with vitality in this one well there might be a little bit 
bit of a hole there. But well, I think that amplifies the entire conversation with Frozen, that if you're Rain or if you're Kerrigan, they're so good at changing positions. They're so good at allowing a new player to come in, slot in, feel comfortable. So as much as we want to give credit to Frozen only for slotting in and being a great player, it's also around the players, you know, it's the support cast to Frozen that is allowing him to feel comfortable and still allowing themselves to play well. Take Raven as an example, over past B-side now. He's the anchor player down there. And what we've seen in glimpses so far has been great. I would feel very comfortable if I were Rain giving up my position for Frozen because both can move around and both are versatile. But there is one issue, is that if Kerrigan does not have a very good game, and we are just talking about individual performances here, yeah. he's going to find himself in positions where he can be exposed. The a site rifle on Inferno is not a place where you can miss. You're going to have a whole lot of skill-based duels. Think about all of the leaders that throughout the ages have played that secondary B player, setting up their other teammate with a good couple of good flashes. They had the Vista Apex, famously did that for Vitality for a long time. And now, buddy, you're playing, if you're playing long or short, when they come at you on the A side, it's you, your M4 in a dream. And you better shoot in the head. Everything you said yep. is, is true. Everything you said is right. But I also have seen Kerrigan in this tournament go 1 and 10 in the first half with 12 ADR, and the team still ended up winning, right? <laughs> yes. So that's, that's the crazy cool. part about it. <laughs> that is pretty cool. Kerrigan is surrounded by some of the best players in the world. And the face mentality, the face DNA, we haven't even mentioned it yet. You just know that if they're down 11 7 or 11 3 for that matter, they will find a way to come back. Rain even said it in an issue. Whenever it goes into overtime, whenever it gets close, that when that's when he's going into the second gear. And that's when face wakes up. I'd almost say. Yeah, you coined the term the great procrastinators. And I think that has actually <laughs> continued somehow for FaZe coming into CS2. I want to get your take though, Maui, on another member of the FaZe squad, Rops. How would you rank him in terms of where maybe he's going to end out the year of 2023, maybe in the player rankings? If we want to go back to the beginning and talk about the entirety of the year, I would say that Rops is safely a top 10 player. I don't think there's any question about that. It's just how far up is he? But in CS2, if we want to talk about this game now, I think he's top three. So I think that he's elevated his performance in the latter stage of this year. And for me right now, if it's just CS2, he'd probably be second behind Zywoo. I think it's a, I agree with you in the sense of like he's, he has discovered ways to play CS2, and he'd been the first one to do that. Mm. And there was a moment in the game where you would literally discover things about the game while just watching his POV. Yep. But I don't I don't know if he slowed down slightly, or if it's just that people have taken notice to hell, hold up a second, like, this is what Rops is doing. Mm. Like, watch his goddamn POV, watch how he's playing. And I do wonder if we are not playing catch-up right now, and it, he's gonna, I mean, I know he's got quality. He's an extraordinary player, but it becomes complicated when you have to fight back against people targeting you and exactly what you're doing. And this is the next step for him. If you ask a lot of players out there, they would 100% have felt inspired by Rops. They would look at Rops, they would look at his demos, and they would learn from him. I agree with you. People are catching up right now, and we're seeing, I wouldn't say the limitations of Rops, because he has no limitations. He is, as you said, a top 10 player in the world, but he's not a Nico. He's not a, he's not a top three player that's consistently year after year going to be up there in that conversation. He's just below that category. The one thing that I think is slightly hurt Rops is that people have adjusted to CS2, and everybody has now realized that pushing is good. Rushing is, is good. If you are the person swinging into an angle, that's better. And Rops has a natural pro proclivity to be a slightly more passive player. And so sometimes when you see him get charged, as we did in that 11-11 round yes. against Vitality, that's when he broke, when he couldn't actually hit the spray transfer on people that are just rushing him. And so unfortunately for Rops, I do feel like the game's mechanics are slightly moving away from him, despite the fact that he has put in tremendous amounts of work and is still, to me, in my eyes, he's the top three player in CS2. Yeah, he's been a pioneer coming into CS2, undoubtedly. There's so many delicious layers when we're coming into this grand final, not least the, you know, debate, the battle for who is the current goated in-game leader? And I, it has to be between these two guys. Yeah, I guess so. You'd, you'd argue Kerrigan and Glaive are, are taking up the range for the GOAT of all time. I think Apex is now entering into that conversation. As of right now, I think, Maui, you said it yesterday, if you could pick any in-game lead out there in the world to form a new team or to build a new team, you'd probably go with Apex. He's calling the best Counter-Strike. I will also argue he has the best tools at his disposal. It must be nice sitting next to Saibu knowing that if shit hits the fan, you can always look towards that guy and he will make something happen. So there's always, you know, this connection between between the in-game leader and his players, and the coach for that matter. But one argument I'll put in favor of Apex in that regard is he's done it with different lineups. He's integrated yes, Sphinx now fair. to be a world-class player. He integrated Flamesea to come into the team to win trophies, and now he's doing it with Messi again, losing Sonic as a coach, losing Magic as a player as well. It's phenomenal what Apex has been able to do. And, and it's a transformation of a character. And I think this is something that, it, of course, Counter-Strike being such an interesting discipline, we're getting new audience now. We're not really familiar with the history. 
Apex used to be an extremely emotional, crazy-ass entry fragger. That's who he was. That's who he is. He's always got that flame, that passion for the game. And in order to be an IGL, he needed not only to be able to maintain that level of passion, but to control himself a little bit more, to become a leader of man. And when Apex ascended to that role in Vitality, I was the first one to say, what the, what, Dan? <laughs> Like Dan Madesclair is going to be the IGL of Vitality? There's, there's no way it works. And he proved me wrong the best of way. He has become a leader. He has become someone you can refer to not only tactically as finding a solution, but inspiring for his teammate, being the one that is the example to follow. And for that, I tip my hat. Yeah, the emotional anger, you know, can be a benefit. It can also be a cost when you're kind of weighing things up. And you noticed something very interesting yesterday, Matthew, when we were listening in to the game. So let's recap it in this mic top moment. Oh, but boys, I'm talking, just listen and stop talking, please. Three times I said, I repeat what I'm, I'm talking about. No way we lose this because I keep repeating because you talk about me, above me. Uh, guys, nice, guys, boy. listen to me, guys. I'm sorry, listen. Oh, I said three times, Joker, three guys dying before me. Oh. That second one is what I want to focus on. That was around day one, yes. Matthew. And that's very, very, very important because this is one of the side of being a captain that we don't like to talk about. We'd like to think everything is always great and you just have inspiring words for a teammate. There are moments where you feel your team is kind of losing track of how they're supposed to behave and you have to hit your fist on the table and make sure you regather everyone, you recenter everyone. But there used to be a time where Apex in that very situation would disappear from the server because he would let his emotion get the better of him. He would become very agitated in a server and it would be the end. Here it's measured. He knows that at this very moment, he has to regather his teammates because what the hell are you guys doing? We're all gonna stop right there and we're gonna look towards a better way to play the game. And this to me is very important that he's able to do that and remain positive in the next few rounds coming up. He's staying centered. Even though that may look like an extreme amount of frustration, he's saying something that is very practical mm. and pragmatic that people need to listen, they need to focus back up as opposed to just letting it wash over him. I've seen other in-game leaders at this event just kind of laugh those kinds of errors off. But no, Apex means business. And I think that actually is, again, a testament to what the support staff provided Apex when he was working with people like Lars Robel, when he's working with Zonic. They were not standing for that kind of BS. If people are messing up in those kinds of moments, it's not about results-oriented thinking of thinking, we won the round, it's fine. It's thinking, we should have won that round 10 times over and much cleaner than we did there. I love that he did it, you know? I love that he did it because he has the confidence from the team to do it as well. Apex could be an any other team out there who would be, you know, working in different ways and the entire team would crumble at that moment. They wouldn't be able to comprehend what he's saying. They would be frustrated, they'd be mad, they'd be out of their ways. Vitality are used to Apex working like this and he's stepping up when he's needed the most. I absolutely love that he's doing it in a round you're even winning because he knew that they cannot get away with that one more time. So again, he's my leader. He's one of the greatest out there right now. And this is what's so poetic about when we look at x -Taz rejoining the crew, right? Because he echoed this exact sentiment when he came in to Copenhagen where they just lived to the trophy, he said the biggest difference that I see in Apex is that emotional angle. He knows how to harness it and not let him tilt off the face of the earth. Definitely, and I'll go a step beyond here. I think for most of his life or probably career, Apex has been told, you cannot be like that. You cannot be emotional. You cannot let it get the best of you. It's impossible. And I think now he's moved into a, a way to look at it in Vitality, which is let's embrace who I am, but it has to be, as you said, it has to be centered. I cannot just waffle around. I have to know what it is I'm telling to my teammate. When the emotion comes in, there's a moment where it's healthy, there's a moment where it's not. You need to be able to stop that and not let it spill over rounds. And I think Apex has learned how to make the most of who he is instead of trying to suppress that passion that he's got. And he's been an incredible leader of integrating new players into the squad, not least with Mezzi, who's been looking so solid coming into Abu Dhabi. So let's get a few words courtesy of a new gun in the squad. Mezzi, I want to start by looking out. For you, what's it like going from these early exits before in your other teams or not going as far as you want to now back-to-back -back grand finals? I mean, I can't really complain. I think it's definitely uh, the nicer side going through the tournaments. Obviously, uh, maybe I'm away from home a little bit longer, but I mean, like I said, I can't really complain. Making to finals is, uh, is what we want to do as competitors and as CS players. So I think, uh, yeah, it's the best thing. Yeah, I think it's worth it being from home for this long for this reason, right? But how does it feel this time compared to last time on your first event for you? I think it kind of feels uh, similar to be honest. I think um, I think I'm trying to take it all in each experience yeah. coming into the final. Obviously, uh, it's always going to be a little bit different, but going up against the same team is uh, you know how they they like to play. Obviously, they've got a new player, but I think for me, it's just trying to gain as much experience as I can and being around the players that we have, it uh, makes it a lot easier. 
And in terms of being around the players you have, I learned from the HLTV interview you did yesterday, Flames isn't feeling too well. I would have actually noticed that considering he's been playing so well. So how is he feeling today? I think he's feeling a little bit better, still still not 100%, but like like everyone saw yesterday, I think he's, he's a player that's always going to give 100% anyway, even though his outside the game is not feeling the best. I think uh, he's got the mentality and the uh, overall mechanics inside the game to pull it off, and we know he's going to be there today as well, giving 100%. We know he's always got the energy as well, right? That's for sure. Now, I want to ask you, when it comes to this matchup, do you feel like you are favourites in this or do you feel like it's quite even? How do you view it in your mind? Uh, I mean, of course, it's always going to be even. I think when you put us up against uh, FaZe, obviously the individuals match up pretty well. I think everyone's got the strong individuals there. Um, I guess the only thing that puts it in our direction is that we beat them at the last event and obviously we're looking to do it again, but they're, of course, looking for revenge and they're going to come out even harder than last time, but we're, we're definitely ready for it and we, we know we're confident they're going up again. Back-to-back -back grand final appearances for Mezzi, and I think it would be stating the obvious to say uh, he's looked a lot more comfortable and a lot more impactful at this tournament, Jacob. 100%. The performance he had in the group stage was nothing but spectacular. I will argue, though, yesterday he didn't really find his footing on to the later stages of that game. The 1v3 saved a lot for Messi, but let's be honest, that's not needed. We don't need Messi to be at a 1.3 rating in a tournament of this caliber. That's Sai Wu's job, and he's obviously also up there. Flame C as well, Spinks up there. So for Messi to do so well when it's not necessarily needed, to me is a massive healthy sign for the future. He's already now finding his footing. With the way that Apex has talked about them integrating Messi, it is clear that there is a focus to make Messi more comfortable, and that has bear board fruit in this tournament. The flashes to set him up. Sometimes their first T-side gun round is a play for Mezzi. Sometimes Zaiwu is throwing a flash for Mezzi. That's that seems so unheard of when Alex was talking about the old Vitality thing. We're just we're just flashing for Zaiwu. That's why he's good. No, <laughs> Zaiwu is a support player too sometimes, and that's why Mezzi has been the benefactor of these moments, and it's also a big reason why Vitality are so scary. They have so many weapons. We talk about just Zaiwu and Sphinx. That's not really the case anymore. Apex has been playing well. Mezzi's been playing well. Every single person has pop off potential on this roster, and that's why when you look at these teams, you probably would lean and say FaZe has more firepower. At this event, I'm not sure if that's the case. And a certainty, as always, Zaiwu has been playing well. So I'm looking at all these attributes of Vitality. They're looking like a pretty formidable force at the moment, Matthew. Yeah, definitely. You talk about certainty. I think there was a world in which we didn't know how Zaiwu would look like on CS2. The first outing in Sydney was a little bit complicated. And I feel like that discussion has come to bed. But you have to realize and, and for a second take in what this could mean for this guy. You're looking at a player who is on track to be nominated best player in the world for the third year. He would tie symbol. This is a record that only these two players in the entire world actually share fifth year back to back between the first and the second best player in the world. You're talking about a potential 18th MVP that could be on the line if he Ooh. had that W here as well. And that's a stat that I found myself. Zaiwu in Vitality has never had a negative LAN event rating ever in his entire life, ever since he put the jersey on. But here is the thing, here is where it gets interesting. People have always thought that I would just protect him from all of the criticism and shelter him. I still believe there is a level that he can reach in in terms of accolades, attributes, the Katowice's, the Colognes of the world, kind of escaping him. But here in grand finals as well, this is the one argument you're always going for. Do it in the semis, do it in the final, do it time and time again. This is another moment for him, another opportunity to just make sure no one ever questions who he is. There's Something no... that we were talking about back in Copenhagen, you were saying there's percentage, you know, the sure. Saibu has to be going up and up and up. Have we sure. seen that? Have you been satisfied with the percentage increase we've seen? From yeah, I think Saibu is just getting more and more comfortable and he's getting better and better. That's why he is as good as he is. You know, I, I don't think there's ever been a conversation whether or not Saibu would be great. He, he is, you know, in my book, you know, the, the greatest of all time in the sense that he would have been that if it had not been for Symbol being born 10 years before him. It's not Saibu's fault that he wasn't popped off before and his parents didn't really do this up before he could come out. Saibu, for five Five years of professional play have been nothing worse than the second best player in the world. Symbol doesn't even come close to that, right? So if that continues for the next many, many, many years, we're not going to have a conversation whether or not Sai Wu or Symbol is the greatest of all time. It's that man right there. Sai Wu have done nothing but being impressive in Counter-Strike from whenever he started to touch that game. To me, it's a ridiculous conversation to even have. Would you agree with that sentiment, Maui? Is he the goated to end all goats in CS? Not current. I mean, CSGO is owned by Simple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, true. Yeah, I'm still he keeping with that. Before that, too bad for him, huh? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> CSGO is still owned by Simple. I think CS2 is going to be Zaiwu's game. I think he's already shown that. Yeah. To me, he's already the best player in the game right now. I, I think there was like there was that conversation. Twist put it out there that 
Brops was the best player, I think that's that's over. I don't think that's even a conversation anymore. Zaiwu is the best player right now. Even if he didn't always have the cultural impact, he's starting to find it. <laughs> there has been more ego plays. He has been more aggressive. He's going for more, more aggressive openers than I have seen before. And I do think that when we talk about what Zaiwu has actually said himself at, the, at that Fall Finals, he was talking about the fact that he's trying to show that ego. He's trying to have more pop-off moments. He's imposing himself more. And frequently in these games, he is just taking taking a round and just throwing out the playbook entirely and just going for fights, and he's winning all of them. And I also think he's got a, a healthier environment to do what he's the best at, right? Because if you look back at Vitality 18, 19, 20, it's a story of either Zaiwu is going to drop 60 kills in a best of three or might as well not even look at the game because that's not going to work out. And then this was an unhealthy amount of pressure, unhealthy way to look at Counter-Strike anywho, and there were moments where he did not deliver the performances that were asked from, right? Now that's not the same situation anymore. You talk about it, there's way more possibilities within the Vitality camp to get that W, what you need from him is key moments, pop-off moments, superstar moments in a game like he did against FaZe on Nuke. He was the only one really playing on the CT side. You need him to put your team on the right tracks and then you have to have the confidence that some other people on your team will rise as well. I think that's been a development that we've seen of Vitality, right? Because it was always the case. We'd always have that storyline of, oh, it's going to be the Zyber show. He's going to carry them to the victory. He's going to get them deep in the tournament as possible without the supporting cast really being around them. And that's definitely changed coming into this year. And with this new lineup, Everybody is looking really solid around Zyru as well. Yeah, there's no doubting that the support cast of Zyru now is, is much, much stronger. As soon as he got Spinks in there to be his playmate, sure, it took maybe five, six months before Spinks found his footing within Vitality, but we knew the potential of that guy. And now that they're rocking it up together, then that's a very solid core fracas to have on your lineup. I almost see Zyru as a device just much better, because I don't necessarily think he's the simple player that is going to pop off and have these ridiculous moments. Of course, the clutches we see from Zyru and the intuition for the game is unmatched, you know. He's fantastic at that. But he's just a player that is regularly getting the right kills, the right timings, and doing the right thing almost round after round after round. You never really see Saibu chime out out of an entire game. He's always going to have moments in the game where he doesn't necessarily pop off, but he does what he's supposed to do, which is win the round for his team. So for me, it's just the consistency, it's the understanding of the game. And you know what? If I could one day wake up and play Counter-Strike as Saibu, it would be so much fun to see the game through his eyes, because you can just see when he's playing, he got that sense for it. Well, FaZe versus Vitality, a rematch of what went down in Copenhagen and the chance for one of these two teams to end off their 2023 with yet another trophy. It's time to get this grand final underway. Etihad Arena, Counter-Strike fans around the world. This is the Blast Premier World Final, and this is what it has all come down to. Are you guys ready? Yeah! That's more like it. Now for these two teams, they have certainly shown that they are the best throughout this year, and it has been a crazy year. We started with CSGO, we're ending it with CS2. We've seen the major trophy lifted by Vitality. We've seen them play with three different rosters and finding success across multiple events. Then CS2, FaZe came up and they started to dominate once again, but now they've made a change of their own. And now it all comes down to this match to end the year on a big, big high. 
Now let me check with you guys. We got some Vitality fans in the house? And what about FaZe? And are you guys just ready for a great game? No, 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 that's too quiet. Let me hear you! This matchup is going to be special. This is the perfect grand final, and it's exactly what we wanted. So let's get into it. There is no secret to success. Success is the result of meticulous preparation, hard work, and learning from your past mistakes. And for FaZe, they have embodied success throughout their last world final journey. But it's FaZe to take themselves to semi-finals. The road has been long and hard fought, but amidst the chaos of battle emerge these chosen few. Carrigan, Rain, Frozen, Robs, Brokey. All three, all three, all three. Two banana, one long. Banana, long. <laughs> Sick pin, bro. Fucking animal. Brothers in arms, ready to take to the stage for one final fight. One final crusade stands between them and ultimate glory. Two, three, this is the Blast World Final. FaZe make their way to the grand final in Abu Dhabi. This is FaZe Clan. Their style and consistency is one to be marveled at. And a change of player is not enough to stop the flow state they found themselves in with CS2. Now they have a chance to get revenge for Copenhagen and show the world that their own improvements can do more than give them an edge, but give them another trophy to end the year on a high. <laughs> Brokey! The Latvian laser. Rain! The Architect. Carrigan! The Fearless Leader. Frozen! The chance to grab his first phase trophy. Rops! The one with the game. Etihad Arena, let me hear it for FaZe Clan! where all others have fallen. Vitality remains standing. Their every move throughout this journey One, two, three, has been a masterclass of consistency. Their strategy and camaraderie, a marvel to behold. All eyes are on them as they take to the stage for one last time this year. Messi gets no! the balls! As they stand on the precipice of greatness. Apex, Zaiwu, Flames, Messi, Sphinx have all shown unyielding grit and determination. Together, they stride into the final challenge, intent on becoming Blast World Final Champions. These bees are going from strength to strength, looking seemingly unstoppable since they made the change. The first success was found in Copenhagen and now here with a seven match win streak to their name and only one game standing away from glory. This could be the toughest test yet, but one this squad has proven ready for. Spinks! The Ferocious. Zai Wu! 
the chosen one. Apex! The adaptive and accomplished captain. Flames! The fiery one. Mezzi! The king, British royalty. V is for victory! V is for vitality! versus phase the top two teams in the world now within touching distance of yet another gold match you i could not ask for a more emphatic way to round out what has been a absolute whirlwind of 2023 you're absolutely correct and what kind of comparisons we can draw between these two teams i was looking at apex there with his teammates and he was pointing towards the trophy and he was telling them look at this look at this trophy and i make the comparison with kerrigan as well 2022 was a year where kerrigan won some of the trophies that had eluded him his entire career he worked to get some of these trophies counter strike can be very cruel you're not always poised you don't always have the tools to get that success apex and vitality are in that position right now where the cars in the deck are in their favor this is the moment where you reap trophies these are opportunities you cannot let go but FaZe is a client, and they're ready to fight. It's gonna be a great, great matchup. Some of the best players we have in Counter-Strike is ready to take on the server. We had the discussion with Rops perhaps being the best player in CS2. We know Saivu have been one of the best players in Counter-Strike to ever touch the game. Apex as well, you said it. Individually speaking, he's been having an output on yes. the server. So has Kerrigan at moments in this game. So there's just quality all one, over two, the place, Maori. The number one team taking the number two team in the world of Counter-Strike right now, and they want to finish the year on an absolute high. Vitality look to spoil the coming out party for Frozen. I have loved what both of these teams have brought when it comes to CS2. I have loved even what their coaches have brought to. Have to give a huge shout out to the fact that once Neo joined this phase roster, it feels like they renewed themselves in terms of their playbook. They started developing more and more in terms of strategic depth. But Vitality, they are a well-oiled machine. They look unstoppable. They look like no individual can ever actually take them down. It has to be a team effort from FaZe, and I am sure that they're going to bring their absolute best to this matchup. Let's get some thoughts on the first map of this series. Inferno brought into the mix by Vitality, starting on the CT side. Machu, what should we be looking for in this first battleground? Did you just say they started on the CT side? I've got confirmation that they were starting confirmation. on the CT side. Like yeah. th that in itself is quite interesting. I would have imagined they would start T, but they are being given the defense. And that to me means that Kerrigan has already some sort of idea on what kind of game plan they want to do. We usually put as a potential weakness the Flames Apex duo, and we have seen it being abused at the very beginning of halves in the semi-final. We needed Vitality to do adjustments, to have adjustments. I will be pulling with the AWP, but that to me is a defense that lacks stability. If your only win condition is to bring Zywoo over with the AWP, it's going to get complicated in terms of decisions. The problem is FaZe have the exact same problem. We saw play, FaZe play against G2 in the group stage, and G2 were bullying FaZe on their CT side. They were up 8-1 to one, G2 on that T side, then FaZe won three in a row to salvage an 8-4 half, which is somewhat respectable, but FaZe had nowhere to go on the CT side. So I want to pose the question, Maui, right here. Is that Kerrigan feeling that they have a good idea on their T side Inferno, or is that Kerrigan trying to avoid starting out on their weak CT side. It could be a little bit of column A, column B pimp. I want to draw a little bit of attention, though, to the fact that we obviously know the Flames Apex duo can be a little bit flimsy at times. We still have to talk about the fact that Mezzi, this has been a problem map for him. He has not really shown up when it comes to Inferno, when it comes to that defense, and that actually includes the fact that he hasn't faced an apps lurker like Rops. Right. Man like Rops. Having that against you when you are trying to take space, because Mezzi hasn't been comfortable in pit. He wants to press up a little bit forward, but that's where Rops will have his number. That is a key match up in the default I will be keeping my eye on. And it's directly connected to this whole idea, this theme that 
Messi needs a little bit of the game plan to be around him to allow him to have the best performance. He's not quite yet to that point where a Majesk-esque player, we can just basically let him play his position, he's gonna do fine. No, he has to be set up a little bit. But Inferno, and because of some of the weaknesses we're putting forth, is not a map where he's gonna get a whole lot of it. At times, he might have Zaibu by his side in apps. At times, they might do a double rifle situation. But at the end of the day, there's gonna be moments where he is in his pit, he's getting executed on, and his only thing he's got is his own rifle. Where are we looking at on the phase camp then in terms of Frozen? Mm. How has he been slotting in to this one, Jacob? I think he, he struggled a little bit in that first game against G2. It was hard for him to find the, the impact on Banana. Again, mm -hmm. Banana is probably the place on the CT side that requires the most synergy in order to find a comfort level where you can perform. He was going for a lot of duels and he was taken down by Nico. Yes. However, Nico on the G2 side is probably one of the best Banana players, so the quality that Frozen is up against, of course, is very, very high in vitality, but I would argue no one is as good as Nico on that T side. So maybe the work conditions is slightly more healthy now for Frozen. A player we haven't mentioned at all in this segment coming into this game is Brokey. Brokey on the AWP, the most expensive gun you have in the game. Of course, he needs to show up as well. And the way Brokey is playing, especially on Inferno, close combat Counter-Strike. He wants to be on the side. He want to be in the smoke. He want to be affected by a flash so he can do some sort of ridiculous flick that makes him feel comfortable. He needs to step up and he needs to be annoying towards Vitality. No Brokey, no win for face claim. If we want to also shine the spotlight on uh, Apex here, this is a map where he has been just devastatingly strong. He has had such strong rotations and ideas, even if the game plan for Vitality isn't going accordingly for the first five, six rounds, they have made the necessary adjustments to right the ship. On top of that, his individual performances, when he has changed up his spots, when he has realized, I'm not holding down this B site with flames, he slots in a different player, be it Zaiwu, be it even just taking over another player on top of that, another rifler, and yet, and still Apex has done so well in reading what the opponents are doing and rotating to the proper spot in order to make sure that he finds value, and he has been keeping himself alive. That is such a welcome sight for Apex that he is not just throwing his life away needlessly, which was such a problem for him before with the switch to CS2. Gentlemen, just a couple of minutes before we're kicking off this grand final, and that means one thing only, predictions time. Is this going to be back-to-back -back gold to Vitality, or are FaZe going to claim sweet, sweet revenge? I'm going to start off with you, Jacob. How do you think this is going down? I think it's incredible tough to call this matchup. I see it as a 50-50 game in reality. It was so close in Copenhagen. I know Vitality ended up winning that game 2-0, but we all agreed it probably should and could have been a three-mapper. I expect the same today. I expect all three maps. I have an inkling feeling that Frozen want to do a lot in his power in order to get that trophy. I also haven't seen the best of Messi on a stage just yet, apart from that one with 3 clutch. So just for the sake of it, I'm going to give this uh, 51 to 49 for face clan. Oh, very Ooh. tight. Ooh. Very tight. Taking risks. <sighs> this game is, for me, such a coin flip also. And so I'm just going to go with a couple of the key determining factors. One, the best player in the server is Zaiwu. So I have to side for Vitality for that reason. And two, Vitality have played slightly better Team CS at this event. And so for my money, they're the better team. They have the better individual. But I still be see it's going three maps. And it's going to be close ones at that. It is going to be Vitality, and I think the chances that Vitality pull a 2-0 are greater than the other way around. Ooh. I think Vitality have, are better candidates on Nuke than FaZe are on Inferno. And if we go to 3, this is where we're going to test the limit of the map pool and the playbook. And at that game, I think Vitality is ahead. I have Vitality. Well, we've got our predictions, we've got our maps, and we've certainly got our teams ready. Only one thing left to do. Let's kick off this grand final with Scrawny and Laundons. What's up, Abu Dhabi? Thank you so much for having us, and welcome to the World Final Grand Finals. Yeah, the number one ranked team versus the number two ranked team one last time in 2023. It feels like the stage has been set wonderfully. It feels like all roads at the start of CS2 have led us here to the Etihad Arena to just crown the final champions of this year. And the fact that FaZe come out of the gate in this version of the game as dominant as they were, only to meet their maker, Kerrigan on home soil, couldn't get it done. He'll have one final chance, and it is you who sets the stage with us. Abu Dhabi makes some noise! Let's go! We got Inferno up first in the rematch. We saw what Vitality did on Inferno yesterday. They look leagues ahead of everyone else. If there's one contender, it's got to be FaZe. 
They're looking for their best game of the event. That's the only way they're going to win this matchup. Yes, they got to this point, but they didn't play Vitality. Not in this form. Nah, we saved it to the very end, right? Best for last. Kerrigan taking it to the T side on his opponent's map pick. Battle of the Minds between Apex and Kerrigan. And Apex, just on an individual level, looking sharper than we could have ever expected to round out 2023. They get a little bit of brackets control off the flash. Nothing too rowdy so far from this T side. They're waiting for the flash lane retake. It's not coming yet, just now. Exec will be, however. Defense is calcified completely. Full passive setup, sitting and waiting. Apex smoked out of library. Suddenly, Zywu is going to feel like he is too exposed. So understandably dropping towards pit. His dualies, they go down with nothing. Flamesy from inside of the site, dropped out. We do get Apex with a wonderful peek out from library with a player breathing down his back in Brokey. He gets out and ahead of the hit. Looking for a timing on this smoke. It could be his head, it is. He gets domed by Brokey. Oh, good trade back from Spinks though, frozen into the clutch in the first round of the grand finals. And he tucks it in. Now, they've lost track of him, but there's two of them. And they're both fully health, and they've both hit hard so far. This event night's Kush! Glock up close! Oh. Falls to the hands of Spinks. It's Vitality with CT Pistol. Yeah, there's the number two on Vitality, okay? We got Zaiwu, who's won every single MVP for this organization since he's joined the roster. But when Spinks started playing well, that's when they started winning more than one tournament a year. That's this year. That's Paris. That's Gamers 8. That's the Blast Ball Finals. That's Rio. That's them looking for now the Blast World Final at the end. On either side of the phase victories here in CS2, it has been Sphinx, the number two. Frozen coming into this squad, obviously looking to, I think, touch a trophy as soon as he gets to put on the black and red of FaZe Clan. He looks so right in that jersey. He really does. Speaking to Kerrigan at the start of the event, he says any single time FaZe takes to a stage, any single time they're at an event, it's for the win. It's for the trophy. You don't play for FaZe to get a top eight. And so expectations on Frozen out of the gate have to be massive. The best North American player to ever do it is who he replaces. Each of these teams with fresh faces towards the tail end of 23. You know, we talk about the great minds of Apex and Kerrigan, both of them kind of going through the same motions, implementing new stars. Flamesy, falling back, done after the one. Oh, Speaking of Frozen, he does get his kill, and Apex doesn't like the amount of health he's left over, so they fall back 2-2 to the sights. It's an effortless high-low setup here, with the cover being in the perfect position. Flamesy could actually afford to die. He even gets a kill, so that helps out a lot. FaZe looking for an econ victory. They force up, they have good guns, but Vitality know that they were buying into this round. Met by a smoke at 50 seconds, yeah. not ideal. Yeah. Happy to see it uh, there rather than at 30, but it looks like there will be a refresh of it as well. So, Yeah, and then an incendiary not long after. But we've seen a problem sometimes when they try to block. I think there still is a chance for FaZe. They want to brute force it. Well, they're grouped up and Mezzi starts to lean closer to Arch. Here comes the execute. Good amount of nades for FaZe to get this done, but there will be a molly front sight, which means Sphinx can just stay locked in. And Apex buying a lot of time before that one goes down. They're gonna have to charge through it. Rain down to just measly points of health, and Sphinx is a single kill. Remember, 10 health here for Apex. If he wants to charge down this bomb, it's little bits of HP, and he can't stop it. So we've got a force buy bomb down post plant for FaZe, and they're not able to get off site. Kerrigan trades right back, and Zywoo's up oh. next. There to take him both down. His SMG succeeds, but it's a costly conversion for Vitality. It is, yeah, that's a clutch for Vitality, but as you mentioned, it cost a lot, so... 10 second Diffuse comes in, and FaZe will at least have made some money on this round. It could have been worse for sure. They ran in through a smoke, had to run through a Molotov as well. And if there wasn't an instant dink on Sphinx, you better believe they wouldn't have even got that plant off. So, here we go. Between Rain and Kerrigan, the entries of FaZe consistently. Coming in at 25% of the opening attempts for FaZe. Linking that one together. You know, Kerrigan's been giving us some uncharacteristically good rounds as of late, but it's hard to catch up to Apex because yes. he is just that much better 
also for who whoever just watched yesterday not so much obviously fair yeah so kerrigan's been good for sure but he has actually kind of gotten worse the event's gone on that won't cut it now early kills for him oh a lot of pressure out of this. Man, those were two pretty big opportunities. They were walking up, weren't expecting someone to be there, missed their shot. But what's important for the CTs is they stay alive. So it's a nomadic rotation out of Vitality. It's two remain now on this side of the map. We've almost got a Navi-esque setup out of Vitality with the amount of passive angles being held with low information. Let's see if the read is correct. We're going to follow that bomb. Numbers not here for Vitality. We mm. talked about Mezzi, obviously at times questionable in the pit. The new piece of Vitality. He who stands just behind Zywu. The one who casts the greatest shadow for this squad. And now he's just tucked down behind Box. They get really deep before any CT starts to try and pull them back. Beautiful delay here. And one player... Oh, Hook gets caught, but they do clear two Ooh. and three. Frozen's double, but the smoke comes up. And now Frozen stuck inside sight, goes for the bomb plant. Gun comes out. There's a gap on the side of this, I think. Zywu presses alongside, oh. sure enough, just coming out and catching Frozen on timing. Yeah, that was brave. They, they couldn't go through the smoke right away because the reload, but uh, they still were ready to go through at the same time. Impossible to break up that split. And that fresh smoke, that would have given Frozen too much. Vitality let Freyze get dangerously close to that bomb site. Definitely. That was an amazing hold, honestly, considering that they were getting wrapped fully, right? That's the idyllic split for the T side to get arch control, to get this much space. So it's pretty impressive to have two players put up frags like this. Uh, when it, it, FaZe look back on this round and they think, okay, well, we could have definitely tricked them both easily playing within the site. Another close round, but another close round win here from Vitality. Yesterday, we saw them go down 6-1 to one versus Na'Vi on Inferno. It looked so ugly at first, and they came back into that game. Yeah, what brought them back, of course, was some of those more aggressive peaks out towards the A site. Putting Zywoo's off on mid. Just getting eyes in apartments. And pretty consistently catching bit over there for Na'Vi specifically. You know, that'll now be Rops in this instance, in this head-to-head. -head, who is on the other side from the front line. Flames onto Frozen to kick it off, and good grenade damage as well. There's a little bit of a chase here from Kerrigan. He has found timing that could very well catch a half-health Flames off guard. Yes! Kerrigan wastes no time getting into the oh. fight. Froki instant headshot. Oh, you Just like that, that B-Site crumbles. Yeah, that's it. That's an off-game plan play out of Kerrigan. Just heads up. Decided to make the decision. Wasn't spotted and noticed that they were in the middle of rotating out. That's something that he needed to do. Kerrigan smelling blood in the water on the B-Site. Even with his support in Broki being half health because of the grenade, Kerrigan still tries to make that happen. And with it, FaZe's fourth round is the first on the board. This is why we always talked about them as land clan. And those are the kind of plays that they're willing to make. And it's not actually Kerrigan who is often the one to make the play. It's everybody else who has the ability to come forward with an aggressive lurk for Rops to peek out of halls, for Twist to try to peek something as well. And uh, Kerrigan can do it too, you know. This is FaZe showing the range. More than just a game plan team, more than just a system that executes there are five autonomous individuals that are armed with the, all the knowledge that they need to to make informed choices, even if they're alone. And in this circumstance, he had his team behind him. Perfect cover here from Brokey. I knew it. He felt the punish coming. Maybe cool guys do look at explosions. Well, can't help it when they're this big. Phase on the big screen. That's it nice. It may just be their first and the fourth, but man, there were openings in each of these rounds, yes. so... That was actually the most unlikely one that they won. They were yes. so close yeah, to closing exactly. out the other rounds, yeah. Four tight rounds of Counter-Strike. Really all we can ask for between these two teams. Ranked number one and two in the last match of the year. 
Flames had sort of an off game on ZT side Inferno yesterday. Looking for a slightly better day, but they survived anyway. Opening here for Zaiwu, but it's not on Rops. Right? That's the important thing. It's not on Rops inside of mid as the Lurk. It's just on Rain. So their plan's still under guys. Exec coming. 2v4 in the site. Apex again looking to support Flames in the back site, but dies to the smoke spam. Flames looking to carve a player off the top, but it's just the pit push first. Kerrigan on smoke gets Ooh. himself a second. I mean, he's off to the races. Six and three start. That's something really smart that FaZe do. Everybody is playing off the coffin smoke in the exact same way right now. We saw what Zaiwu did from that position. This is so key. That FaZe, they jumped up for a second, but they didn't commit over like you would in CSGO. Now, is there a chance that they go for this retake? It looks like they're intent on punishing exits. It's 3v3, lots of time left on the clock, but they're walking away from this one. So again, if we compare this to previous rounds, CSGO, you jump up oranges, you clear it as your teammates go all the way across to the grill, and then you start to clear the back of the site. You punish the left side peak from the top of oranges from quad, you punish the right side peak from grill, and then you take the site. But in CS2, that smoke is so poofy from Coffins, it's working out very well for the CTs to push out. And if they committed, Flames would have definitely got a pick off, if not two. Oh, you could see him staring at oranges. Hell, the first player almost climbed all the way up. Yeah. Decided not, they, went pit. Two of them did that, yep. yeah. It's, they're breaking habits right there. And this Answer is 4v5. Death. And Zaiwu, obviously, just so clean. Snaps back, right? You try to get a flash on him, get him off his angle, but Zaiwu mechanically just the best. Kerrigan doing great things at the start of map one here. You know, feels like very much so. Vitality's floor has risen thanks to Apex, third highest rated player behind Mezzi and Zaiwu coming into the last match of the year. Kerrigan hoping to go tit for tat tonight. Again, Faye's gonna take a quick look towards that banana. A little bit of pressure, as it has been. Yeah, these are two inspiring rounds. I thought this was going to be a 5-0 start, and FaZe were going to claw back into it, but they got their X-Factor round early. And I think they survived a couple of disappointing losses as well within this already. So we start off with a very exciting game. Now Vitality down to their bottom dollar on this round. Low, low grenades on Inferno is first sign of a loss. You need to have that more than you need to have good guns. They almost don't have both. Now they have the AWP, at least on Zaiwu. And he has been swinging it lately. Yeah, but nobody... Oh my god, they're trying it again, but guns out this time? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, they, okay. yeah they're not just this more time. careful. Zaiwu will miss a shot, oh. and Sphinx is instantly dead. But Messi's position with this SMG, he could just peek off the side of it. No second kill out of him. Zaiwu in the pocket. The most dangerous man in the server. And Apex has come through already. Oh Missed quick scope. Desperate bomb plant. Zaiwu's burning. That's big. Almost dead. Four health left. All he has to work with. We're going to get a slow wrap as Rops looks for the impact. He can and Zaiwu, he can sense him, but he can't see him. Rops comes wide, gets the clear. And now the last CT is slow to the approach. Flamesy off of middle. Both of these T's for phase in the pocket. He can give him full info, at least. It's going to have to be sick headshots coming out of Flames here. A close approach. The lead is on the oh. line. Phase tie at three. Oh man, are Phase going to have more fight this match? Because that's what we're seeing right now. Three round comeback. On the site hit. Multiple guns failing. Multiple guns failing in decent positions. Vitality yesterday, get two apiece on a couple of these players. The MP9 doesn't do enough. Zaiwu can't find this trade on Brogy. Flames gets nothing again. Ah! Even one kill in that retake, and I would have wondered, is there a chance? Vitality are getting caught off a little bit. Ooh, but gives Zaiwu enough chances, he's going to hit something. Yeah. Early scout damage for Rops to deal with. But that scout's not supported by much. You just said the utility's essential. Barely any of it here in round seven. Vitality were caught early on versus Navi yesterday. 6-0 lead to kick off Inferno before the CT side started to get more aggressive. And we've seen a glimpse of that, but I do feel like Vitality had already just returned back to more passive. Hyper passive at times in the A site with two players buying boxes. Right now it's top orange. Kerrigan snaps up, gets there. 
Oh, and they don't even try because last time Brokey was posted on this angle. Kerrigan with two. Another double for Kerrigan on the B play. Sure, he'll expose to Zywu on the cross, but now that the smoke's there, there shouldn't be an issue. Just don't jump up. Brokey almost offering a second. Now, you've got Rops tag, you've got Brokey tag. That's Zywu setting up the pistols. Oh, frozen. Just sends a couple rounds through smoke and takes the head off. This is massive for Kerrigan's story at this event. It's, this is a great way to start this map. And him being the tip of the spear on that first walk-in is where they started. And now they're four rounds back on the comeback. Don't think this is going to happen, Mezzi. But let's see if he can get any punishes. He's dancing with death right now. But I think there is an incentive here for the CTs to try to get a kill. Because almost every round so far has been two or less alive for phase. This will be the first where they have four. So not Man, only Spinks failing a little bit. Yes, sir. Messi not getting two on the pit round. Flamesy struggling with his spray. Faze are mad about the fall final. I mean, as they should be, right? Denying Kerrigan a trophy lift on home soil. Denying Faze the continuity of being the best CS2 team out of the gate. You know, nobody will ever touch the ninjas in pajamas, but Faze were making that run. That's what they were trying to be at the beginning of the new game, essentially. And their streak soured by Vitality. Big time. And it was well earned. It was well earned from Vitality. I mean, their struggle some event was Sydney, where Zywu only got like the 1.10, which is human. And for Vitality, they had to let sort of phase take over from that point. Uh, but they came back right in at the end, at the fall final, to end the streak. Their aim is to make FaZe look as bad as possible here at the World Final, and FaZe want revenge. Eight rounds deep, full buy. Ironically, this time, no op. No way he presses this again. You saw what happened when he tried to test Apex, but oh now it's versus Zywu. Oh, oh, Kerrigan! He's finding all the timings right now. And he's able to jump into the arch. Perfect space creation here from Kerrigan. He has the CT player scrambled. Suddenly Apex versus Kerrigan and spawn. I mean, I mean they're looking for him yeah. now. He was, I, his team wasn't ready to exec, but he's broken apart the structure a little bit. He was so fast, but as is Sphinx getting back into his slot towards this A site, if they think they can just overwhelm, the numbers are here for the defense. Mezzi pulling rain off of the approach. Now half of the pack still stays back, but Rops will hold the front line. And it's man advantage CTs for now, but it's delayed. Yeah, they need to be crude about their rotations and still get information, and they do do that, but Brokey trades back. There we go. An op kill for Brokey. We've been waiting to see it, and now he finds his mark. And you can see Flames, he's looking for the arch timing. They don't know if the, the lurk is coming in, but 45 seconds, and time is limited here for FaZe. The lane retake is massive for Vitality's information. It's frozen, looking for the headshot. Ooh, and as he looks away and gets dinked, it is a perfect shot from Brokey. Oh, now they need a massive failure to lose, right? We've got two players who are just confirmed to be dinked. But 20 health. seconds, they, 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 they gotta go. And they're gonna have to run. They're gonna have to throw caution to the wind. And this will bring them straight to the crosshair of flames. This should be an easy pushover. Sure enough, bomb hits the deck. Second one's dead. The dink set him up. Yeah. Clean shot from Brokey, but... That dink on the second player means no support for the trade towards B. That delay in the mid round is a little bit sort of, you know, you, you wouldn't see that, I think, with Twist in the, in the map. Now, it's not like Frozen doesn't know how to play a mid round, but you wouldn't see them taking too long in that situation. That's still this period where they're getting used to playing with each other, okay? An instant trade right there would have spelled disaster, but I mean, Flamesy, that was a layup for him. Those low HP players. They couldn't find that last frag. They run into B. They die. FaZe use a first timeout after losing that round. And this is such a close game already. It's been a great start, honestly. I can't believe some of the antics that Kerrigan's getting into. That press through smoke two rounds ago into Apex holding CT cross. And then this last round, I mean, he just took it to Zywu. You don't yeah. catch Zywu off guard. To be honest, I, you know, that was like 2020 Kerrigan when he was the scout IGL, when he was being overly aggressive back then. In this situation, it still worked. Um, 
it doesn't convert into the round. And the worrying part about when it was 2020 and he did that, the reason that IGL stopped doing this is because they got so far apart that they couldn't capitalize on the information they gathered. And in this situation, there are four players that couldn't take advantage of the broken structure. So, I mean, I love that he's been had so many good rounds like this, but that one maybe wasn't perfect. Great opening kill for Flames as he runs the risk of peeking down Banana. But it leaves FaZe down a man. And looking to respond as Rain. But they've got a general culture right now of just trying to scrim it. Take some fights and it's, it's work to get them back into the map. Eyes fall on Rain here in round nine. One of the few pieces of FaZe that isn't online at the moment. One in six, a cold start but still feigning presence towards brackets. If it's not Spinks occupied, another smoke. If, oh man, if I'm FaZe, I'm thinking about, about B again, just because of how weak the right thing has through, been over there, but. Oh, and he just missed it, but I think he saw the barrel. Oh, this brought just grows with strength. The more time that ticks down. Eight players on high alert, and a question that still remains above Mezzi's head in terms of his ability to anchor and hold pit. They have arch info, they have pit control right now. This feels like it's FaZe walking into the meat grinder. But there's a chance for Rain to bring it back. A duel that he loses. Spinks ready for another, but Froki gets the better of him. It's a single man advantage, but it's 20 seconds. Dire straits. And Apex remains in sight as Mezzi looks to hold the line. Froki's fixated on him. He hit him through the wall. Mezzi's damage. Again? Froki, two shots through the wall Again? and another on the site. Just like that, the upper makes the difference. But the round's not over. We've got Vitality nearby. Vitality pressed through, spotted out. Brokey's in the open. Down he goes to his counterpart. No way Kerrigan can do this again. He shoots oh. and Zaiwu closes. Another clutch. Zaiwu just doesn't go down. He has countered all the explosive moments so far at this event when it took taking the wind out of Emma's sails yesterday on Inferno into Same today. Sight. He is the clutch denier right Same now. Same situation. Just one more thing that he can do. Beautiful shots coming out of Brokey here. This oh, double. Dude. And then into the site. Yeah. But Zaiwu is no! forever. Oh. A round is not won until he goes down. Yep. Relief on Apex. Yeah. They brought it up on the desk. He's the best player in the server. That's a boon to Vitality. That's just, you know. Ooh. That's, uh, that's, that's a persistent feature. Man, not nine. something. Nine rounds of Counter-Strike, and we got the fireworks we were promised. Yeah. Yeah. It just couldn't ask for a better start to the World Final right now. half by coming out of phase. See if they group up and push. Spinks ready with support behind him. The smoke does section them off, but it's only the single. It's only the single. That's a consistent thing here for Vitality. Faze getting the X-Factor frags. It's a Lots great trade back. Of responsibility for Zaiwu right now. Solo banana hold. And a whole pack of Faze clan coming his way. But show him a shoulder and he'll take your soul. It's frozen down and everybody else on the chase. A fast rotation back from Flames. Zaiwu hits that. Spam comes through. What? You cannot move this Stop guy. Him. You cannot best him. Oh. Your pistols mean nothing. <laughs> In the face of the best. The wide left side peak. Not a single shot missed in that sequence. Wow. He felt the rush coming. He said, I'm not getting timing again. Beautiful swings. Cool, calm, and collected as usual. Not one shot missed. Not one shot missed. And it's nice we can say that about Brokey as well. Yes. Those two on form right now, we're going to get fireworks. Oh! <laughs> yeah. Yes, we will. Frozen nullified in the opening seconds. And some pretty consistent 5v4s now coming out of Vitality towards the tail end of the CT half, much like versus Navi. But it's off of the back of a Zaiwu 12 and 4 start. B 
site closed. Nades too deep. How many Arrogant. smokes are we gonna go through in this game? He's doing it again. They're wait they're watching for pushes this time around. Surely it doesn't work out. Surely it doesn't work out. Apex senses it. Smoke starts to fade on the edge, gets a little squirrely. Another one goes down. The pack is right there. But Apex cools him off and takes the risk of running it back into the corner. I mean, sitting in front of the smoke here. Lurking he in front of the smoke in a situation like this is maybe a liability. Like they are they're a 5v3 up right now. They just they just want to punish any risky plays that face want to try to do. Ah, oh, but it's both sides of the brackets to get pinched, and then Apex comes around oh. and clears the board. Shut down on the B site by Zaiwu, denied on A by the rest of the pack. Vitality looks solid. Yeah, that was Chef's kiss from Apex, absolutely. And uh, he's been feeling the most of the Kerrigan lurk so far. Everyone's been tilted a little bit by it. And that's why I think they, he needs to cool off, you know? But at this point, now it's another half by. Now it's round 12. Damn, the fiery rounds that got phased back to four made it feel like they weren't going to stop. But Vitality have taken the oxygen out of the room. Seems there might not be anything more to feed off of. One last attempt here in half one for phase. Blind as a bat, Zaiwu survives it. Oh god, they're just gonna keep pushing forward, and Mezzi, easy pickings for the double. Now he's starting to miss, and with those first Whoa. misses, at least Frozen gets in. He left the door open for the phase push. Brokey and Frozen again in a 2vx. Oh, Final oh round of the half, god. and the nades are fantastic. Brokey blown to smithereens. And the new kid on the block waited a long time to put on this jersey. Mac 10 in hand, softened up by Apex. He can sense him. And he has certainly softened him up. You can see the desperation of Frozen as he hides into the back of the bomb site now. Only 10 HP. Nice things coming through from the Mac 10. But it is indeed a resurgence from Vitality in this defensive half to get double the round count. Phase post four. Hey! I'm a little worried. <laughs> it's not like you're gonna hit it that straight anyway. Come on. Whose team are you on, bro? <laughs> We're here in the always sunny Abu Dhabi for the Blast World Finals 2023. Obviously in Counter-Strike, the wide swing is most important, but here at the Yaz Lynx, but the backswing. I think it's about time we go find our professional Counter-Strike players and hit the greens. Let's head out. Well, hello. Hello, hello. What's up, brother? How you doing? Good on you. Hey, hey Glaive, hey, come on this. in, baby. You Glaive, New Jersey. Yep. Oh, you, you like it? Oh, yeah, I like it. Welcome to your chariot, the Lincoln Co. 05. Thank you. Our luxury ride awaits. Obviously, here we are, Abu Dhabi, Grand Finals. A great way to end the year. We're mixing luxury with Counter-Strike. Some people go on walks. Some people go on drives to think. You ever go on a drive to think about your career? I do sometimes drive. I, I love to drive. First of all, are you a petrol head? For me, it's, it doesn't matter. It's more about how the car feels when you're driving it. So when I get home for a tournament and I go for a drive, obviously it's uh, it's an important good feeling yeah. to be home. Of course, you can drive in every car, but uh, there is a special feeling to driving in a, in a good car, right? Yeah, absolutely. So we're going to the golf course. We're going to go play against uh, Kerrigan and Scrawny right now. I'm a little worried that Glaive might be a golf player. I've got a hunch, man. <laughs> Ready to go? I'm ready to go. Let's get out there, baby. Let's do it. All right, so it seems our ride of luxury has led us here down to the tee off, boys. The winner walks home with a golden Lincoln coat jacket. Best of luck. Since I just won the knife round, I'll go first. Congrats. You can go first. Good luck, then. Good luck. We'll take it. All right, this. I'll remember Good that. Good luck. What is the tactic? Hit it hard. I just got to check the wind. <laughs> you got this. Dream big, Connor. Yes, sir. Hey, you guys mind? I'm going to go find my ball. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> The third ball. Yo, I got it. This doesn't feel like a punishment. I feel like the grass is harder. 
Good, hit it. good job. It was, it was a warm up. It was a warm up. Yeah, okay, bro. It's not like you're gonna hit it that straight anyway. Come on. Whose team are you on, bro? It's just another major, baby. Last shot before we went to the sandbank. <laughs> oh my god. Oh. Nice. Ooh. Eight nice. and nine? Eight and nine. nine. But it was the best shot of the night, right? Yeah, it was. All right, so here we are, end of the second hole. So with that, we win, which means we get to ride home in style in the Lincoln Co. 05. Yeah, whatever, man. We've won a lot in our CSGO careers, so <laughs> I can be humble in defeat here. I will put it on you. There you go, sir. This is good for you, sir? Good. Thank you. You have a good evening, and uh, sharp. our yeah, 05 yeah. is waiting. We got to go in the golf carts? Yeah. Oh, come on, man. Across the board, Vitality picking up 10 of the opening duels throughout that map. Of course, every clutch we see, three of them in total, also added to the Vitality side. It is the X factor that belongs to Vitality in the first half of map one. Uh, yeah, it's crazy to say that because of the rounds and the way that FaZe won them. And looking back now, while we were in it, it was like, whoa, FaZe, they're pretty much unstoppable. They're going to take over this half now. But looking back, I mean, it was a lot to do with Kerrigan trying to find lurks over and over again. And I want to say, you know, not a real thorough game plan outside of that. They were just ready to follow up. And maybe they're happy about the fact that they got these four rounds. I'm not sure. Ooh, Rops, no trade off that. Rops and FaZe staring down the barrel of another four versus five. And you simply cannot be playing catch-up versus the likes of Vitality right now. This you is a team that's just playing such clean Counter-Strike. 45 is going to catch up with you sooner, sooner than later. Versus Vitality, best form right now. Best form in the world. FaZe there. Sitting patiently. No re-aggressions as the clock ticks down, of course. There's no onus on Vitality to go and do something too quickly. But now they'll organize. Robs gets info on middle. Exec's coming. Rain loses his line of sight. Broke is ready to push through. FaZe gotta do something crazy. And losing Rain in the bomb site. All of a sudden losing the little runway they had to work with. Frozen does manage to catch one on the CT cross. And then Rops wins his duel versus the Lurk on oh, A. Wait a second. Brokey's going over Coffins. Oh! oh! Brokey just like that. He sets it up. Flames peeking deep. And they didn't see him. Rops now holds the door. Oh. And it's Flames just like that to bring it back to the 1v1. It's Flames versus Frozen. And he's on top of the bomb. Halfway there already. He comes off of it because he hears the footsteps. This is, this is a song of ice and fire. And Flames goes back around to CT. Time on his side. Time decides. It's Flames to get the final lap. Oh, he has the final note. Flames wins this one. And it sounds like victory here for Vitality. That was a labored situation. They, I don't know if he made a footstep. That was the hard part to discern. Frozen could have stuck that all the way down to his final second. I thought he fast-stepped. I thought Flames just ran towards the back door. It's almost as if Frozen didn't believe while well, he could get away with it completely. Right? I'm not sure, but it would make sense that Flamesy tried to make some noise right there. All that matters right now is Vitality get a pistol round in this situation. FaZe still on pistols here. Ooh, what could have been for Rops is also what could have been for Vitality. Another 5v4 on the brink of it. 8 HP, he'll get back with that Deagle, but I mean, he's alone here. You've got 8 health between Vitality, their 10th round win, and this A bomb site. They know what to do with the data, man. You know, like G2. When it's an anti-eco round, they can figure it out. If you don't put enough pressure back in certain situations, they've got you figured out. So FaZe make a blind rotation over towards the A site. Oh! Okay, Rops doesn't Why not? need to see a thing. Why the hell not? But still so much work to do. 
You know, you count your lucky stars with that one. Another smoke in the face as well. Vitality not playing any games, not letting this one slide. They've come over to try to make it painful. I think that's the only thing they can attempt now. Surely not going to be able to win this round. No kits, no armor, no utility. There will be no ninjas. Now they're trying to block off every single exit point. Okay, but Sphinx opens one back up. They aren't ready to go through halls. And the high health players can stay alive in the pit. We're looking for HEs, an extra shot here or there. Have one USP ding. Yeah, exactly. Would have brought somebody down, but it is four up and the board swept by FaZe. They're so good right now, man. Vitality are so good right now. There was a moment in this game. You know, it's crazy because like FaZe kind of approached this like they were the underdog in that first half, right? They were doing Kerrigan's doing art stuff, right? That was sort of a Furia approach to that first half. And uh, well, it did catch him off a few times. We'll give him that. But that's, um, that's, that's way in the rear view now. That's the open highway for Vitality. At least um, before it gets too desperate, we can at least entertain this round. CT side, first buy coming in for FaZe. If there's anything to say about them in CS2, they've made more comebacks than anybody else. And I'd love to know their overtime win percentage, because probably 100, <laughs> based on the games that we've seen. Man, range of 1 and 12, looking for a much better CT side. Already at this event, he has had disastrous opening halves, only to bring back the performance. Mm. But that was switching to the T side of Anubis, particularly. And Nuke as well. Mm -hmm. That's right. Bit of a different story here. Luckily for him, he, you know, Kerrigan tries to pick up the entry fragging instead. And while it did have its moments of glory, Rain will be looking back on this opening map with nothing but frustration. Unless he turns it around now. Flash to Rops, gets him off his position. To evacuate that fast leaves a huge gap for Vitality to just slide straight through. Brokey, beautiful okay. lineup, easy does it. Then a peek off of the short side, but that end gets punished. It's Rops in the depths of the site, regaining vision, but losing his head. As Flames knocks him out. Oh man, that's it, that's all they get. They die in lane, they die on site. It's great utility pressure, right? The flashbangs coming out from Vitality. Yeah, it's incredible for them. I'm literally cheering for FaZe just to make this game closer. This is their first rifle in the second half. And it falls completely flat. No utility to go for this. Vitality will take to 11 now. Two rounds away from closing out Inferno. And this is another series where Anubis wasn't the map pick here of Vitality. It was floated into a ban from FaZe, so it won't be seen at all. And, uh, well, just goes to show you, they don't need Anubis, even though they're on a five-map win streak on that map. If I remember correctly, they still, they still have that, they still have that same ability on Inferno. It's only one event ago we go to Vertigo as the opening map instead. Vitality's map pick back at the Blast Fall Finals. Sure enough, total blowout to the favor of Vitality. FaZe try to wiggle away from it. Uh, met by a similar situation. I was wondering when production was going to do that. Yeah, felt like a matter it's of time. Coming, huh? yeah. Yep, there goes the bus. Let's <laughs> throw him under it. <laughs> That's tough. But yeah, it is funny. Like there is a situ there is a thing where Rain has just had like a abysmal first half and a great second half. It does have to do with the map and side um, in the situ in the situation, as you pointed out. Like he probably should have already been doing a bit better, and that's why I mean it was so disjointed between him and Kerrigan, who should have been the guys going for entries. Like when we saw, you know, the dink on Sphinx at Quad, it was Rain into Kerrigan trading it out, but there was less of a tag team in this match overall. We might end on a solid note here if FaZe don't get something. <laughs> Rain just can't buy a real chance. He's in the background behind Frozen, and he's dropped to 40 health. The two of them trying to apply enough pressure to keep Vitality at bay. What's amazing about these two IGLs, of course, that the conversation around them is they're unmatched right now. These two this year, 
there are people who are somewhat close, but, you know, Kadian and Snappy don't stand to their accomplishments and their consistency. Oh, okay. This is the last thing you need. Oh, oh come on. I heard that flames rise. CT peek through and oh, oh, oh. wild blind. He goes ahead and slams down another. Nasty on the entry, a jumping AK headshot. They're already up 11-4, and he hits him while in the sky. You're kidding. You know, I'd feel bad if FaZe didn't get so many crazy shots just to kick this game off in Apex. Well, he wants in on the action. Oh, he's been so sharp as well. Wow. The flames he taken to the top of the scoreboard for Vitality on a succulent double entry. And, and that conversation, you know, Apex and, and Kerrigan, something Kerrigan is famous for. Every time he gets a new player, they, they do well right away, whether it's a stand-in or a new addition. And it has been great. Of course, he's in a grand final right now with Frozen, of course. His former teammate, to be fair, but still a new system and new roles for him. Apex has done that this year more than once. That's the thing, right? We, we sit here and praise Kerrigan for his greatness and his ability to integrate and apparently his ability to take a couple players with him. Mm. But Apex is an in-game leader now. Not the entry fragger we once knew. Yes. An in-game leader looking to leave a mark on CS2 without Sonic behind him. Xtaz comes back, and this would be the third roster that Apex has taken to a trophy lift. He already has. Mm -hmm. You know, that's in his back pocket. To do it twice with Mezzi in their first two events? Come on. Yeah, something has to be said about that. I mean, again, it's about shedding this image of him as this entry that we knew for f so many years in CSGO. I'm sure he himself struggled with that. This time Frozen opens up. We put Apex on a pedestal, but oh no. Oh, it's at least brought back, but Mezzi taking Zywu out of the round. He's got some slack to pick up beyond it. And so this one gets a little wonky. Mezzi looking human. If he wants to pass Zywu, he's got to make sure he doesn't get any more kills. <laughs> Zywu looking for his... Is it 18th consecutive? 18th MVP. God. The only player to get MVPs in Vitality's go. history. Reigns first multi-kill round of the entire map. Banana gets shut down for once. And Spinks Oof. falls okay. victim to the instant peak from Rain. Is that a sign of things to come? Wow, for dignity here, FaZe. Very nice and a good opening from, from Frozen. We can take it one round at a time because it's FaZe. You never know. Every time they do it, it seems like it's harder than the last time. It's not going to happen again, but... All right. Go to Counter-Strike and Bowling is Mezzi. Just don't look at him. Just don't look at him. <laughs> Said there can only be one king. No eye contact, and maybe he'll forget. We saw Vitality take 10 rounds in a row versus Navi. That was nine against Faze in the middle of the half. Oh! Just like that! What? Simply the best. On an AK, Zywu comes oh. in with three. And it doesn't matter how great you may be, Mezzi, trying to put forth his best performance in the Vitality jersey. You will forever be in the shadow of the greatness that Thanks. is Zywu. Spinks here to close it. And that is the reality of playing versus Vitality. Every single time you were against the most consistent four easy headshots for Zywu and another easy opening map for Vitality in this head-to-head. -head. Looking to take the crown of CS2 off the head of FaZe and place it on their own 13 rounds away from being the Abu Dhabi Grand Champs. V for victory on Vitality's map pick as the black and yellow squad look to speed run yet another grand final. That was a commanding start to this grand final here in Abu Dhabi. And it's only poetic, it's only perfect that it ends out on the final round, Machu, with a Zywu 4K because this man was such a beast on this map of Inferno. It feels like every year we get to find some of these Zywu banana plays where he just bulldozers his way through, double entry with the AK, adds a third one, closes it. 
listen, this was a team effort on the Vitality side. There were way more than just one player on the server, but I will put it out there. Every single time it looked like FaZe were on the brink of breaking Vitality or winning that round, it's Zywo who stepped up. The anti-clutch, 1v3 in the post by, 1v2 against Kerrigan as well, triple kill with the AWP. He played exactly the way he was supposed to. Beyond that, this was a game of adaptations for Vitality. We saw that the game plan was obvious from FaZe early on, that they wanted to hammer that B site, that's why they picked that T side. And lo and behold, as always, Vitality come up with the solution just a few rounds in. It doesn't take them long to realize, hey, there's a problem with us right now on the map. So they switch up some of the positions, they play a little bit different towards A, towards B, and that's all they need to do. I'm not gonna lie, it wasn't the most, you know, close game, it wasn't the most entertaining game in By terms no of, means. of scoreline, but the game in the beginning was quite interesting, and I think we should go back to watch some mm. of the rounds in the beginning of that game, because FaZe didn't win the pistol, but they kept on forcing and forcing and forcing and trying to push the issue. They wanted to make sure that Vitality could never rest on their laurels, they could not get off to a good start. You see them running out of spawn here in the second round, of course, a full force by coming in. Not too big of a surprise for FaZe Clan right here. We then move on to the following round, they lost that one, again, coming out of T-Spawn, a full force buy, they have the money to do it. Again, at the score 3-0, they do it. And this is the round where it finally worked out yes. for Face Clan. And that was some of the only rounds they were able to get. They succeeded winning this round. And as you can see on the score distribution right here, they banged off four rounds in a row based on that. And I thought, okay, at 4-3 for Face Clan, we have a game on our hands. Because as you said, yeah. Maui, they were hammering on that B bomb side. They didn't allow Face, or sorry, they didn't allow Vitality to get off to a good start. But apart from those four rounds in a row, they got nothing to offer. It's a story of adapting and overcoming, and it's exactly what we saw from Vitality just yesterday versus Na'Vi. They made them sweat, they can obviously see holes in Vitality's defense, but it's how they overcome them and how they adapt their game plan to be suiting what FaZe is throwing at them, right? Yeah, definitely. And it's twofold. One fold is obviously strategically you have to find a solution. That's what Ma'Vi's talking about. Hey, when we play back defensively to both of us, Flames and Apex, it's not working. We're being abused. What can we do? We can be a little bit more aggressive. We can ask for a third player to be up there. We can bring Zywoo sometimes. But it's also a story of just warming up individually. If yes. you look at the cross replacement and the shots that Flamesy was firing at the very beginning, this was a rough entry, a rough start to the grand final. He missed a couple of shots. The 50-50 duels were not going his favor. He was very much wide swinging outside of the cross and then he steps up and then suddenly the setup makes more sense. Flames has, I, I guess, I don't even know if it's been on record, but we know that he's been sick. He's yeah. been sick at this event. He hasn't, I, I don't know whether it's cold or whatever, but either way, it does seem like he's been slow to start. This isn't the first time I've seen it, but boy, did he warm up into it, man. He, the, the T side entries that he was finding were just disgusting. And the way that actually, once he started to find himself on the CT side too, he started to put down some better defenses. His utility protocols look better. And also he started just calling his own number outright. That, that way that he just jumped over half wall, killing the player on the other side of it, like, what, what, what is that? Like, that's that seems like a play you're supposed to be making if you're on FaZe Clan, not on Vitality, but he makes it work. Two grand finals in a row. We praised him against Vitality in Copenhagen on Vertigo for having a monstrous performance at the very first map in the grand final. He's doing it one more time right here. I'm not saying Flame C is a player that steps up in the grand finals, but we're now seeing it two times in a row that he's coming in, he's finding impact despite having a struggle from start. And that's exactly why I like that we saw Spinks hot from the very beginning, because that is one criticism that we had coming into the playoffs of Copenhagen. He was very clearly having a cold start and I love that we get to see some dominance coming in from the very first rounds of this. You're point. absolutely correct and there is this notion of a balance when it comes to the defense and when you're vitality and your weak point, your weak spot is actually the B side, naturally you're going to devote a bit more resources towards B. You're going to try to plug the hole over there, maybe with a third player, maybe you're going to give them some utility. So what it means is that Sphinx has to make moves like this one we've just seen here. He has to take charge and risk a few plays where if he gets caught out, it can be very complicated but I felt like whenever he had to make these moves, he got successful. He allowed Vitality a deep breath, clear top mid, clear bracket, send the defense back to B, and for that, kudos. Spinks's read of the game in this was just phenomenal. To push the archway smoke, to just get that control towards middle, even though he only goes one for one, he gives his team so much information for such an extended stretch of time, and he did that in other positions too. So all in all, Spinks, he seems to be one of those players that late in a round, he's going to make that winning push because yes. so many people just hunker down. They try to play their favorite spot, just lock it down. But Spinks is playing for the team because even if he does die in some of those spots, it gives his team so much knowledge about what's coming in the round. Well, you know what I'm going to say next? Zywoo highlights. Roll them up, baby. We've got three <laughs> certainties in life. Death, taxes, and Zywoo showing up to the server. And boy, oh boy, did he do so from the very offset, Jake? Yeah, I think Matt just said it as well, right? He was finding so much impact. One thing is having a lot of kills on your scoreboard, but every single frag you're seeing is 
at an important moment in the game. Every single frag you're seeing from Sai Ru is dictating the round or dictating the outcome of the round. We didn't see him show up, you know, and hunt a lot of eco frags or get a lot of easy kills. All these are hard fought kills. You see the entry right here. You saw the AWP action as well. You see the entry on Banana with the AK-47. <laughs> oh, it is absolutely ridiculous how good this man is at Counter-Strike. And as I said, coming into this game, in my mind, there's no doubt he's the best Counter-Strike player we've seen the past three years, and it's not even a discussion. Well, we do have to flip the script just for a moment and talk a bit about, you know, the deficiencies of FaZe Khan. It doesn't come down to just one person, but I am going to put the spotlight on Rain. He was very, very slow to be starting into this uh, this series, Maui. Rain had a tough time. I, I didn't see also on top of that, Rops imposing himself in, in any fashion whatsoever. Yeah. Uh, is this going to be one of those Fort Minor highlight reels where it's just Rain and a few kills? Like, I don't, is this even necessary? Trying, you know? This feels a little rude, actually. I think it's, I, I think that's it. I think that's his last kill, right? Um, okay, one more, one more. One that more. is, ah, all right, four, yep. four kills, yeah. Not the, not the start you obviously wanted from Rain. I think that I was, the reason though that he definitely had so much trouble with this one is just that the Vitality defenses kept shifting so much. Mm. When he, if he's the point, if he's the focal point, if he's supposed to be an entry position in these rounds, Zaiwu was meeting him with the op. Sphinx was in an advanced position they didn't expect. There were so many times when he just had to run, try to barrel into a bomb site, and there's just a crossfire between Vitality players. And that's the difference, right? Rain actually ended up with more ADR than Messi in this game, surprisingly enough. 44, Messi 41, but there was no one to bail Rain out of the issues, right? You had Saibu, you had Spinks, you had Apex, all of the players on Vitality firing on all cylinders. As you said, Brokey came alive at a certain moment in the beginning of the game, but apart from that, was nowhere to be found. Same could be said for Rups, same could be said for Kerrigan, who had a couple of good moments when it was 4-4 or 4-3, and then at that point, it was just like the entirety of the face were just missing from the server. It's obviously never down to one player, but it is very problematic that I have more images in mind of Kerrigan catching Zaiwu off guard towards long than actually Rain. And Rain should be this guy. He should be the tip of the spear going out, either fighting Sphinx with a rifle or Zaiwu with an ADP. It's not a great position to be in. But anywho, he never really had these moments and FaZe rely on it. And I think, of course, we're going to talk about the second map, but it is going to be a defining factor. If you have to find strength for FaZe when it comes to Nuke, Rain is named top of the list. Yeah, potential silver linings for FaZe. Obviously, their map pick lays in way. And it's a map where we know they want to be claiming some sweet, sweet revenge over Vitality. That map is going to be Nuke, and it's going down after this.
Vitality standing tall after a commanding Inferno victory, but now a chance for FaZe to be changing the tides. And we know this is one that has Carrigan salivating at the mouth, Jacob, because uh, what happened last time around in that grand final in Copenhagen on this very map? Well, we already concluded, obviously, that FaZe ended up winning the game 13 to 11, but it was a game that was dominated on the T side for both teams right here. Eight rounds went the way of Vitality, seven went the way of FaZe on their respective T-sides. Rain was the guy coming out from FaZe playing a fantastic T-side, posting a 1.71 rating over there. So for Rain to struggle on map number one, now coming into map number two, it is much, much needed that he will show up on that T-side. He's the one that's supposed to open up the mess. As you said, you don't want Kerrigan to be that guy. He can do it occasionally, mm. but you want Rain to consistently show up like he did last time. Definitely. Vitality in Copenhagen try to fight head on. They try to get take the fight to FaZe to Towards outside, and they paid the heavy price. It's saw Wu being committed, Apex being committed, and Rain was on the silo, just shooting headshots left, right, and center. This was a problem for Vitality that they almost couldn't solve if it weren't for Zaiwu. No doubt Carrigan will be coming into this one having looked over that tape and being prepared with a new game plan. So what do you expect FaZe to be pulling out in this one, Maui? Well, obviously, given that they've had a personnel change, Frozen is going to be coming in instead of Twist, and so that could tip the scales in the favor of FaZe. He's taken up, Frozen that is, the spots of Twist. He hasn't actually gotten any of his old spots. He's now, because Rop's got his T-side spot that Frozen used to play, and Rain's still playing that outside yard defensive side. So this is a map for Frozen where he needs to just play in that pack and make sure that he trades off his teammates. We've talked about the teamwork and how it seems pretty good. Well, it needs to be airtight if FaZe want to have a chance to change the story. Speaking of some of the individuals, you guys at home can have your say in our Maersk MVP vote. Follow the link down below and you can select one of these six fine gentlemen to be taking home that title. No bias say you know who I'm going to be voting for, but yeah, make sure you have that say before this map does conclude. Jacob, you like you want to jump in and say maybe some other adaptations that you're hoping FaZe might have brought to this. I one. just hope they I hope Vitality are paying attention because you're right, you know, test Frozen. Test Frozen if he's comfortable in that position. He's playing that inner bomb side, CT side, and that can be hella hot when there's flashes, smokes, grenades flying around you. If Vitality is coming out with a blistering pace, then Frozen better wake up from the get-go. I think Mezzi also will probably be under the spotlight. Yes. We saw that a couple times in Copenhagen, where Kerrigan tried to force the timing. I think FaZe identified that Mezzi had a tendency to leave his position, be a bit more rotate-oriented. That's a gaping hole that could be in the defense right there. So Vitality have to be ready for that, and sometimes just stop them right in there. Well, we are ready to see if FaZe can begin off that redemption arc, and hope lays on the horizon as Nuke is their pick, but it was tricky last time around. So Scrawny, Launders, how do you think this one's going to be going down? All right, folks, it's time to get started, and it might be time to end. This is the second map of the Blast Premier World Final Grand Final between the worlds number one and two. So for potentially one last time, Abu Dhabi, let's get loud! What a wonderful place to end this year with one and two locking horns and with Vitality scaring FaZe to their core after Inferno. That one wasn't even close. Not for more than what felt like three rounds did FaZe even have a hand on this match. But they take it to Nuke. And I think just like the desk allude to, Frozen under a microscope for me. Immediately, they go into the ramp. And we get Saiwu taking a quick glance outer. All the greats love to play outside on Nuke. Zywu, he goes down empty-handed. Welcome to the match, Rain. Mm. Welcome to Grand Finals Sunday. Mezzi has lurked this whole time. Back B site gets an easy pick off. And he's got support not far away as well. Just staying alive oh. here is excellent. The fact he drops a second player even better. Frozen suddenly left alone with no bomb and plenty of time to try and get crazy. Looking at a round like that is the perfect example of why we're seeing such better maps out of Mezzi. You know, he's never had a structure like this. He's never been comfortably in position at clock versus an exec that's coming to him with prophylaxis from the team where he's there early. Hold on, hold on, dude. Two are gushed. They have to, he has to get the bomb. That's the Downstairs, one thing. Downstairs with a low HP player sitting on it. He oh, goes ahead and hold on. This is taking way too long. Thanks. Now the fact that he's also down to 20 HP, only 20 seconds on the clock. Frozen in black and red, looking for gold. 
just barely enough time to make this possible. They layer on top of one another, which means he could still do this! Frozen! Yeah. Oh my god! How? Strikes fear in the hearts of Vitality. One player up, that's it. How did he how, how did he avoid all of those bullets? Did he have an evasion aura? That was ridiculous. And that honestly, in the first in, in the beginning of Inferno, we're seeing some of those shots being missed as well from Vitality, even though they were still winning rounds. That was uh too close for comfort here, but they still are able to win, and they're the team that again before this map started. 13 away from taking the entire thing. So at least Frozen can show some presence, try to scare them a little bit. And yes, uh, Mezzi is representing the UK with that 2K from the clock. The one and only. God knows they waited long enough. Representation on the big stage and a big event for him as well. A little cool back on that first map, but plenty of runway for Mezzi on Nuke. Right now we've got that solo AK on Rops. It's a curious situation. You had them that close, and maybe if these Glocks can give Vitality a false sense of confidence, if Rain could just pop somebody with the Desert Eagle, I mean, it all boils down to the Estonian. And Spinks just barely misses that timing. Now, all of a sudden, Rops looking for the head. And as the MP9 peeks in, he duels versus Rops, who sure enough opens this up. Now the pistols can flood out, and Rops has gone ahead to get a second. One AK and a dream. Oh, it's a vent drop. The rotations are not in place just yet. They were both trying to go up to heaven. There's a chance for a plant and a chance to push as well. They're planning for decon. Rain's on the close wall of the ramp room. This would be a perfect way for FaZe to respond. It's a nice transposition here from Rops to reinforce this setup. He could trade. Just keep Rops covered. Keep Rops in a position to go for trades. It's going to take mighty accuracy. Down goes Rain. Rops gets his third. His other teammate over towards the door. Apex duels with that one. That's info for Rops. Finally, he's dead. Oh. CTs don't need the kit. They get there in time to survive, but close rounds back to back. Yeah, but it's King Mezzi once again to put a stamp on things. That's a 10 second stick, and he is just such a part of the game right now. When we talk about the fall finals, again, I'll say it, he got his ass carried. Coming into world finals, best player on Vitality before this grand final started. Actually, so close. It was it's still his eye. We would edge him out slightly in terms of rating. You could be the judge who you think was better, but the fact of the matter is, he's already showing that he's no longer nervous. He's more well prepared. He's ready for what Vitality want for him. But still a glimpse of what could be out of phase. I feel like that's what we had back on Inferno as well. Close rounds to start, phase breakthrough, and then all of a sudden, Vitality just get their hands on him. Yeah, the worrying part for me was the lack of sustainable rounds. Remember to vote for your Maersk MVP at Blast TV. That's actually going to be a tough one this, yeah, this time. We'll, we'll see how this uh, final continues to play out. It is definitely a fluid situation. When it comes to the ratings, Zaiwu and Mezzi are hip to hip right now. Zaiwu, no doubt, putting space between them on that first map. Guns in for phase on the cross. Well timed nade, but it doesn't actually blow open the smoke. That one will. And there's a player down here in Mezzi. Oh, nice headshot. Oh my god, the push forward? <laughs> he goes up the stairs? Oh my god. That's not how that's supposed to work. Yeah, so we got so you could control outside presence, but low numbers. Apex does not want to give that away. Because positionally, phase are okay. Crossing a minute. They have both options with secret and lobby still intact. Flames doesn't even have to burn his smoke too early. And how does he transpose? Now, normals. Setup is to jump up to clock. Are we looking for any rotations? Look at the CTs right now. They're top sight. Zywoo's in the open. Rob sees him. And that's nothing for Zywoo on the A hold. The but a missed Molotov misses. to heaven. Just let Apex take a quick glimpse. We've still got players downstairs. So Flames is going to have to try to find a way up then. There's a little delay here because Apex is trying to go back around for the main wrap where a smoke grenade's about to go down. Then that molly does find its mark up in heaven, which means Sphinx has been deterred for a little while. Bomb's ticking quick and Flames the only kid. Sphinx comes out from heaven, gets his. Brokey instant trade from behind the fence. Nice crossfire with Rob there towards Hut. Oh! Uh, headshot on top to seal the deal. It's about time we got a little Rob's. And that Quiet. was... that Quiet was, on Inferno. That was that 
you know, very careful play coming out into upper sight. He saw the gun model from Zaiwu inside of heaven playing up here in fur from the hut. And then Brokey got the trade after he shot a little bit. Props is a king of CS2, but it feels like more of an interim king as Zaiwu's back. If FaZe want the series, they need Rops. Rops hands down, FaZe's highest rated player on Nuke specifically. So it feels like the odds are we could get him, and there it is. Opening headshot towards ramp. Rops establishing 5v4 is faster than FaZe could ever get back on Inferno, but a well-timed peak from Apex as he just kept his head down. Zywoo's Desert Eagle starts to miss shots, though, so the pistols crumble under the weight of the follow-up into the ramp room in phase, seeming like they've got an open door to be. Okay, another opener, as you pointed out. And when we talk about nuke teams, again, it's, it's, it's a litmus test for all the top teams and all the top operas in the world. When we talk about 2021, it was Na'Vi, it was simple. When we talk about 2022, it was phase, and it was actually more like Rain. You know, even though Brokey can have that impact, it was Rain playing that Nico role outside both sides. And in 2023, it's been Vitality, whether it's CSGO and maybe CS2 as well. That's a lot to stand up to. But FaZe have recent memories where they were the best. They're just trying to get back to that. And that's the thing you pointed out about Rain. Like, he was star of the show at Antwerp. That was the that was the best nuke performance of the entire year. Him in that final at Antwerp. T and CT side. Hell, go back one MVP event. MVP the event. He was making a run for the top-rated phase player at Copenhagen as well. Mm. Up until grand finals. Yeah. Here we are again. Yeah, he's been impressively good, you know, at the new game, which is something that we expected a lot of new players want to see Rops and these types of guys to fly out in front of their competition after sort of learning from them for all these years. Prepping for the chance to pass them. But Rain learned fast. Now he just needs that consistency. A couple missed shots out of Zywoo that round. Could have coupled nicely with Apex's one dig. And th this could be a big half from Rob. So I just want to say the other day when we were talking about Nico putting on a reference game on Nuke, at the exact same time, Rops had almost a mirrored scoreline to Nico. He was slowing down the moments. He was one-tapping a lot of the frags. He was getting a high number of kills. So if it could happen again, it would happen on Nuke. Rain looking to carve a path. There he is. He does it again consistently, these 5v4s. But really nothing matters other than where Sphinx gets up to. Unless apparently Zaiwu with a U... Whoa, wait! Hey. Settle down now. <laughs> Mezzi to the moon. It was all about Sphinx's solo M4, and he didn't even get a piece of the action. This was just a clean, easy upper take out of phase. How is this USP doing all this damage? It's just in the hands of the right man. The other cool thing for FaZe here when we talk about Nuke is Frozen. The fact that, you know, he comes from Mouse, their best Nuke player. So they get to seal that away. Now, of course, Twist was one of the explosive players on the T side for FaZe as well. It's just about Frozen being able to supplant that. Could he pass him is the question. Dude, Saiwu is such a nuisance. <laughs> Finally going down here, but that's still two USP kills. Sphinx versus Rain. Hang on. All's good here for the one rifle of Vitality. And he'll run away to save. That's an important M4 to take into the next round, but it's 3-2 on the start. And it's just, it's looking a little bit more sustainable to me than Inferno was. It, it coming down to Rops is a lobby lurk. <laughs> oh, they want three maps. <laughs> um, yeah, it's less sort of crazy aggressive, catch the timing, push a smoke. These default base round wins out of phase. Oh. Connor hates this play. Let's see if it finally fails. 
It goes unchecked for now. Same path from Rain, though, as last round in oh. front of the red box. He does Zywoo. see it. Ugh. He's going to sniff him out. Now, Sphinx gets some damage in, but on the reload, he gets pushed. Rops just barrels out of hut with a teammate and the Heaven oh. player's dead. Nicely tethered there between Brokey, Rops, and Kerrigan. Yeah, crank that pace, FaZe. They thought spraying on the close squeaky smoke was going to be enough to deter it, but FaZe just slip right in with an electric pace here in round six. They overtake the A site. Wow, that was pretty unexpected. Just paying attention to the nades that were going down outside. That's the first layer of complication that Ker Kerrigan has added to the calling so far. It's a fast attack, but it feels like a slow one. And so when Zaiwu gets his kill, you think there's going to be a moment of relief. But I think what happens is a full mag of ammo gets sprayed into Squeaky. The reload happens, and then they, s they jump on it immediately. They say, okay, start throwing your grenades. We need to get out there. Maybe those two moments coalesce perfectly. Maybe they knew they could elicit the spam. Either way, it's a perfect punish. And thank goodness we got a real match now. You say that, but also the start of Inferno kind of felt similar. And next has just took a pause for Vitality, so we'll see what the answer is. You know, what Sphinx would have done to have kept a few bullets maybe in that mag, but being full dry, just cowering behind boxes and hope, hoping he went unchecked. Yeah, and post Sonic Vitality looks great. Talking about Xtas coming onto the team seems perfectly fine going one for one at events right. alongside Mezzi, looking for the two for two. We credit Apex, we can also credit him. That's the thing is when Zonic was playing behind Apex, you know, we talk about integrating new faces. Well, you had Zonic to do it as well. Zonic who had so much experience with Dupree, with Magis, you know, they came as a core. And it just elevated vitality. But this, this is Apex and his old right-hand man. Potentially back-to-back -back trophy lifts with Mezzi. UK CS out of nowhere. But... Yeah, this is almost Operation Parasite, the way that they slowly weeded out the Danes. Yeah, get him out. Mm. For now, though, it's very much phase. Taking vitality back to reality. Gonna get more pressure on the A floor. Zaiwu and Mezzi are so ready to go. Yeah. They get some that damage as well. That was well timed by Flamesy, softening up a player that is an unconfirmed drop to the lower site. There is nobody down there. They aren't None ready. at all for Vitality. They don't know that he's crossed and the vent drop happens. Wow. Oh, and no punishment either. Now it will happen, sure enough. Okay. Sphinx not gonna let Brokey get away. Zaiwu remains posted. But again, nobody downstairs. Oh my god, they successfully opened the door without anybody knowing. Now the push forward can cap it, but you hear the flicker of the scope and the first kill comes down. Kerrigan, nice. two frags, and they can join hands now with Rops. He's inside of the ramp. And the rotator's gonna have no idea. He's lurking. There's no idea for the ramp player. Apex is already dead. Only flings to come out with more. How did they pull that off? That's the best round so far called here from Kerrigan with his kills in the mix. This is the perfect balance between what we saw in Inferno and what we're getting now. They're getting the map control. They're getting the slight lurks. They're not over committing. And the players who are entering are still with the pack. And Kerrigan finds the perfect timing. And that was Brokey with an option, Rops with an option getting lower, and Kerrigan with an option. So multiple points at which if they failed, they'd still have a chance of playing. That's what you want to see out of phase. Rops doing exactly what he does best, adding himself to the equation, but doing it silently with the element of surprise. It still banks on Kerrigan getting those two kills, though. Pressing into him. Mezzi and Zaiwu. But that's what happens. The phase is IGL. You know, we can call it luck, but that's what happens when you create luck. When you put Brokey in a position to catch someone off a of timing, and you put Kerrigan in a position to catch someone off timing. When a team feels like they've survived one thing, they're not going to expect the second. They're not going to expect the third. And that's where things just come flooding in, and it's no longer ah! Apex smiling and laughing. Because there are expectations for their CT side here on Nuke. Layers and layers on that one. And phase of push vitality back into another haphazard buy. Drops feeling unstoppable at the moment. And sure enough, he's got the sense, but oh, Ooh. didn't know which way to look. Too many options, overwhelming Rops. You're in the right to try to put it on. But this is a round that's actually an anti-eco. Actually, it's an anti-eco. Is this the risk you want to take? 
when you know regular default should win it for you. He just put an AK in Flames' hands. Is this going to be a missed call? Kerrigan starting to pick up the tempo here. CT spotted on the smoke, but we've got a long range angle here from Zaiwu. They lose two players outer. Phase on fire and evening out. Yeah. Uh, more spotted outside. That's massive information. They're going to feel insecure about the fact they don't have lobby. But it's a deagle with Mezzi to try and hold the cross. Oh. Zywu easily shapes Brokey off at flames. It's a one and done. So Rain into the clutch. He posts two kills in an instant. And with a flash wide, he's got time to play this however he damn well chooses. But Zywu has been the end all of so many players. Yeah. Emet on A denied. Inferno wasn't his map, but it's still a great day for oh, Rain. God. But Zaiwu will deny it. The clutch denier. Multiple 1vxs back on Inferno. Posts his first here on Nuke. And until Zaiwu goes down, the job's not done versus Vitality. And that might have been a missed call here. This is Rops lurking out of HUD in a round where it's your opponents who don't have much to play with. They were happy to pick that up. It's also a gun upgrade instantly into a player who has half armor or full armor and a 5v4. We'll see if that's a mistake they can't afford. Oh, do they need to save him? That spread gets big sometimes. He's okay. It fizzles out. Oh, he can punish this now. Yeah. Easy. Flash drops, but it's okay. He's able to exit. And I like that Mezzi gets aggressive as well. Off of the lobby frag, now they've got trophy control, so suddenly... This is how they came back versus G2 as well. They continue to play aggressive, even when they just made the comeback happen. It's how they happened to take Navi back on Inferno. They always play like they're winning. Easy to do when you're the best. Faye's very clearly wary of the possibility here. As he's about to have his hands full, Shadow Advantage, he knows it's coming, he's on high alert, oh. and he tries to take the peak, tries to take the initiative, but now they will flood into the waiting arms of Zaiwu, who misses his shot off the flash, Man, and Rain simultaneously gets downstairs, I mean, he could post up on Vent, so it's gonna have to be Apex. It has to be. His support far off, Frozen comes wide, Apex keeps all his health, Flames picks up the upper kill, and Brokey able to answer back in the bomb site. Rops plays on a classic position. Posted above on full display for any kind of a ramp retake. The CTs aren't coming in. No way. A shot through the doorway. Rops off the top rope. He knows their approach, but until they exit, he can hit them. Zywu the first. Oh. Sphinx, it's a beautiful split between the other two. Yes. And Vitality closed the gap. It's perfect spacing and perfect pacing. That's a beautiful way to make sure they win that 3v1. Rops is on it today. <laughs> and Saiwu hits that blinder through the door. Another good start out of the round from Vitality. Another mistake from FaZe in the first few seconds. It is getting heated once again. They still just keep buying, though. They've earned that at least. Oh my god. I mean, it's man. just that they play like they're winning. The aggression is unbelievable here on all fronts. Now, at least FaZe are already playing outside of lobby, so you'd think Robs will be just hyper-cautious on the approach. He's going to be extremely slow in this situation, and now that there's nades outside, there's so much information gained. I don't think they're expecting another push to come out, and we've got the full clear happening right now. This is so much for Vitality to work with. How cautious can Rops truly be? As Rain tries to be his contrast. Now it can be a scorched earth strategy here outside as they give them space knowing that they are missing some. There is no threat of an upper exec right now. We've got Frozen just tucked behind Unbreakable. We got Rain on the golden gates of heaven. Wow. Nobody moving. Everybody oh, has so this, many different positions, this, but nobody wants to make that final step. This is an incredibly high-level position right now. The passive setup, but a lot of information gained. Who gets nervous first? This is a game of chess. Rain drops, makes sound, and Mezzi's on high alerts. Easy pickup for Mezzi from the corner. 
Frozen is up next, and he's got his name again. Now the threat of that A hit is real, but in reality, we've got Bomb downstairs. And Spink still committing to inside of Lobby. You've got Cyber in the back corner, peeking wide, oh. dropping bodies as he does one after another. And with Decon swung, now the T's know that there's two down here. Zywoo's gonna try to close that distance into Brody. He's coming for it. Battle the Ops, he shuts the door in his face, holds the trigger, T's cannot what? get You are not allowed to cross this line. No time, no round, we're tied. Oh my god, from Zywoo, the way he controlled that, him opening that door. He could have won that staying outside. He's trying to take it to the next level and doing it live. Zaiwu with a little ego wow. is something I have dreamed of. Oh, wow. He waited five years into his career when he already got number one twice. That's the way to do it. That's... That is something different. <clears throat> Called out for one bad CS2 event, and now we get this? He said it himself, he wanted to show a little ego, wanted to play with a little swagger in his step to prove it. Undeniable, unshakable, immovable on B. Everyone had an excuse if they wanted to coming Look into in CS2. In he decided to learn. He spent. He said he spent every Look at day. This. It's, it's so ridiculous from this side of the door. <laughs> I've never seen that before. The one door opening that little into the shot. It's nonsense. Nice. He can barely believe it. <laughs> and they go in again. Why not? Up the ladder he goes. Oh my god, this is a big blind spot right here. But it's going to take time to get onto Silo silently. Every round, Sphinx has learned so much. Apex gets one frag. Sphinx still Easy. goes unnoticed. Everybody's chipping in. Robs has to activate inside lobby, so now that just reopens the possibility of Sphinx, who's going to be coming in from T-spawn. And there's no way Robs would see this coming. At least Robs has been able to get beyond his initial point. So suddenly Vitality are kind of scratching their heads. Ro Where Robs. the hell did Robs get off to? Robs is literally looking for him right now. He's literally looking for the guy on top site, trying to figure out when he's going to finally peek. And Sphinx decides to say, screw it. Let Rops go. Let me go clear outside. Yeah, he's played this perfectly. I mean, what can you say? It's going to be an easy shot to the back of Brokey's brain. It's going to be bombed down outer. And it's going to be Rops in a disastrous position here in round 11. He tried his damnedest. 13th frag on the round as he exited into the A site without one kill. And he's looking for something else. Nothing to tug on. Yes, and he's finally got that info. Oh, wow. Guess he had pushed Hut. And Rops decided to hold it one way. Sphinx goes in again because he wasn't spotted last time. He ended up looking like the ramp player when he went to trophy side to hold the angle. Still never got spotted. So he had the right to do that again. We look at every single round here on this comeback for Vitality. And it has involved some kind of push, whether it was trophy, through hut, squeaky, or outside. Outside being the least of which, which is the most surprising part. Because that's where the CTs most often try to get their aggro in. What a comeback. You get to see how Apex just leaned back in Garage and then flames on the delay, right? Just, just shaving players off as they try to respond to the first one to shoot. Everyone got flanked this round. Every single person got flanked this round from phase. Outplayed, outpositioned. And now outnumbered when, when we say they have. Count. Better team play, that's what that means. Because even a toddler holding a gun would have got those kills. That's the whole point. They came in behind phase. Three different counts. That's the evidence. Final round for phase to try and take. And it's not even majority guns. CT side that lies ahead, but momentum in the hands of Vitality, the confidence, the team play, everything in this head-to-head -head just makes you believe that Vitality cannot be bested by FaZe. Outside of Sydney, the one-off in 2023. History states, Vitality are better.
Utility rumbling around Apex. Oh. Kerrigan gets an easy peek into the site. Rain. Yield. Best Apex. That Sphinx is work. stuck in the corner. He's got a teammate inside of the hut. But Flames take some damage. Luckily here for Vitality, it's Rops on only 9 HP. Oh! oh. But that 9 health makes a world of difference. Oh. Barrel spotted. And Zywoo's still in the mix. And we always say it. As long as Zywoo's alive, then Vitality's chance right there with him. Nade to the wrong mark. Rob's up top. He's hiding with his head tucked down. Just trying to buy as much time as possible. Both these CTs on the approach with kits. And Zaiwu, aware of the possibility. Flamesy just down beneath him. Rob's he can't manage. Zaiwu looking for yet another clutch. I think a fourth in this series. As Brokey's wounded and just on the deagle. Zaiwu trying to press no. him down. Finds his kill, but needs to find the bomb. It comes down to a matter of seconds, but Vitality, sure enough, post the seventh on the defense. I would ask if the map is in the competitive pool. Yeah, yeah, sure. Is, is it not possible not to be there? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, shit. It so, is. Oh, where are, where are we going? <laughs> what the fuck? They already fucked up over here. Okay, okay, repeat, repeat, repeat the question. Repeat first the question. question. Okay. It's the map in competitive pool. Wait, wait, wait. He other, we already know his is in the pool. No, it's one question. Could have saved that one. So, is it like, wait, how should I, how should I put it? Yeah, was this map being played in 2015? Yes. Yeah, but you need to guess the position as well, no? Yeah, yeah, but we forgot yeah, to, to guess, guess the map, map. <laughs> <laughs> Step by step, bro. <laughs> you have eight questions, good luck. Yeah. Does the map have a window? Like a window map position? Map window. No. Definitely call window. No. no. Ooh, okay, so, so it's one of those two. Bro, just, what is this question? Windows? Yeah. <laughs> what is the call out window. Oh, call out windows. windows. We need to learn within the map still, no? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what, what we mean. mean. <laughs> I'm so confused right now. What, what? So we, are, we, we asked, call it window, you know, yeah. like Mirage window and... Um, Inferno. Inferno win... <laughs> <laughs> There's no window on Inferno win. Yeah? Yeah, that's the problem. Is it Inferno? Yes. Okay, now we get. Now we get. <laughs> that's the question. Now man. we're getting there. Yeah. Is it on A side? No. Okay, so that's mid and B. Yeah. Or second mid or apps. <laughs> <laughs> because you say A side. <laughs> <It's> like... <laughs> is it close to a B side? No. Yeah, oh, yeah maybe uh, Maxi. <laughs> Is it close to mid or, or second mid? Yes. Oof. Okay. So now bench, Maxi. Like is it tips? Yes. I would say kitchen. Okay, we t okay, we go kitchen for bridge and kitchen. Okay, is it uh, bridge? No. Is it kitchen? The name is not kitchen, but kind of yes. It's called living room. Okay, yeah, so that's okay, what we call okay. kitchen. Hey, 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 oh, we got on the same page. <laughs> Woo. So we dive back into map two of the grand finals, the final tier one match of 2023. And we thought maybe this one could get close. FaZe had it again, a streak of round wins somewhere in the middle of a half only to be answered and deterred by Vitality. Yes. Now to set this up, at least we got Rops 15-9, okay? They lose a little bit of a lead, but that was a T side Rops. CD mm -hmm. side is where he gets the highlights inside of ramp. So that's one position that'll be thoroughly strengthened here for FaZe Clan as they attempt to make that CT side road back to a map three. Now let's see what Zywu can do. He's leading the charge into the ramp. We've got dual Berettas in the pocket. Brokey shuts him down, but then it gets away from him. He's got a teammate trying to help him. Sure enough, tear him up. They put their players in position 
and they shred Vitality in the pistol. Yeah, it was a nice round out of Brokey and a good hold overall, but more importantly, it was good to reinforce ramp. It was a good counterplay. This is like when I credit G2 for having such good CT setup for the T attack that's coming in. They always have a good read of what a team is going to try versus them. Faye show that off right now. Rops goes out right away, and they still have reinforcements. They're ready for that. Time to phase to show us what they're made of now. This round's to tie. I feel like this is a half they should be confident in. Again, banking on the Rop plays. And uh, Rain can definitely go from zero to hero on CT side, but double swing from the pistols. He's dead. Oh, careful. Oh, man. You're be playing fire. Careful. What? Be He's careful. Oh, Kerrigan. A taste of his own medicine. The trade back, but that's two players left. One spotted now. They can't afford this. Man. They, it's they were, got to be recovered by Robs. Oh, they were both known inside of hell. Robs down to 20 HP. They're going to need a savior. And Robs continues to be aggressive. Brokey's going deep into the lobby to make oh. sure that one's clear. Robs falls down beneath. It's Tech Nines and Deagles out of Vitality. It was a chance for FaZe. They look so... Happy with that ramp hold. Man, mistake outside. I mean, I want to say mistake outside. Mechanical failure outside Raw from Rain. They they need him to farm on CT side. He's going to be solo. He's a mercenary for their CT side. His individual level matters a ton, especially on Nuke. And that was two pistols to take him out, swinging through a smoke. It's going to happen. It just can't happen right now. Brokey doesn't even have a chance to bring this one back. So just when you thought they're going to split pistols for momentum, CT side, Vitality, answer quick. Despite this, it would still be insane if Vitality could be, were able to pull this out on a T side round. Apex, on T side rounds. Frozen alone. in the vents. <laughs> That's payback, honestly, for what Kerrigan was doing on Inferno. Yeah, except for this payback comes at the perfect moment. I feel like this one hurts more. Down a map, up a pistol only to have it taken away from you. And Brokey could very well die here. There's SMGs to lose if you're Vitality. Oh! And they don't even lose another piece. Brokey peeks into the stream of 9mm. That's another big upgrade. And we have Vitality to the two-round lead, just instantly vacuuming all the momentum. They're playing with house money right now. They've got two M4s and a FAMAS here on T-side. A massive steal back. They'll barely have to make an investment to finish off their buy. Faze are going to need more than just ideas to be able to pull this out. They have to raise their floor. It can't be Rops trying to be a highlight machine alone. He is only responsible for ramp. I mean, there are positions that are more important than others, and ramp depends on the type of map you get, but outside is always going to be incredibly important. That's why rain is always going to be key. And he was non-existent back on Inferno. And people aren't just going to switch soft spots based on form. You know what I mean? So you can't just pray they go into your best player. He's got to step it up. Stepping forward is Brokey's 5-7. But Zaiwu flipping Frozen. It's desperate for FaZe. It was always going to be on the Force Buy. It really feels like it's all about these pistols just serving up a distraction long enough for Robs to come out miraculously with that MP9. But Vitality, they're not going to make the same mistake. They're not going to step on this landmine. They'll just wait. Yeah, they are looking to be persistent, but at their own pace. They have the utility to do exactly this. But again, the closer they get to that vent, the closer they get to Robs. He swings out with the SMG, but he can't track the second. It's Flames to make a difference, oh. and Apex to close it. Vitality, more of a distance between them and FaZe. Oh my god, and you can see why Apex is laughing in that first half. It doesn't even, it never feels too late for him, I don't think. Nine rounds in the lead here. And phase with that investment means an even weaker buy to defend against double digits. What have they got? The fall finals, it felt like phase got five rounds. This is already looking a little bit better when we kicked off Inferno and Nuke. But when we look back on the scoreline of Inferno, it was almost as bad straight up as the fall final. That game was supposed to be close. Pimp thought FaZe were going to literally take this one. And I can understand why. The revenge. Playing him in a rematch after the form that they've shown before. Okay. An interesting turn of events with just vanilla pistols. There's a Zeus in play. 
And Apex oh. getting dangerously close, but he will go ahead and reopen this A site. Pressure was mounting. He punctures through. Let's a little air out of FaZe's tires, as it always should have been with USPs. Caught out by the MAC-10 of Zaiwu as well, so it's extra money. And a 10th round posted by Vitality. Vitality's map picks, back-to-back -back series, just go down so smooth. They didn't even need Anubis in the veto to feel comfortable. Crazy to say. At least in Copenhagen, the second map, Nuke again. FaZe able to push it all the way. 13-11 was the final score, so it felt like, you know, just, just a little more, and we could have gone all three. FaZe could have had a better chance. One event later, and we have Mezzi that much higher up on the scoreboards. Implemented better by Apex and Xtaz. And if they can just continue to grow the gap between what's supposed to be CS2's number one, they end this year with a statement. Yeah. And this is Zaiwu now. Two maps. Amazing performances so far back to back from Zaiwu in this final to put a meter stick between him and Mezzi, who was right there. I mean, he doesn't even know what a meter is, right? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> the yard between him and Mezzi, and this is for his potential 18th MVP here. Winning tournaments, every single event for Vitality, being the MVP, getting MVPs for events they didn't even win, being one away if he gets this one from the Vice in terms of MVPs in his career. Born too late to surpass simple. Pimp made it clear. Time was against Zaiwu and CSGO. CS2. Yeah. His goal is no longer to be the best player in CSGO. That chapter is closed. That conversation is finished. His goal is to be the best Counter-Strike player of all time. Right now, making it look easy. Pros unable to get downstairs. At the very least, you've got Zaiwu on 30 health. Make your life a little easier. Wound him early on, on the cross. But it is going to bank very much on Frozen doing something here. A jump spot to just get information. It would prioritize Rops coming down the ramp. Frozen sees two. And he just wants to stay alive as he dive bombs the site itself. Double door swung. And Zaiwu on the hunt for his support. When and where does it come from? All the while, Apex starts to take a glance up towards upper. Brokey's going to be out in the open, but he has a teammate towards Hut and another one on main. It's Apex just playing with him a little bit. Flames has been bested on the one of three entries, and so suddenly this A site looks rock solid. Okay, a full denial. No chance here for Zaiwu. That's it. This round's been stomped out. Every lurk stopped. It got a little bit fishy, a little bit scary there for FaZe. They didn't know exactly where everything was coming, but every single individual put up theirs. Rain with two. Rain on 12 now. That's what it's going to take. Every single one of the phase members to cool off Zaiwu. Now he has support and he has throughout the event, but he is still just above the else. There is no other. That one looks solid. It's great positioning. No panic out of Frozen as well. Ooh, Flamesy softening himself up. Dying to the first bullet because of that fall mm. damage. Yeah, true. Making Rain's job yeah, a little you, easier. You, you can't run off. You can't run off that side of Silo anymore in CS2. You could do it more easily when you switch to your knife. Now you need to be at the middle of the Silo in the front. That's something that's changed. Gave away the edge. Right back onto the rooftop is Flames, looking for revenge against Rain. He's trying to puff his chest, but there is that challenge potentially for the Red Cross. This is the perfect starting zone for a CT rifler that wants to have impact, but we have three crossed. Unspotted. Unspotted and for now unheard. Or maybe they caught the tail end of it because Rops is just running downstairs. They just don't have full info on numbers and Rain gets spotted. He's pinned in. This can reveal the setup. Yeah, Rain has to burn utility just to get out here. And Flames can keep him preoccupied. How much worse does this get? We've got one watching for a lobby default. Sphinx. Separate lurks. Can you hide from him? Frozen just gets back. All the while, Kerrigan. He's starting to take some room over towards Trophy, so it's a very proactive one here from FaZe. Kerrigan comes into lobby and gets caught, though. 
Spinks with a great reposition, but that does allow for the double CT setup downstairs in sight. Rops using the silo as cover. Brokey, it's a one no. and Rops gets dinked and Sai would take his head off. Plenty of time as well for this bomb to go down with a double man advantage. Rain, does he try to press the issue? He had a chance if he wanted to with Zaiwu looking the other way, but it feels like far too much of a gamble with Vitality this close to tournament point. He doesn't want to take that risk and it will cost them. Oh, like he was on duty right there, but the cross happened. Nobody was back in hell. There was no Brokey holding it with an op. There was no info right there and they got down lower. They maintained Lurks. Spinks so crafty, changing it up with his Lurks and that's why he, for me, has been the Lurker of the year. Looking to shut it all down, too. Frozen's gun hits the ground. For me, even over Rops this year, you know, a lot of the Lurkers this year have made strides, massive strides. Blame F has made massive strides. Rops has become more than just a Lurker, in my opinion. Sphinx is staying more traditional with the role and yet being so creative with it. So hard to catch. And, you know, everybody's watching his demos to figure out which play style he's going to bring out. But he has brought massive consistency and a resurgence back to a role that a lot of people thought was going to fall out of favor completely. With the way that people have been studying the game in modern CS, it feels like, oh, it was impossible to do what Get Right did back in 2013. Spinks has been able to find a way to do it again over long periods of time, lots of LAN events. Minimal time to go back into the workshop and figure out a new way to play. Same maps, okay, in CS2. They just look a little different. We go, we go back to Vitality CT side when they were getting squeezed. Felt like they followed through with all of the plays into Lobby, right? Playing as if they were winning, and then eventually they started to. Well, Frozen taking that step out from Hut, he almost caught Spinks. Fell back, let Kerrigan take it instead. There wasn't even a second player there. It's not mm. like Frozen was freed up to do anything else. He was just playing an A site. No trade potential as Kerrigan followed through. And when it comes down to taking Vitality out of this head-to-head, -head, Devil's in the details. It's gonna be a fast one now. Okay. Spinks, a total contrast to the previous round. Yeah, they tried to get him on the vent drop. While the pressure comes outside, Bomb still left back, so they were just looking for map control. But they get a little more than that. There's no eyes out here whatsoever. No Warden in the watchtower. No op on Brokey. But they have to make something of this. The 5v4s, the opening kills, they have been far and few between for FaZe Clan. Can he pop up? Will Let's he be able to- away. He's down to 43. Oh, now they're getting tied up. There's two pieces of resources there. The Lurk continues to build. Oh, but Brokey, good awareness. Yeah. That, that was good awareness. They had no idea he was out there. Just wary of the possibility. Kerrigan sits atop the door in a comfortable 5v3. Mezzi's going to clear it. What? Is a site open? Because you've got another player wrapping around oh! in heaven. And Zywoo. I mean, it's one thing to lose the 4v5, but this was three players left for Vitality. And they get heaven control. And a Molotov down into vent. That's going to deter Rob for the time being. No. As he gets his. He keeps going. That pre-clear. That was supposed to be one free one for Kerrigan. He Fight. gets exposed. A little bit of spam damage on the vent. But Rain, it feels so desperate, and we've already seen FaZe just sulk away from these kinds of retakes because it doesn't feel like they can do this. Yeah, they're broke, they have it no Molotov. It doesn't feel like they can stop them because Vitality, in a 3v5, crack open the A site like it's nothing. Here they are on championship point after this round, and another beautiful default showing a lot of variety with their attacks. Slow, fast, getting away, getting into secret, and countering this particular defense. That involved double secret, and this is 4v5, with Sphinx dying first. 3v5. 3v5. They also lost Apex as he tried to push ramp. They lost the oh, other half right. of the exec. All they had was three players hot. Oh my god. And we were sat, in there, sat there praising Kerrigan. Instead, he is the first link to fall inside of the A site, off of the doorway. Mezzi just steps ahead. Trying to catch up to Zaiwu, but I mean, Zaiwu is simply the best. Let's 21 and 10. <laughs> Never stop believing. The embodiment Never of stop phase. believing. Drink that Kool Aid. They're going to look out at you. You give them the energy, they will absorb it.
but it just does feel like Vitality are untouchable. It really does feel like they're just on a different level. I mean, I told you last night, I thought that this was going to be the same thing as the, as the fall final. I thought Vitality are going to show us how far ahead they are of every other team. And when the game started, I was like, okay, FaZe are bringing something a little bit different. Maybe things change, but no, it, it, it looks like it is that result. We've got three MP9s to defend the whole tournament. That's all that's left. You know, nobody else even comes close. But in the biggest moment, Zaiwu yet again in the spotlight shines. Well, wow, over 150 damage done right there with the MP9. That's not small. No kills, but that sets up the other smaller guns, right? That makes uh, some of these one-shot kills for the shotgun on the map. Yeah, that shotgun just sitting over towards the ramp and hoping they run into him. Not going to be the case. It's a great call for Vitality to just use the distance, use the gap, and honestly, keep abusing range. Slow oh. series, and he loses his head to flames. <sighs> Zaiwu has an abundance of teammates nowadays to also bank on. Mezzi right behind him coming into the Grand Finals. Apex looking like he has just ran back years of lackluster fragging. And Apex has found a route into the A site just like that, 5v2. Because no matter how hard FaZe tried and no matter how great they looked at the dawn of CS2, their challenger has stepped forth and stomped them out, not once, but seemingly twice. The bane of Kerrigan's existence as it felt like they were just gonna run away with CS2. Sphinx on full HP, ready inside of main. There is not a damn thing that FaZe can do. Brokey with an auto shoddy. It reeks of desperation and the greatness that Vitality bring to the server yet again. They've done it. That's the World Final, the Ball Final, Gamers 8, Paris, and Rio all in one year. Vitality with Apex and three different members, three different teams, and have proved it over and over again. Proving it this time as well without Zonic, right? Without the Danes, without some of the most decorated Astralis players of all time, because it felt like maybe that's what propped up Apex. It felt like he had shoulders to lean on, but this one, this one's his. Upcoming fraggers, unproven entities, and a string of events to be proud of in 2023. An unbelievably difficult last tournament of the year and the world number one and two going again at it in the grand finals. What's wild, Mo, is that this is number one and two, but the gap between them feels immense. We saw incredibly well-rounded Counter-Strike, perfectly polished, the pearls of Abu Dhabi, FaZe Clan. They are indeed at the tail end of 2023, your Blast World Finals Grand Champion! Vitality have done it once again. This time the world final trophy is theirs. And Extaz, this seems to be quite a nice reunion for you, mate. What a time to come back. How does this one feel? Yeah, it's amazing. It's the best start uh, possible, right? I just want to say something. Stop saying uh, you have the best in game leader, blah, blah. Apex is the best in game leader in the world. No contest at all. Thank you. Now, Spinks, you joined this team 
you come and take the major, you come to see the dominance, you start to see this all go the way through. But here, you've done it now, back-to-back -back events with another new teammate in here. Does it feel much different? Uh, actually, no. The team, uh, <laughs> the team feels really same. We keep the important rules we had in the uh, all-day roster, and I think this is the key for us to succeed. And I think we have a great captain, we have a great staff behind us, and uh, that's the reason we can succeed so fast with such a new team. Now, Apex, I want to ask you, mate, you have a long year, you give a lot of energy, you give a lot of emotion, but you still don't seem tired. How are you feeling? I'm feeling great, mate. When you win, it's most likely pretty easy, not gonna lie. The year has been crazy. We won almost half of the tournament we made. I can tell you we had a lot of struggle during the year, changing two players twice. Having the coach leaving us and having some rough tournament like EPL uh, finals and uh, and Sydney, there. But we always came back because we believe so much in this team. And I'm so proud of everyone having Remy back. He did, I really want one, to win one major together because he deserves that. So that's going to be the, the main goal next year. And for the, for the British, what a better way to enter. <laughs> What a better way to, to enter in a, in, a, in a tier one team because, yeah, I mean, for before I think it was tier one, tier two, it was a bit between. So I think it's, it's just amazing the journey we have and for many more. But thank you for 2023, vitality year, vitality year for sure. I think we agree with that. It was definitely the year of vitality and it was also the year of you, Zaiwu. You came through, you said about playing with a bit more of an ego, right? We all read that quote, we all saw it. We saw some very stylish no-scopes coming out playing with the doors as well. You almost seem to be having fun with moments like this, mate. How do you do it? I just press E and I'm just closing the door. I don't know, I'm just happening. I just... And most one. Most one, and most one with the no-scope. But yeah, most likely I'm just feeling good, obviously, on system. And do you feel like CS2 is your game? Do you think this is where we see the real legacy of Zywoo? Because we spoke so long about you chasing behind Simple, right? That you quickly started to match up with him, but here you can overtake him. I'm just feeling good on CS2 for me, the same play game for me. <laughs> CSGO, CS2 for me, the same. I'm just feeling good, I'm just playing my game. Obviously at the beginning I have some struggle, like you said, with my ego, but obviously we just need to train, playing, practice, and yeah, after that the feeling is coming. We're gonna see some more ego plays? Of course. Hey, that's what they wanna see. We wanna see some more Zywu ego plays, right? We were calling you Sir Merryman, according to Apex, mate. Um, so you just said about winning a major. Obviously, for you two, that would be very important. But do you think you'd get like a knighthood back in the UK if you win that? Yeah, maybe so. Uh, but it's, uh, it's been a good start, and uh, hopefully we can just keep pushing on. Like uh, Dan said, the goal is the major, and we're going to keep working hard, keep grinding, and uh, we're going to do it, so. And talk to me about this hard work that's going into it, because you mentioned yourself, right, the, the first event you played in Copenhagen, you wanted to give more. This event, we saw you come more alive. Is there more to give inside of you? Yeah, for sure. I think uh, this is just the start for me and, and the team. We, uh, we had these goals to do well at these tournaments, and that's what we've done. And next year is where we build this momentum and just keep going with the confidence. I like it. Keep that momentum going, for sure. Now, Flames, you were feeling ill, but yet you didn't seem to struggle so much, mate. You still get it done. No problems. I mean, if we win when, we are, when I have headache, then uh, I don't doubt this team when I don't. So uh, I think everybody played well. Everybody gave me energy, so it was, it was easy to stay, uh, to stay good. You said you have a headache. You have to sit next to Apex. That can't be easy. <laughs> Maybe that's uh, what causes my headache. So. <laughs> <laughs> nah, nah, I'm, uh, I'm joking, but... Uh, no, sitting next to Apex is also... Uh, it, it also helps you a lot because it gives you a lot of energy, so having a headache next to Apex is the best thing I could ask for. And lifting another trophy certainly is as well. <laughs> a fantastic year here for Vitality. So, Abu Dhabi, Counter-Strike fans of World the World, put some respect on Team Vitality's name because they are not only the best team of 2023, they are your Blast Premier World Final Champions. Team Vitality! Vitality came, Vitality saw, and Vitality conquered. They end 2023 clad in gold, and yet again, dissecting phase in just two maps. We're talking about five trophies with three different rosters just this year alone, Machu. Vitality ending the year as the most decorated team of 2023. The perfect culmination to an incredible year for Vitality, a comprehensive victory over FaZe here on two maps. I don't think any one of us ever entertained the idea that FaZe could 
beat this beast of a team. It, it had everything you would hope to have in a championship caliber team. A superstar level from Zywoo completely taken over by Storm. Glimpses of brilliance from Flames and Sphinx as well. The reads, the calls from Apex, the synergies up there. It is the best team in the world right now. They close this year rightfully. There is no question, there's no dispute. They are the number one team in the world. They have the best in-game leader in the world, and they obviously have the best player in the world. Vitality capping off a monumental year in terms of achievement, winning the only major of the year, winning the world finals, fall finals. So many accolades, so many players that are going to be vaulted up just because this team has it all. A team that has been able to stomach the loss of Metrics. A team that's been able to stomach the loss of Sonic. Two of the greatest players and coaches we've ever seen around in Counter-Strike. They were able to say goodbye and just continue their progress, getting better, getting more dominant. And as we all agree on, of course the best team of 2023, but it's the fashion they win in tonight as well. The dominating face. They didn't even make it a game. It was a dominant fashion from Vitality from start to finish at this tournament. And they fully deserve another victory and I fully deserve another trophy in to the cabinet. It's a story of adapting, overcoming, and lifting the gold at the end of it. And exactly what we saw going down on this map of Nuke, because let's be real, Faze started off this one so, so hot. And yet again, Maui, we see Vitality flipping the coin, flipping the script, and moving the odds in their favor. This was just pure domination. I mean, yes, yes, FaZe had a bit of a, a nice start for themselves, but once the Vitality players began to just feel out the map, feel out themselves, we saw so many players taking individual risks. We saw Mezzi pushing ramp. We saw Sphinx pushing into lobby. We saw Apex taking fights outside. Zywoo moving everywhere across the damn map, and they were always finding success with it. This was such a comprehensive victory, and it is clear as daylight that Vitality had much more and better preparation coming into this one. It seems silly to say that Zywoo is the best player in the world, because we know that for a fact, and he was also the most influential player in this grand final. But fact of the matter is he was able to do it with the rifle on the CT side when needed the most. He's the most versatile player in this game as well. He's good with pistols. He's an AWP player, at least that's what we tend to call him, but he's just as good with the rifle. Don't forget that when he was finally emerging into the scene of Counter-Strike, he preferred to be the rifle. He felt he was better with the rifle, but I guess someone had to pick up the AWP, and then he did it. The fact of the matter is that he was able to dominate and, I guess, in Invite Vitality back into that first half by dominating with the rifle and not necessarily the AWP. He doesn't need all the cash in the bank to make it happen. Give him a rifle, give him some armor, and he will get it done. It's close to a perfect performance if you're a Vitality fan, if you're a Zywoo fan, because there is something to be said about a healthy team not overly relying on one player, and I don't think it's a great time when it's only one and one man show out there. But the truth is, in this moment, there were key, instrumental, pivotal moments that Zywoo made sure Vitality would win, and then it allowed everybody else to feel a little bit more momentum, more freedom them more money as well, more economy to make the plays, but he is the one, don't, don't be fooled, he is the one that made sure that game never got close. Even if Zywoo played 15% worse, I still think Vitality right? take this. That's yeah. how good everybody else was though. So this is all in all, I, I really want to just say, despite all of the roster moves that weren't even forced, like Vitality weren't looking to necessarily have to pick up Mezzi. They were forced into that situation. They didn't wa ha want to necessarily get x because they probably wanted to keep Zonic, but they still made it work. And that, again, the core of the team, Apex, Zywoo, Sphinx, such a rock solid trio that that is so deserving of this trophy. And shout out to Flamesy as well, because we were talking about him, you know, having a bit of a difficult start. There was a redemption arc coming through, and he ends out this particular series with such an incredible impact and a rating to match that. Yeah, again, another fantastic grand final performance from Flamesy. We saw it in Copenhagen a couple of weeks ago. We saw it right here as well on the first map. Inferno, he was lights out playing some fantastic Counter-Strike. And let's also remember what Flamesy is in Vitality, right? We're talking about the core of Apex, Saibu, and Sphinx. There's a lot of facts being distributed between those three players, most of the time two players, so we can't really expect Flamesy to be the best player on the server that often, yet he's always in there with some impact, yet he's already able to step up. To me, he reminds me a little bit of Twist in Face Clan when he was at his best. Not necessarily the star player, not necessarily the player always showing up, but when needed the most, he could. What I really like about what we're seeing from Flames is that he's an ability to bounce back within complicated games. And it's not usually an attribute you give to rookier player, no. younger player, fresher player. In a moment like this on a stage, you have a bad start, and suddenly you get into your own head, you force your play a little bit, you lose confidence. The beginning of Inferno was shaky. There's no way around it. The very beginning of Nuke, not exactly on point. But then anyway, 
he fights his way back to a confident state where he gets that aim. The last round, rain duel outside. It's, it's a time to kill of like 0.2 seconds. Immediate one tap from Flames. Huge performance again. And then on the flip side, we look at FaZe and yet again, it was just a, an absolute barn burner coming out of Vitality. It seemed like they were steamrolling their way through that trophy in a very similar fashion to what we saw back in Copenhagen. And actually, even more dominant when we look at this nuke, Vitality put their mark on it. Heartbreaking way to go after FaZe. Yeah, it doesn't feel good to say, but they were kind of outmatched in tonight's matchup. I, I do think Vitality were a level or two ahead of FaZe Clan, and it's not necessarily, you know, me honing in on FaZe Clan saying you're not good enough. It's just a fact of the reality that just bringing in Frozen, maybe we saw the limitations, because it did feel like Kerrigan had some good ideas in the beginning out of Inferno. The game plan seemed solid. He was able to put pressure on Vitality. Then they would adapt, and then FaZe Clan didn't have the plan B. They didn't have the depth in the squad. Right. They didn't have the depth in the idea in terms of how to come back into the game. Same thing happened here. Nuke off to a good start, but as soon as Vitality found out their number, then they didn't have the plan B or the plan C yet. Maybe it takes a little more time before we get the best out of FaZe and the best out of Frozen in this new iteration. Yeah, FaZe unfortunately coming second once again at the hands of Vitality. So let's get a few closing thoughts courtesy of Frozen and Banks. A respectable second place here for FaZe Clan at the World Finals, but certainly not what you would have wanted. It's never what any player wants. But I want to just see for you in this game, at moments it felt like you guys didn't have a shot and Vitality were, were, were far ahead of you. What are you calling? What are you talking about during these moments trying to fight back into it? Because you never gave up, but it just seemed like they had such an edge over you. Yeah, I mean, if the team has good read, I think uh, in the moment, you just give props to them, you know? Like, they, they did good, just go next round, you know? Um, yeah, we didn't win a, any clutch situation as well, so that didn't help. So, yeah. Well, how would you describe your first debut, though, for the FaZe Clan and, and being here alongside your former teammates? Uh, overall, satisfied. Uh, not satisfied with my own performance, but, uh, you know, first tournament, finals, so... I should be happy, but uh, yeah, it would be nice to leave the trophy. Uh, it would be nice for the storyline, but yeah. Do you get the feeling, though, that you obviously have this ability that you could do it, that like given a bit more time? Because you only just came in. You think, right, we saw you in Finland for miles, and then you come straight here, and it's instantly into phase. That's not a lot of time to be ready on the positions, to be in the roles. And there were swaps, not just for you, for other players as well. Yeah, I mean, uh, we didn't have much time to prepare, you know. So, you know, we just came, uh, came with what we have. So I think you can definitely expect more next year. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty confident if, in what we can achieve. So I think we're just getting started. And an interesting part for you is before with Mouse, you were always on one circuit. Now you're going to be playing through both circuits. There's been a lot more games, a lot more of this traveling and stuff for you. Are you ready for how much of a grind this early start to next year is going to be? And what is Faceland doing? Are you going for an early boot camp coming into it? Do you know yet? Give me a little lowdown. Uh, I'm not really sure. I think there's definitely going to be boot camp. Uh, but yeah, you know, just getting getting to it again. Um, yeah, first of all, regenerate at the break. But uh, yeah, just, you know, next year, come in swinging and uh, get into it. I like it. You got a good smile on your face, mate. Thank you very much. Yeah, and of course, this is only the beginning for Frozen in that phase jersey. And basically, up until this very series, we were really impressed with what he was able to deliver on the server. Phase. I think it's just the beginning for Frozen. It's just the beginning for Face Clan. As much as we want to say, it would have been nice for Frozen to win the very first tournament he was playing with him. Same for Messi. He was able to do it with Vitality. But I think there's still a long way to go for him in that regard. However, I am not worried at all. I think Frozen in Face Clan will be a success. It's just a matter of time. They're going to continue competing for titles, that's for sure. If anything, they're going to level up their gameplay. We'll see the slightly rocky parts where he is adapting to a new spot, iron out. And I have full faith that this team will actually be lifting trophies in 2024 as long as they're able to stay together. Yeah, I'm really excited to see what FaZe will be delivering moving into the new year and the new season in CS2. But we've seen Vitality lift the trophy. We also need to get into our Merc MVP. And hmm, I'm very curious to see who exactly this is going to be. Oh, no surprises here. Zaiwu once again. He delivered such an incredible performance time and time again. It seems like there's nothing this man can't do. Everything he touches turns to gold Congrats. or an MVP trophy. <laughs> and we've got him here. Congratulations, Zaiwu. Um, you, you got a bit tired of coming up here, getting your MVP trophy after lifting a trophy on stage? I might ban you in your house, maybe. No, I'm, <laughs> kidding. No, I'm kidding. I have space for that. But obviously, yeah, I'm really happy for, for that, too. Did you think that, you know, you just faced FaZe a couple of weeks ago in Copenhagen. That was a very convincing victory. Did you think that you were going to bring it even more commandingly here today in Abu Dhabi? Actually not. Before joining this game, we always have a tired game against them. Even before, we always like uh, in Anubis 1915, uh, always in overtime. But actually, we have a good preparation. We have a good feeling before joining this game because before yeah, we, we beat like, uh, uh, not most, I don't, I don't even forget. 
Remember Everybody. Everybody. Yeah, you yeah, beat everyone. We <laughs> just, <laughs> matter. We just have a good feeling, actually. Even every every game we we looks like if, yeah we we good. I mean, we looks good. You t you talk about good feeling. There were yeah. a few moments in this game or in the semi final where yeah. we saw a little bit of tension, but you yeah. guys were always able to shake it off. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit how it feels from the inside when you flirt with the limit and then suddenly you start winning again? That most likely on nuke, like when we start to struggling a bit, we just like choose reset because we knew like we have. Everyone in the team could have a great round individually and also technically to have to find some gaps, to find some tricks, to to, to have some round for to our side, and that's what we keep uh, for for the team because we keep believing, we never give up, and that's our goal for for a long time now. Yeah. Zai, well, I wanted to talk about the fact that you mentioned you are kind of developing an ego, that you yeah. want to push forward more so your own ability, impose it on yeah. your opponents. I want to ask. Why? Why? Why now? Why? Why? You were already number one before. You've already been number one. You've already been number two so many times. But why do you want to even do more beyond that? Actually, it was most likely for CS2 because I wanted to show to everyone like what. It's not because we change the game. I'm gonna change my my mindset or change my my gameplay or whatever. It's, I just want to to show to everyone that if you work hard, if you keep believing in yourself, if you keep it, yeah. If you keep believing in yourself, you can do whatever you want. You can keep playing good with your team. With... So yeah, just my small ego helped me a lot. Yeah. Can we talk about this one play? You had this <laughs> one play on the lower B bomb yeah. site where you were going crazy. I, I, I think production's gonna roll this one back. <laughs> the way that you were playing in B, you were defending it. Here we go, here we go. You're right yeah. there behind these these boxes. You you get the second kill, you know, it seems like you know Brokey's right there. Yeah. And you go, like, what, what is this? Okay, I, I need to know what's going through your head right now. I wanted to retake, actually, because someone in the team says, someone in this van says, I want to go up. So that's why I want to retake instantly behind him to to surprise him. But it was kind of <laughs> <kinda laughs> funny because I, well, it was so fucked. I just, from, from I just want to say that I don't feel like 2019 Zaiwu does that, though. 2019 Zaiwu plays that more passively. You stay behind the boxes. You probably wait a little bit more. Is that the ego right there? Or what, what's made you make changes like this in your, your own play style? Maybe I would play more passive, but actually, that's also my team. What they say, whenever they, saw, they see Zaiwu, they ask a bit scared. That's why I play with it as well. Because they will not rush me. They will play with... They will take care, you know, they will be patient, try to kill me, and that's why sometimes I'm playing with it and just rush on him. Absolutely. I remember talking with Dan a little bit, and he would tell me at times, you would be uh, too good of a teammate, and you would go first so to, yeah. to, because the team needed it. Did you start to realize that maybe you need to be a little selfish and it's good for your team? Was that a conversation you've had with, with Apex as well? Uh, we, we still have this conversation because uh, I want too much to go first sometimes because I don't know some sometimes you know about the timing and about a lot of things you need to go first otherwise you lose uh, you lose it so no I will still go first because I don't <laughs> care about dying with my for my team because if you still keep winning is is good but obviously a lot of conversation about we need to take a step back because <laughs> you're, you're good in clutch, so uh, maybe... You, you <laughs> yeah, let's save you for later. That's yeah, probably maybe. a better place to use you. Um, your coach, X, has just said up there on the stage when you were lifting the trophy, Apex, best in-game leader in the world right now. Would you agree with that? Yeah, I, I don't know about other uh, in-game leader because I'm not in the area you can catch an head or whatever, but actually play with the mind of everyone. He, every, every time before the game, he knew what to do, his game plan, is. Is really smart inside of the game, so obviously he's one of the best one. I guess Apex has been your your partner in the game for oh, many years now. now, for many many oh, yeah. many years. From your perspective, you've been sitting next to him for all of these years. How has he changed? How is he a different person than the first Apex you met when you put the Vitality jersey on? I think this team don't know the Apex with the French team. Oh, I know, I know Apex. On the yeah, team. <laughs> because he was really like uh, angry with every mistake we made and. But right now, he had a lot of talk with mental preparation and a lot of things like this, and he changed his mind a lot. And obviously, you can see him a lot with, uh, like, when we do mistakes, like Inferno yesterday, when we do almost lose one fight and get uh, IM. But other than that, he for the good reason when he do that. He, he's never for, for for anything bad or anything, because he wants so much to win, and that's his strength, kind of. Because, yeah, in terms of in-game leader, he, we can believe in it, for sure. Yeah, no, no question, just want to say that this tournament, what you did at the Fall Finals, I'm seeing the cultural impact, Zaiwu. There's, a, there's a, you're, you're every, everything you're doing now is putting, is just highlight reel after highlight reel. 
you're starting to approach that level where every time you load up into a server, we're just, our minds are be being blown consistently. Yeah, I try. Uh, I mean, I need to, to work about my first game at every, every time at, uh, at the first tournament because I'm a bit shaky, but other than that, I'm, every time I'm joining tournaments, I'm not thinking about rating or if I'm going good or bad. I'm just joining to, to do my best. Zyro, of course, this marks the end of the season, the end of 2023. So I want to give you the opportunity to say anything to the fans at home. That's your camera over there. Anything you'd like to say to them? No, like always, thank you for everyone to following us to doing this tournament and also for the award year we, we spent with you because he's been incredible for us. So thank you, everyone. And obviously, we, yeah, he's been good to, to be invited this year. <laughs> It's been an absolutely magical year for yourself and Vitality. Congratulations once again, Zaru. Again, we see Vitality lifting Thank another trophy. And yeah, we'll let you go off and celebrate this victory. Beautiful stuff coming out from Vitality. And great to get some words from Zaru to kind of put uh, some, some thoughts to the madness, the craziness, the incredible highlights that we see going down on the server is matched by such a humble guy who's like, yeah, it just comes naturally to me. This is just how I feel the game. And that is why we call him the chosen one. And I really love, I mean, we had the opportunity to ask him a few questions here. I really love the idea that, yes, from the very beginning, it was apparent to anybody that has two eyes that he would be something special in the game. It took you about 12 seconds to realize he was unique in his approach to it, but yet you could always be better. You can always improve. There is always a way that you can influence the game a little bit more, be a slightly more aggressive, be a bit better team and we can follow his journey towards becoming something of a, like a god of Counter-Strike, where he already started as a semi-god or a hero, and he's on his journey to become a god, and I, it's just a pleasure to hear and to witness it uh, here in general. It's a bit of a reality check in a sense as well, because let's be completely honest, most superstars in whatever occupation they have, whether it being football, handball, Counter-Strike, or any other game, they're assholes, you know. You gotta be a little bit crazy in order to be the best of the best of the best. we always been, you know, toying with the idea that Symbol is the goat of Counter-Strike, and of course he is to some degree as well, still in that conversation to be the greatest of all time. But we also have the little flag on him saying that he wasn't always the best teammate, wasn't always the nicest guy to play with. I bet you, if you would ask anyone out there, almost everyone out there, despite of the Ukrainians, maybe who would still root with Symbol, who would you rather want for your team if you built it up from the ground and up? You would always pick Saibu. He is the perfect teammate. He's the perfect player. He can do it all. Whether that's the AWP, the rifle, the pistol, the calling, you know, being a nice guy, keeping up the mood, it doesn't matter. He doesn't soak all the energy out of a team. And to me, that is the greatest asset Saibu has. The fact that he's the perfect teammate, the perfect player, he's well-rounded, there's not enough compliments you can get that guy. The way I would relate it, or the analogy I would draw, is that when you watch Zaiwu and his journey, it's that he's like a musician that learned how to play, but he started playing it with perfection, but slowly. Simple, on the other hand, probably started by just shredding out one chord, one riff, as fast as humanly possible, and he worked backwards from there. But now we're seeing Zaiwu play with that perfection, but he's speeding up. He's realizing his mechanics, his game sense, his intuition, it can all carry him in these intense and hectic moments that leads him to go above and beyond, and even at sometimes now, get creative. Whereas before, it was always just within the confines of the team. Like Apex said before, it was being a soldier in the unit, and now he's going above and beyond, and he is consistently delivering on the biggest of stages. That's look the worst at these part. live pictures, just sorry, Jacob. No, but look at the camp around Vitaly, the people that have been there through every single tournament. This is how they get to round out their year, and it's just beautiful to see. It is beautiful to see, and I think all the people on your screen right now deserves a lot of credit, especially Dan, of course, being the in-game leader he is, but also the players that were part of the journey in 23. Yes. You're looking at your Dupreeze, you're looking at your Magics, you're looking at Sonic as well, Lars Rubble, the mental coach. It's been a lot of different people being involved in Vitality, who's all helped build this monster. They've all helped build Vitality to what they are today, and I have no doubt that with Apex leading the team, with all the other players involved as well, it's going to be a great 24 for them as well. Allow me to offer just a, a slightly different narrative for half a second here. Entertain the idea. The Major is coming around the corner. This is where you want to peak. How hard is it going to be for Vitality to maintain the throne up until that moment? Mm. Because if you look back to Paris, it's a ramp up towards Paris that happened. It's a trophy in Rio, boom, straight into Paris, and that's when you peak. Now they're on top of the world. They've been at it for quite a little bit. And there's going to be not only an exercise of stamina, but also keeping track of everybody behind you, analyzing you, trying to anti strat you, coming for your head. They are on the throne right now. You got to keep it until the major at the very least. Yeah, they've got to be staying there. I'm loving these pictures we're getting as well <laughs> of all the individuals with that beautiful trophy. Hopefully Vitality Camp have got a, some more shelves coming their way because these trophies just keep coming thick and fast for them, Maui. They're going to they're gonna need it. Yeah, they are <laughs> looking to stack it up, but they have painted a huge 
target on their backs moving into the upcoming year. Like Maniac said, people will be looking at what Vitality are doing because right now they're the trailblazers for how to play CS2 at the absolute highest level, not even in terms of just individuals who we will never fail to mention, but in terms of teamwork, they blew teams out of the water with adaptations in the mid half and also in terms of just trading. Their trading percentage was so much higher than even second place at this event. You rarely see a team with 24% trade percentage at an end of an event, but they did it. So that that is just crazy. They are on top of each other. They know exactly how they need to be covering each other. It's like they've been playing together for years, and yet they have just started a month ago. It's funny that you say it, right? Because complacency will always be the failure for most players, most teams, but I'm standing here with a feeling that they're not done yet. There's still a lot of hunger within this roster. Apex yeah. for, for all all we know, he wants to win more. You know, he's he's an up, untapped source of energy, and he's just going to continue to <laughs> he go. He literally just said it in the winners' interview. Go. We're looking ahead towards the major. It's exactly. like, are you ever going to be satisfied? Avery? Do you think Saivu is one enough to, you know? put down the, the debate whether or not he's the GOAT of Counter-Strike yet? Nope. Do you think Messi is one enough to be satisfied? Nope. Do you think Flamesy is one enough to be satisfied? Nope. I still think that hunger is going to be in there with Vitality, so I'm for once not worried about complacency hitting them at all. Machu, say it live. Vitality, the best team in the world, the best team in 2023. Vitality, the best team in the world, the best player in the world, the best leader in the world. A poetic end to an amazing 2023 for Team Vitality. But let's round off the action by checking in with our CS Money Play of the Day. So many amazing highlights going down. So, uh, Machu, do you want to take it away with our first highlight? One last time this year, Freya. One last time. And what of a way to start with Tezus. I believe the flying man, <laughs> what? like what is happening, I guess. <laughs> what is Planting the bomb. This is a play of the day. It's kind of... <laughs> Everybody's blind. It's a great play. Everybody was blind. It's to, do that with no, to do that I, with no money, that's not bad. That okay, deserves play of the day. Okay, okay. I think this one will be a little uh -huh. better. I'm going to go out on a limb and say this will be a lot better. Flames with the jumping AK shot right there. That's just rude. It's kind of disgusting. And Frozen, I mean... I guess that's his welcome to phase moment. You're just going to get on like that sometimes? Well, I'll take your better. play and I'll race it with the best player in the world. Of course, Saivu coming in here with play of the day. And you're going to vote for this. The AWP in your face, taking out Frozen, taking out another player right here, Kerrigan, and goodbye. And then playing and toying with his foot right here. No scoping, drops out of the server. And of course, he makes it done. He wins the round, Saivu, at a time where FaZe were actually about to go up 6-4 in this game on Nuke. He's probably the reason why we're standing here talking instead of watching Counter-Strike right now. Yeah. This was better. That just was better, I'm sorry. <laughs> 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 what, what, what even was that? <laughs> I don't know, bro. Oh my bro, if your monitor's turned off and you're doing that, oh my that, that does it, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah better than Zai. We heard it here first. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, yeah, just to round out, what an incredible year that we've had in CS. Like, just think about the trajectory, the roller coaster that we've had, Jacob, switching into a new title, yeah. teams with so many roster changes, so many different names coming onto these squads. We've had such a treat of a year. We have had a fantastic year. I think the major in, in Paris was one of the highlights for me. Obviously, seeing Vitality winning that one and at home turf with the crowd going absolutely crazy. The vibes in that arena, the vibes in the city while we were there were, were absolutely fantastic. <laughs> I also do think we got off to a good start with Counter-Strike 2. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. We were challenged by the new game. There's been some things that weren't optimal in terms of how the game came out, how the game still is, but I think we're moving in the right direction. So I am very, very optimistic and I'm very excited about 24. I think that's going to be just as good as of a year if not even better. I wanted to say thank you to you guys for joining me here as well, because we have had such an incredible 2023. Think about the amount of places we have been because of this beautiful game, Matthew. So thank you. Freya, for there's, uh, there's no place I'd rather be at all. It's amazing. Don't and cry. thank you guys, the community, <laughs> for making this all possible. We love Counter-Strike and we'll be seeing you in 2024. You're crying? <laughs>